Family, family, everybody, welcome, welcome to Reason with Ratigan on Reggae Global Radio and YouTube. Now I'm your host, Will, the rebel Ratigan, a rebel who continues to fight for our people's causes. As you join the program, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Bless up, bless up all of you, all of you. It's a tremendous honor to be here every Saturday to talk to my people. I'm telling you, it's, I look forward to a Saturday. No sound? Somebody said they're not hearing me. No sound? No sound? No sound? No sound? Testing, testing, one, two, three. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Give me some signal, my people. Oh, Missy Bram, Bram. Hey, Missy, tonight, our night, you know, don't forget. I know you have your tile pick out and ready. And it's not rented. It's owned, right? And by the way, Jar Herbs hit me up this morning and I told him to be here tonight at midnight. Now, 
let me see we don't have the guest time yet that's all right um the rebel will return tonight with a scintillating selection of reggae so make plans to tune in at midnight and relax with the rebel for two solid hours um so many things happened this week <laughs> people i don't know where to start i really don't but before we start talking about the issues let me just bless up some people mama eileen papa trevor and the whole double road crew bless up on yourself russell you and your crew bless up on yourself all oh, i'm a peeps in south africa um papa trevor mama Ma p mama eileen Ma Jean, big up yourself desmond paul sassy d mrs nelson Yes, Nicola, Nicola Green, what a bang. <laughs> Bob. Mr. Baxter. And Angela. Keep taking care of that man. All right. Greetings again, family, to all of you. All of you. Big up the Reggae Global family, without whom this would not be possible. The Firehouse Crew. And the Rollington. Massive. My general, stay so. Big up all media personalities and platforms out there exposing government corruption and holding said government accountable. Personalities and platforms like Linkage Radio, OBC Radio, All People Radio, Sutherland TV, big up yourself, Sutherland. Producer Wayne, Global TV, Rafa Talk, Wayne Rafa Talk, Anissa Bell Rose, Waterhouse Vibes, Nita, got the email, I'll take care of that thing for you. Make we talk, Mr. Vumva V, Mr. no, Mr. Vumva Va, Mr. Vumva V, Jeffrey Tavares, Mystic Sensation, Byron and Anne Marie, Super Jams, Prezi, and Doc. Professor John Lennon, who will be with us today. Professor Andre Stevens, nice show last night, as always. Jamaican Carlos, my brethren, still in a travel status, but will join us later on. Maria, bless up. Herb, and of course, the renegade, unafraid, Wayne, lonesome. Um, we have to big up some other people. We have uh, my brethren, Gander Road, Tony. I will call him Gander Road because Tony can come from Gander Road. I mean, I'm a whole heap of Tony, so I have to distinguish between them. You know, because I have another Tony, dear brethren, Tigo, my name is listen. Roland, welcome to the US, my brethren. Enjoy your stay. Bitter, bitter, bitter girl. We are going to bitter them up. All right, bitter girl. No <laughs> you know the thing said. Bunny Jump, long time brethren from Firehouse and Brooklyn. Cora and the princess, stay safe while you travel. And my sisters, the big up on yourself. All of the Marcias, all of the Karens, all of them big up on yourself. Manchester crew, we don't forget Unu, Merlin, Dorrit, and the rest of the community. Miss Norma Allen of UTEC, Diana and David, welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, by the way, people, listen to um, Kevin, Kevin has a show uh, every Saturday night at 8 o'clock sharp. Please tune in and listen to Kevin. Um, Dian and David, me do me duty, all right? So, <laughs> manners and respect to all civil servants who teach, protect, and take care of us, our children, our grandchildren, nurses, doctors, police officers, teachers, secretaries, all of them. I know they're trying to run out of Jamaica, but you know, we're making a definite plea for them to stay. But it's hard to tell people to stay and then them say, for what? Hard. But we're going to make that. We're going to continue to make the plea because we need our teachers, our doctors, our policemen, nurses, and all of them. Big up hot topic. Yes. And there's another man after there's somebody else after big up. I can't remember. Another another um YouTuber. He'll come to me. Now, yes, I sat is there. He might do him thing. 
Oh, by the way, when I saw come on, people, I want to big him up and big up him father because it was his father's birth, earth strong, I should say, last night. Big, 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 big things go on. So I want to talk to him about that. Um, I don't get a report from him concerning it, but prior to the event, I heard him telling Andre and um, and 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 uh, can't remember, my, my lawyer friend, him, him tell him, say, well, right now, why big things are going on. So, in truth and in fact, I really didn't expect him here. So we have to big him up when him come on because him could have sleep right now. Plus, you know, him have this big, big, big hell of a trial. We have to prepare submissions and him have to prepare himself for more oral arguments. Similar to him, the aromatic. See, the big up yourself, aromatic. Big up, big up, big up. Um, yeah, I start to have to prepare himself for this trial. So we're very, very thankful and grateful that he's here today. And I'll be honest with you, I don't expect him to either come on or stay as long as he's used to doing because of all the things going on right now. And we have to respect and appreciate that and, and, and support him, you know, wish him all the best, pray for him. Um, KFC alone can't keep him, can't give him strength and keep him up, you know. Um, Waterhouse Vibes will be streaming tomorrow on YouTube at 3 p.m. New York time, 2 p.m. Jamaica time. That's Waterhouse Vibes, 3 p.m. New York time, 2 p.m. Jamaica time. Big up yourself, Nita. We in Lonesome Stone Hall meeting will be tomorrow on YouTube at 7 p.m., which is 6 p.m. Jamaica time. We in Lonesome, YouTube, 7 p.m. New York time, 6 p.m. Jamaica time. And you can catch Jamaican Carlos, Jeffrey Tavares, Mr. Boomba Va, Boomba V, Make We Talk, Mystic Sensation, Professor Andre Stevens, and the others on a daily basis on their YouTube channels. Remember that, Jamaican Carlos, Jeffrey Tavares, Mystic Sensation, Andre Stevens, and the others on a daily basis on their YouTube channels. And of course, our brethren, Isaac Buchanan, his show, Context Matters, and it's a catchphrase now. Everybody's using it, and, and, and wisely, too. Makes sense. Um, you can catch him on Reggae Global Radio, YouTube, and Facebook every single Thursday from 5 to 7 p.m. That's New York time, 4 to 6 p.m. Jamaica time. That's Isaac Buchanan. Context matters on Reggae Global Radio, YouTube, and Facebook every Thursday from 5 to 7 New York time, 4 to 6 Jamaica time. And we're finalizing our efforts, by the way, it's another feature on the program, to highlight schools around Jamaica, highlight schools, the teachers, the students, the parents, you know, um, the support uh, uh, mechanisms to keep our children in school and to educate them. And we'll also, at the end of each program, when we have a school on, we'll, you know, run a little a little thing for them. See how we can help. We as a community can can help because believe me, they need all the help they can get. Except, you know, the top-notch schools. Then. But most of the schools in Jamaica, they're not, they don't have big, big, big names, you know, in terms of education. Like, you know, like a campion, for example. You know, so we have to help out them schools, help out the teachers, help out whatever, in whatever way we can. So stay tuned for that. Um, Tonight, tonight at 8 o'clock, we're going to do a fundraiser. Um, it's our first one on the program. So during, after 8 o'clock, we will take phone calls, we'll discuss pertinent topics, and we'll reach out to you, our family members, for donations so that we continue, we can continue the work of holding government accountable. Now, for today's presentations, we have, a, we have a lot of things to talk about because Jamaica is just content rich. Everywhere you look, there's something to talk about every day. And what you'll hear today from the individual presenters will be their opinions, their views. And those views, those opinions, they're not endorsed or promoted by Reggae Global Radio or by me. They're simply the guests' positions. Keep that in mind. Today, what will we do? We are going to 
expose the steady diet of lies the government has been feeding you about GDP and the debt. And we have Dr. John Lennon to make that presentation, to make that case. We will also present our position on the recently registered with big capital, you know, capital letters like the Magota style, R-E-G-I-S-T-E-R-E-D, Registered Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. Our council, not the one run by the government. And we will discuss that conference, the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. We are the only ones with the authority, with the right to use that name. Not the people who have been using it previously. We are the only ones who can use that name without fear of trepidation, without our trepidation that somebody is going to come and sue us or give us cease and desist. Some people tried to give you a cease and desist letter yesterday. I mean, last week. It was a joke. By the way, let me big up all of the government supporters who are visiting us, all of the opposition supporters visiting us, all of the third parties supporters visiting us we welcome everyone but we have some house rules you have to behave yourself if you start curse and carry on and you cause disruption we have a whole bunch of monitors in the chat and them not afraid to tell me say get rid of that one there and believe me consider it done so they can come in raise your point no we can have a, we can have a discussion um in, you know you disagree then that's fine in fact i happen to believe that if you have two people running a business and they're always in agreement, then you only need one person to run the business. Think about that. If you always agree, always agree, always agree, always agree you only need one person to run the business. So we need opposing views, but we need opposing views in a civil manner. So you come in and you make your point. I want to open the phone line to, don't be shy, you know, make your point. But don't dwell on foolishness. Because otherwise, we'll have to dismiss you. So, there we go with that. But again, getting back to the registered Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, we will talk about our conference because we're going to, it's been dubbed the People's Conference because it's not sponsored by legacy partners, corporate sponsors, wannabe. No, no, you know, no. It is sponsored by the people because we're, you're going to hear from real people talking about real issues affecting real people and we're going to come up with real solutions. Some people, I believe they're having a conference, um, but it's a, it's a business exposition. It's not a diaspora conference, it's a business exposition where they're going to be promoting services and products and investment packages and entertainment packages. We don't have time for that because people are suffering and we can't dance and enjoy ourselves, engage in merriment while people looking on in starvation, desperation, poverty. No, we cannot do that. So, yeah, when I lick up the like, hit up the like button. Big it up, big it up, big it up. We're also going to provide you with the, the facts regarding the Attorney General, Parliament, Speaker of the House of Representatives and the tabling of reports submitted by the Integrity Commission. Long title, but I think you know what I mean, right? Speaker, Attorney General, Parliament, Integrity Commission. I think you know where I go with that. We will also give you updates regarding the the, the upcoming protests in New York, and. We'll inform you about steps we're taking to ensure that the DPP is disciplined and removed from office for behavior unbecoming of our office. And it's not what it's not what happened yesterday. This is something completely different. 21 days to go for New York call to action. Yes, mega what? Yes. We're also going to explain the difficulty the government is having in identifying who went to Rwanda in support of Minister Kamina Johnson Smith at taxpayers' expense. Only thing we did done. We just are come. Story I get warm. It'll come up to bump because we're going to show you some things. That's why we don't, we're not nine day wonders around here. We put things on the back burner, but we return and move them to the front burner. Things will go at the back burner and then slide off of the stove and gone in the, in the, in the, um, the garbage field. And they will forget about it. No. Um, we're going to provide more advice to the new police commissioner. I need the advice real, real bad. 
and we will review the Integrity Commission Act of 2017. Now, I say all of this, all of that to say this. I don't think we're going to finish all of these topics. So what we're going to do is we're going to identify the most germane, the most topical ones, and we're going to discuss them with you and with our audience. And also remember that we have um, we have the fundraiser at 8 o'clock. All right. Um, some people them said to me that sometimes I talk and when I talk, I close my eyes. And me, I tell you that meds, you know, when me is like me going on myself. Because when me I talk, me I talk from my heart and my soul. But just not talk from up here. So and I hope it can resonate and it can reach you. Because if I can reach you, then you can reach somebody else. And together, together that chain is stronger. Because we, we're going to have to be strong with this task that we've taken on. This task is not a simple task. So you just have to be prepared for it. And as we say, lean into the wind. All right, let me bring on my virgin ice at a camps down there. Wait a while. I'm there on the phone. Hold on, let me bring him on here. Yeah, yeah see there. In the pandemic phone still. All right, let me go and talk while you while you while you finish up your phone call. Yeah. No, let me do the update now for the protest. Family, make plans to come out on May 10th in New York and be counted in the history-making protest. The government is shivering, shaking in their boots, but we're not here. Please remember that it will take place on Friday, May 10th, at the corner of 2nd Avenue and East 42nd Street in Manhattan from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. The tri-state area, that Connecticut, New York, New Jersey area, is where our politicians, corrupt and honest, they all come to beg for contributions to their causes, for their causes and pockets. This is the region with the highest concentration of Jamaicans outside of Jamaica, that Connecticut, New York, New Jersey area. Now, we, the people, have the numbers to bulldoze the folly force changes bulldoze what this government is doing and force changes as i've said to people you know i'm not about regime change or change no i want the government to act upon its promises that's what i want and if it cannot then it should just step aside let somebody else come in that's all i'm saying um no longer will we be taken for granted so florida georgia north and south carolina Virginia, D.C., Delaware, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Rhode Island, Texas, California, Canada, Jamaica, Europe, and the U.K. Come out in your numbers and join the chorus of well-meaning, peace-loving, passionate Jamaicans as we register our disapproval of the Jamaican government's continued bad governance. Now, T-shirts will be on sale. They'll be on sale. We will issue placards for free, but feel obliged to bring your own. Just don't bring anything that's disrespectful. You know, we, we, we're not going to encourage that. Bring something. If, if, if you want, we will have. But if you want to bring your own, express your own views, that's fine. But just keep it tidy and nice. The sound permit has been obtained from the NYPD. And they have carved out a demonstration space for us in front of the Jamaican consulate across the street from Channel 11 WPIX. The sound system has been confirmed. We have that lock. The battery power generators have been secured. We have that lock. Our outreach to the global community of Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica has begun by a traditional and social media. We have prepared a comprehensive press release detailing the unfulfilled promises, corruption, kleptocracy, human rights abuses, and the bad governance of the Jamaican government. And this press release will be sent to media outlets such as ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, CNN, WPIX, and other local, regional, national, and international media outlets. In addition, we are focused on the youth. And as you've seen, they have, you've seen the evidence of it. We bring on the young people and forget them views, hear them aspirations and goals and frustrations with Jamaica. 
and we encourage them to continue to do what's right for themselves, their families, their communities, and for Jamaica. And in that spirit, we have scheduled a speaking engagement at my alma mater, John Jay College of Criminal Justice, best criminal justice school in the whole world, where we will discuss the impact of corruption on education in Jamaica. And that is corruption and its impact on education in Jamaica. The plans are shaping up nicely and on time. I'm hearing that the government officials are worried, and they should, because we will be delivering a serious message come May 10th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on the corner of 42nd, East 42nd Street and 2nd Avenue in Manhattan. All right. Let me bring on my virgin, you know. I'm still up on the phone. All right. Oh, I'm not up on the oh, phone. Kind of Two less wireless. <laughs> Greetings, Mr. Rattinga. How are you doing? Yes, yes, yes. yes. I, I catch part of your program on Thursday. Loved it. I catch your program on Andre, uh, your appearance on Andre last night with Mr. Wildman. Mm. Um, outstanding program. Mr. Wildman, by the way, folks, he will be joining us um, just as Isaac is leaving us. I, you see, your eyes at eyes them look red, though, like in, in uh, some sleep, right? Can I tell you? Yeah, tell us what last night. What do you mean? On on where where exactly? The party, the party. <laughs> the party shot, man. Big youth party. But I know I'll get myself in a no trouble because I was gonna say if you go to a 70 75 year old party, it's a different vibes. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. Ed, Edley, big up yourself, Pennsylvania. I forget. Yeah, we have people coming in from Pennsylvania as well. And folks, I'm trying to get a Jamaican food truck out there. So I don't have to go too far, forget, you know, a taste of home. Um, we haven't been successful yet, but I'm trying. I'm still trying. There are a couple of food trucks in the area, but I want something. I want one that is going to be on the block where we are. So I don't have to walk too far. All right. Yeah. I, Jay, you I, I, can't there, no. I can call jerk shock and thing, but you know, not bribe me with no KFC, so you know, you know, <laughs> put out no links for nobody. You we know, you know, get a styling. Yeah, there was no KFC at, at, at Big Youth Party, so I never tarry too long. You know, you understand? That's that's how that works. Really? Yeah, I do, I'm just I'm just making that clear. Wow. So so so. I don't want to really get into the nitty gritty yet because I think John is going to be joining us soon. Um, but if he doesn't join us within a few minutes, then I'll just move on and then we'll, we'll talk about a couple of things because Jamaica has been very, I mean, normally Jamaica yes, is hectic. <laughs> Listen, Jamaica, Jamaica is Jamaica, you know, let me tell you something. Oh, I don't I mean, know what I, I, I Listen, I, I, don't, I don't come to clone out your show, but I, I have to really wonder if Obi really work. God. I see from the dirty dirty start trouble the diaspora people. They go over London and then them black out people picture and make a complete ass of themselves. And I mean that's unheard of. That's almost like no, no, I just don't understand that one. And then if you think that was it, the week never finished and um, just some strange things happening in Jamaica. I just, I just had to sit and realize that you don't need to do, you don't have to prepare any content for your show, Mr. Ratigan. That's true. That's, that, you, you're absolutely correct. Um, None at all. One thing doing that. Just watch a little video and, and, and you're good to go. And you're good to go. You're good to go as it, it's in high gear. But one thing I can say without even starting a discussion is that at the end of the day, I, I, on all these shows, especially when we have discussions, I hope the people are observing how powerful our constitution is. It is a living prospective document that, um, boy, I tell you, those who, 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 who try to do things to it to, to, to advance their personal goals and personal gains will always be embarrassed as a result of, of just the mechanisms within the Constitution. 
and it's for the people to understand how important it is and why while it is that everybody say let's just change it that those who bef those before us would have contemplated that the people who exist now something wrong with them and so the protections was already there as a developing country where we where where we are constantly advancing that it eradicates selfishness and that's that's my only comment on that but like, i love the constitution and 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 what it does for jamaica and the guardians of the constitution and i'm telling you every time i said the justice system work and don't mix up the justice system with the right. other with the other riffraff things that go on that's why the constitution said separate the separation of powers is important and the, by when by the time this year done everybody gonna respect the judiciary in, in but, as, you know rightfully huh but you know what i, I understand your your fervor for the for the for the judicial um system in jamaica and you should um mm -hmm. However, I think you'll be you'll agree with me that it's not perfect because this is the same system that forced you to go to the Privy Council because they got it wrong at the Court of Appeal. So it's like when you look at it, I'm, overall, how would you how would you address, how would you assess it the judicial system because we it, it, no, it's not but I, I assess it I have assessed it and when you said that they got it wrong at the court of appeal I, I i answered that it was answered before we even went to the privy council and it's something but, i learned no i can speak about that advocacy is very 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 important advocacy is important and we must know as we as we make every attempt to advance the jurisprudence in the country it's not it's not it's not only about the decision but the advocacy before the decision it's about assisting the court in such a way that the the the, the court will 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 be compelled to follow the law it's about having respect and regard for the constitution and articulating it in such a way that even those at the apex court will be afraid to touch it lest they fall into error that type that's that's a type of um of understanding that the constitution is for us by us i'm, I'm going to constantly say that so when they said they got it wrong i keep saying this we must not forget um especially in relation to the current president who sat on the on on the panel that 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 did get it wrong he was the one who 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 with the assistance of two other justices formulated the questions for the for for the privy council to honor to understand and and well, made it clear yes but it didn't have to go that way though it did no, not have to go you the know point. i don't question god because what is happening and the unraveling huh yeah. no, no i'm no, saying no. What, what 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 we have to understand the, the unraveling that has taken place and it's, it's time time that does that and uh, what what is important to note is that um when you when when you look at i and and people always say it but uh, you, I think Justice Sachs is going to have to sue me to get me to stop talking and praising him in public. But when Justice Sachs took up um, the mantle as the Chief Justice, albeit in an outer order fashion, but he won't give the big boss acting. I'm just showing you how how arms of how how one section when when rip. Let me behave myself. When a certain set of people is trying to behave like them have power and they don't know their role as a little creature of the constitution, you try to be disrespectful to other offices within the constitution. Let me say it that way. And notwithstanding, when Justice Sykes became the chief justice, many things changed. And I just want people to understand that, that he took the, the he took he took a hold of a justice system that was honestly in shambles. It was in shambles, and 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 where it is now, and as as where it is now, it forces attorneys to respect the office that they hold. The office meaning meaning the role as an attorney, as officers of of the court, to ensure that justice is served and 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 the, the, what the idea of justice is supposed to look like and what it is and so i improving and developing is what is important and if, if yesterday is testament 
as to the power of the constitution and interpreting the constitution and recognizing that when, when, when we are faced with constitutional questions, we answer them regardless of who the person is that it may affect. All right. Mm -hmm. We're we'll, we'll going to get back to that conversation. But in the meantime, we're going to be joined by my friend. I'm proud to call him my friend. He's the MP from my from the neighborhood just behind me there, Waterhouse, or as we used to call it, Firehouse. None other than Mr. Anthony Hilton Esquire, MP. Um, welcome, sir. Yeah. Well, yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Can, are you hearing me? I can hear you loud and clear. Give, give, me, give me one second. I can also hear the... I cannot... <laughs> People, I wanted to see that Mr. Radigan bribing me. <laughs> I will not take bribes, but if you if, if the buffet come to my house, I will pass it up. When you see me getting bribed, people, I want to yeah. see a KFC buffet. <laughs> no, take us some man. Take yes, so, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no worry, no worry, no worry, Mr. Hilton. Welcome, welcome. Well, long time we haven't seen you. Yes, Last yes, time yes. I saw you, do you remember the question I asked just before you left? And you, you said, I'll, I'll come back next week and answer the question. You remember the question? No, I don't, but you can remember. ask it. Well, me, no, we wouldn't remember because there have been, you know, it's trivia, but and you've got so many important things in your life, you wouldn't remember that. But you were seen wearing an orange pair of clocks at a, mm. at a, at a, at a, at a meeting. And I was yeah. asking about it, and then you had to go at the time. I won't ask you about the clocks because I know yeah. the significance. Hmm. But here's here's what I'd like to start out asking. Um, this past Thursday, we had a we in the United States had a, had a visitor, um, Minister Malahu Ford. She was here visiting us, and she went on the ambassador's platform. Let's connect, and it was it 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 was informative. And by the way, let me just say to to, uh, that, uh, to all of the people who have made comments about me for the for the first time in a long time, and I didn't even raise my hand. The ambassador called on me, and I wasn't dressed appropriately because I was there just like a listening post taking notes. And the other thing is that the question I had, it would have embarrassed both of them, and I didn't think that was the proper forum to do that. Um, so I decided. I just said to her, "Ma'am." You know, thanks for calling on me. I had some issues with you. But um, for those of you who have a visitor, visit. oh, give me one second. Sure, sure. I said to them, for those of you who would like to hear my comment, please tune into Reason with Ratigan on Saturday. And she said, oh, you're, you're advertising, you know. Um, and that was that. So that's why I didn't ask any questions. Because the question I was about to ask was about the, the, the idea that they're encouraging people to break the law go to Jamaica and vote because she was saying that uh, ordinarily resident, she gave a definition of it and it's, it, it, it's completely off base. And why am I saying this? Because I read the statute and I was going to ask her, ma'am, are you familiar with the Representation of People Act? And are you familiar with the corresponding um, section in the, in the, in the, in the, in the constitution? And, and also, are you familiar with Schedule 8? Of the ropa and if she said yes then i would have said then why are you misinforming the people and if she said no it would have been embarrassing so that's why i just didn't but i can say it now on my forum because you know the, the that incident is over and done but i just it that wasn't the proper forums people so all of you who wanted to hear me ask a question that's the line of questioning i was planning to ask and then i thought about it and i said you know what it's unwise. I shouldn't do it. Uh, they're having a good time. And I was learning too, because you said something that yes, it's just not gonna be very good. educational. So, you know, you don't you don't want to rain on people's parade. But anyway, um, Mr. Hilton. So we had a visitor, Marlene Malahu Ford, Minister Mar Marlene, Marlene Malahu Ford, and she was talking about the the strides made by the constitutional the reform committee. And she also mentioned uh, you by name, saying that she she you had, you had a good working relationship and that things were coming along just fine. Can you give us a status report on the constitutional reform or, or the work being done by the constitutional reform committee? Where are we with that? Well, the as as the minister might have said, 
I didn't listening on the platform because I, I had other things to do. I had other things to do. But um, the the work has moved a pace, albeit just putting it in context that from the very outset, we had concerns about, and we still do have concerns about how the 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 government had structured um, and approached the whole process of constitutional reform, particularly on the matter of consulta consultations. Mm -hmm. um, and the truth is, were we to do it, we have done it ourselves, it would have been done differently. Mm -hmm. But you have one government at a time, and you have to recognize that they were they were elected by the people. Mm -hmm. Are you still there with us? The Hilton, the Hilton. Is he is he there? Um, no. There appeared to be um some styling issues or the lack thereof. I don't think he has styling. Maybe you should introduce Always, him. Always because we feel that the best, way, the best way can are you are you hear me? Yes, we were inquiring if you were having some Starlink issues or or or, or internet con connectivity issues. So we, by, by the way, where did you miss me? And and, and I didn't greet my bro my brother and friend Isaac, but I, I recognize it's fine, you. Man. It's fine. It's um, you, you, fine. We, we missed you at um the government. Govern, they are the government, as in no. Before you go any further, Mister Elton, let me stop you right there and just put something up on the screen. So, because I, I'm hearing this thing that there's only one government at a time, and and it's puzzling to me because I was under the impression that the parliament, the senate, that that's part of government, whether you're opposition or ruling party. Let me just put this up, and, and then maybe you can explain that part of it to me. Mm. Here you go. This is put out by GIS, right? And it says... Um, Kevin is not with me with us right now. Kevin is traveling. That's the technical guru. But let me just because I wanted to enlarge this. But it says government of Jamaica, an overview. And it starts with the monarch right here. Then it goes to the governor general, the real bro god. Then the services commission on this side, privy council on that side, and then the three branches: legislature, executive, judiciary, senate, house of representatives. Let let me just clear this up. I may, well, let me ask you to clear this up. Yeah. Is technically speaking, is the opposition considered part of government in Jamaica? Technically, technically, yes, because you're part of the the the, the parliament in a in a in a joint in a in a in a system where the executive and the parliament coexist. Yeah? Okay. So 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 yes, technically. Um, but the point I was making is that really, and to, to, to make it the point technical, you have one executive. Ah, the there you yeah. go. So, so, so that's the that's the fine point. Um, okay. but, we, but when we talk generally and, and in sort of colloquial terms, we say government at the time, meaning it's one of it. Well, it's really the executive actor, right? So okay. the, the cabinet, the cabinet makes policy and. And, and, and initi initiates a number of things. Um, and in this event, in this case, they initiated the constitutional reform process. So that's the point I was really making, that they okay. they, they have the, the right, the responsibility, and they've exercised it in a particular way that were we the government, I'm pretty sure we would have exercised it and done it differently. But we are not. I mean, we have to respect that an election was had and they're, they're, they're the party in, in power at, the, at, the, at this point of time. Let me bring on, we're joined by Herb Nelson, our resident intelligence analyst, political commentator, head cook and bottle washer. So mm -hmm. there he is. But Mr. Hilton, you said that, you know, one government at a time, and if if if, if your party had a chance to do it, they would have done it differently. But yeah. isn't it true that at one point the PNP had this to deal with? 
No, but the question, is, is it yes let, or let me, yeah? Let me let me just ah. say this is okay. a process that has started that was started in the seventies. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm sure the answer is true is is yes. Um, so the question, then, because you're saying no, and 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 it's a fair point. I think you would agree with me when you said, well, if we had a chance, you know, if we were in power, we would have done it differently. I mean, a reasonable thinking person with, with armed with the facts would have said, but you had a chance and, and you didn't do it. And so now this, this party here, this party running the government, now they're trying to do something about it. Yeah, so, so, so let me make the point. In, in different, I've been, I've been in the parliament for some time and I've been in government um, um, on more than one occasion. And every government is faced with different sets of priorities, right? Every government, because things happen that government governments are forced to respond to. And so the last time we were in government, I, which is, which is the clearest thing in my mind, we had to be working to really rescue the economy. The economy was falling over a cliff. And we did not, I mean, I must tell you that my experience in that government, I've never worked so hard in my life. Um, you, you, you simply had to be 24 seven trying to just make sure that things were on an evil keel and that we rescue an economy that was, was really on, on the knife's edge. So in that context, the, the, the constitution, while important, was simply not the priority of the day. So I'm saying to you and to the listeners that the remember the People's National Party started the whole reform of the constitution back in the 70s to, through to the 90s, right? And so every time we had an opportunity where we had the time to do it and we're not, we're not um, directed by the, pri the, other, the other priorities, it remained a, a, a priority for us, including, including in, the, in the 2000, when... He's agreeing with you, Mr. Hilton, because you're talking a whole lot of things. That's just how the comment section feels. So continue, because you're making... We, the dog is excited, because we agree with you. Continue. Yeah, with him. So, 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 so the point is that even in the 2020s, we sought to address what for us is a, was a, and remains a fundamental concern, which is the or apex court or a court of, of, of final, the final court of appeal for us, which is the Privy Council. We brought legislation and it was opposed um, by the government. In fact, the first constitutional, one of the important constitutional cases that arose was because the prime minister and becoming prime minister and with the legislation pending um, before parliament, he had two of his, 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 his um, parliamentary colleagues or more sign blank um, resignation letters. Those letters became the subject of a constitutional um, is, um, claim and the, court, and the court ruled against him. So again, this was an effort and that, that commentary is really about the extent to which this prime minister and this um, JLP government has gone to resist the idea of a final court of appeal for Jamaica, of, of the Caribbean Court of Justice being a final court of appeal. So the truth is that at every stage, the PNP has remained very engaged and interested in the constitutional issues. But the, the last time I must say that among the, the critical issues that we had to face was the economy. Well, before I turn it over to Herb and I, said, um, one of the things that we expect from our government is the ability to walk and chew gum. Notwithstanding the fact that you had to rescue the, you know, rescue the country from, from financial disaster, whatever, I would still maintain the position that this is such an important issue that somebody should have been paying attention to it. Somebody should have been shepherding it through the process to get it to 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 you know um, the amendment and to remove uh, the monarchy from our system of government. So, but I'll leave it at that. Let me just open up the discussion. Um, I sat. Yes. Do you have a question for Mr. Hilton? No, I just um, I not such so much a question, but more so of a comment. 
because I, I, I think that a lot of persons, not that they, they won't, they would never be able to appreciate oh, okay. that. They would never be able to appreciate the um the significance of the significance of the work of um Dr. Dr. Phillips as the as the um at the time the finance minister if I if I'm correct about the, with the economy um, as well as um the work that was put in to to save the economy and get out of the iron the bailout with the IMF and rescuing the economy. So I know that you said it and it was done in passing, but and you said, oh, they don't know the work that I did, but um just to paint a picture for for just the common man in terms of how a government would have pulled together from all ministries to ensure that um the focus was to ensure that Jamaica didn't become Haiti, albeit it appears that's that's where we're going now by the actions of this current government. Uh, it was just Comment. Yeah. Feel free. Yeah. Um, let, me, let, me, let me comment on something else, um, Isaac. Mr. Ratigan, you know, anytime the truth speaking on your program, people have internet issues. That's why I went to Starlink. Um, that's why I went to internet. I won't say I won't say my provider. <laughs> I won't say who my provider is. But oh, okay. <laughs> you're not gonna make them know. You're not gonna make them know. All right, all right. No. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it comes back. I'm very happy with my provider. Herb, welcome, welcome, welcome. You look fresh, man. You drink up your herb tea. Look like herb of starling. Okay, Mr. Hilton is still frozen. Yes. All right. Can you hear? Yeah, we can we can hear you. Hear me now. Ratty, can you hear me? Yeah, oh, man, loud okay. and clear. Yeah, I, I've been having severe problems since the into last night, which was this morning. Uh the WBAI interview is like my whole internet been going crazy. So this is my third computer that I finally get to log in and I'm able to get on. I don't and if they're jamming me all the way from Kingston Town, uh, I said, you may have to go sue somebody down there for me so I can make sure they're not jamming me from Kingston. <laughs> wow. Anyway, folks, greetings to those in the audience <laughs> and to uh, Mr. Hilton. Uh, he's not there. I was going to um, present some commentary to him like uh, you just did but you know the past difficulties for jamaica i believe for most of the last three decades jamaica has experienced very low growth high public debt and significant social issues right uh the high public debt and significant social issues tells me why the jlp is not spending money on communities, why they're not doing community development, why they're not into community housing and stuff like that, right? And um, they say repeated efforts to overcome back. Back. those type of economic problems often with okay. kind of support. Huh? No, he's back. Mr. Hilton, you were responding well, to right. coming. You said you wanted to respond to yeah no I, I just wanted to make me make this point um i said at the beginning that for us the constitutional reform process which we started in the 70s took through the 90s and into the 20s um was a far more um broader vision if we if we had taken a sort of narrow focus which is just to aim at removing the monarch then I suppose you could have done that while you do undertook the, the, the emergency um, situation of rescuing the economy. But our okay. view of the, of, the, of the Constitution was always a broader vision. And All therefore, right. we could not have admit, and that's why I keep saying, if we, if we were doing, if we're in office now and doing the, the, the reform, it would have been a much different 
format and a wider um, constitutional undertaking. Point well taken, and I hope people understand what you just said. I was asking the question about, you know, focusing on what government is supposed to be doing and then at the same time doing this constitutional piece. And Mr. Hilton made it abundantly clear that, listen, we weren't about doing piecemeal, you know, one, you know, three or four tranches, you know, different, different approaches to it, to the same document. They were going to take a more expansive, a more comprehensive view to make basically address most of the issues in the constitution not what they're doing now which is to address it peace 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 point well taken sir um herb you were saying something you wanted to say something to mr hilton is herb frozen herb yeah i think herb is frozen too we have some um you know isat has been advertising starlink for quite some time now and I don't know, Mr. Hilton, see, Herb's gone. I don't know how often you do interviews, but uh, might I turn you over to, to ISAT in case you, you've been having, you know, these these delays and these hiccups that you should probably install Starlink. Uh, he's a Starlink <laughs> representative in Jamaica. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, while we're waiting on, on Herb to come back, I'm going to ask you some questions. Um mm -hmm. The yeah. let me start with this one. The and, and it's all parliamentary stuff. The the speaker of the house, who I believe at one point was in charge of government business and therefore the de facto number two person. Well, first let me ask, am I correct in that characterization? No, she was she was never in charge of government business. She was chair of the economy and production committee and the deputy speaker so she was the de facto number two person in 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 line of the speaker she was okay number two speaker. all right good so um speaker dalrymple philibert resigned and now we have a vacancy mr delroy minister delroy chuck he nominated the deputy speaker and that was backed up by Mr. MP Philip Paulwell. I have a tape of that where he, he registered his concurrence. Can the can the opposition uh, or can the opposition continue to make that argument that you know you can't have a prime minister's wife in charge of the parliament because it just smacks of all kinds of integrity issue, all kinds of appearance of impropriety even though there may not be any evidence can the pnp make that argument no or is as as that horse gone through the gate a long time ago no the pnp can make that argument and is making that argument because the the, the truth is this is unprecedented in anywhere in the commonwealth that i'm aware of um and so there was no precedent for it what we had precedent for is where a speaker is being nominated on that on the process for doing so. It, the truth is that within the opposition, there were differing views about it. Um, the, the truth is there are some, including myself, who had concerns about the issue. Others did. Um, and we said, look, um, others felt, look, the they, are, they have the numbers, they are going to, um, they have made a decision, the selection among themselves as to who would be the speaker. She was the number two and they, and they were going to, to, to elevate her to that position. Now, the view, the, the, view the, the discussion occurred that similar to what you see um, being trotted out about the leader of opposition having raised the argument, he was being accused of being misogynistic and anti-woman and all kinds of nonsense. The fact is we anticipated that without, without her showing her true colors, those arguments would have been continuous because she would not have been allowed to exercise, um, to, 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 to show what she was, what she was capable of or what policy position she would carry. 
So mm -hmm. the, the argument on the one end was, look, yes, there are concerns, but it is quite possible for her, and, and, it, and we were hopeful that she would, she would exercise a level of independence that difficult as it was from, a, from the point of view of perception, perhaps she was able to do it. And final analysis, there, there was the, uh, okay. So can I continue? Did, did, did you miss Please, it? please, please. Yeah, so I'm saying, so the other argument was, look, give her the opportunity. Let us see whether she will acquit herself in a manner that, that indicated that um, she can be as independent as the position required. There are many doubts, many doubts. Um, I had doubts, others have doubt, had doubts as to whether that were possible. But um, I think having seen her in action and having had the benefit of her rulings, it is very clear that that, left the, that independence that that position requires and that we are demanding was never exercised. And so now it's not on the basis simply that she's the wife of the leader uh, of, of, gov of the executive or the prime minister, but that in her own actions, in her own rulings and decisions, we find them to be suspect and we believe that she has demonstrated that lack of lack of independence. Look like we look like the minister um, MP Hilton is having some more difficulty there. Um, there's Herb. Herb is having some difficulty too. There's Herb. Yeah. yeah can, did, you, did, you, did you hear my my last point? Uh, we 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 heard we 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 heard you. Yes, what I'm saying, is, it, it sounds, one, one quick second, it sounds to me like, and it's justified that you're criticizing her performance, and that yes. is fair game. Yeah, I agree with that. But I was just having a little bit of issue saying, well, wait a minute now, why didn't the opposition register their disagreement with it and say, listen, even for the record, just say, listen, we, this is, this is unprecedented. We it, this is gives the appearance of of impropriety, and there are some ethical concerns having the prime minister's wife as the speaker, and even though there is convention that we normally vote for who whomever is is nominated at, for the speaker, um, in this instance, even if we do go along, we're going along with 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 objection to say that we don't like this, and that maybe. The, the the prime minister's wife should seriously consider having somebody else sit in that seat. That's the only argument I'm making. Yeah, and 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 I, I say in hindsight, which is always 2020, um, I think that point that 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 process um, might have been been followed. But um, it, this the, the occasion is, I mean, if you look back at precedent, the, the occasion is largely a ceremonial one because the decision has been taken by the majority as to who they want as their speaker. So it's largely ceremonial. And it, it was, I, I think the, the, what the leader of opposition business had to contemplate is whether you 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 reign on her parade when she's be, just been elevated. She has not had the, the, the opportunity to make one ruling. And yet you are sort of prejudging the fact that she would not be as independent as a position would. Herb, um, I mean, in hindsight, and as I said, it's mm -hmm. always if this if this ever again arose, I think you would you would see the sort of fulsome, um, you know, even objection at this stage, given what right. we have seen and learned. But um, yeah, I mean, I think it might have been done. I'm sure that the leader of opposition business, because we discussed it, and I'm sure he he had he had those two points. Um, in mind, but perhaps made a decision that on a ceremonial occasion like that, just like oh, you made a decision not to ask uh, certain question um, of the on that forum. It's, it's a judgment call, right? Touche. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, you got me there, sir. You got me. Herb, go ahead. 
Herb. Yeah, M Mr. Hilton. Yes. Can you hear yes, me? Yes, I can. Okay. All right. Uh, I I I have to really examine the decision logic. And we use decision logic a lot in the intelligence world, right? Where where we are asking the question. Yeah, go ahead. Did did the PNP not expect there to be a conflict of interest? As a speaker, one's primary duty is to maintain impartiality and ensure fair proceedings within the legislative body. No, I, Being no, could you, could you, closely could you related repeat? to the prime minister, creating repeat? a perception of bias of everything. Are you no, not I, here? Just repeat. I'm hearing you know. Okay. You're in a no. Just repeat. As I, I was saying, okay, as the speaker, uh, my friend, let me plug in. Um, I plug in on different uh, thing here, so you can. No, but but go ahead, go ahead. I think I'm. No, sorry. I think I'm hearing you. Go ahead. Okay, for the for the people. Okay, all right. I, ho I hope so. The speakers, the primary duty is to maintain impartiality and ensure fair proceedings within the legislative body. Being close related to the prime minister, though, could have created and appears to have created a perception of bias or favoritism or run in interference, potentially causing the speaker's ability to remain neutral. Why was it that as senior members of parliament, the PNP side, and to a lesser extent, the other side, could not see this coming on? But first of all, let me, let me say, it's easy now to see everything very clearly. Huh? very very clearly the truth is that you can you can look at it in, in the reverse which is she had an opportunity because it must have been clear to everyone that there was as as it is to you now and others that there was this uh, there would have been this perception that she would be biased and that she could not perform as was as the, the position re required however that could have had the effect of having her um, demonstrating and going to lengths to demonstrate her, her, her independence and her impartiality. In the event, that did not happen. But then, the, as you've seen and I've, as I've responded to the question, that does not, to my mind, um, 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 cancel for or waive the PNP's right to, to make the argument that, look, we we had concerns. We we wanted wanted to give you an opportunity to demonstrate that your independence, your very actions and your performance demonstrated that you have not. So when when the leader of opposition criticized her, it's not on the basis of simply she is a woman and and the wife of of, of the prime minister. And let me let me add this. Let me add this. In today's world, where women are in their own right and arguing to be viewed and to be respected in their own right. That's not an argument that is simply made. As you can see, when the leader of opposition did raise the argument, he was attacked as saying that this was he was being misogynistic. And that argument would have been would have been even more forceful and powerful had she not acted in the ways that she had, which has which has now under scrutiny. As, as demonstrated that she's in fact not independent and 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 is perhaps um, being in protective of certain interests on the executive side of the executive. So I simply say to everyone listening that hindsight is twenty twenty. I have a, I have said that there are, some of us had concerns about about the the, the the process, but in the final analysis, I'm satisfied that. Having given her the opportunity to perform, 
the criticisms now that are being levied at, levied at her is not about simply because she's a wife of the prime minister or that she's female. It is simply on the basis of her performance. And I think that ultimately must be the basis on which the argument is carried. I'm, I'm, may I interject here? Miss Holness is not here to defend herself and she's a strong black woman. And you misogynistic men that like to attack women when they're in high places is mm. unacceptable. Notwithstanding that she's married to the prime minister is not doing the best job that he could do. In her own right, she's achieved so much and she must be given all the rope that is necessary to do that what she needs to do. I think it's very unfortunate that after um, praising her and giving her the opportunity that the, the People's National Party would now want to separate itself from the the, the bias and the, um, the lack of justice that can be done and because of the position that she holds both as a Speaker of the House and the bedfellow of the Prime Minister. It is just unfortunate that you would now come on this platform, Mr. Hilton, and try to speak ill of the of the wonderful Speaker of the House that's doing a wonderful job in holding the report so that nobody can know what happened and it just needs to stop. And no. I'm, I'm, I'm going to shut up now, but the PNP is so misogynistic. All of the, all of you, I'm just totally disappointed that you would come on this platform and do that to the Speaker. Thank you. Yeah, well, well, let me let me correct for the, for those who were not listening. I was just hearing you, Isaac, for the first <laughs> time. I, I was I was doing no such thing. I was in fact, this is the very point because let me say to both Herb and 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 Seratica, look, she she the, the argument is made, and I think it, there's something to it. She ran on her own steam and was elected in 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 a, in a constituency. By herself, she didn't. She wasn't simply. She wasn't coming from the Senate. She wasn't simply being appointed by the Prime Minister. She ran in her, as, as a member of Parliament and was elected, and was the Deputy Speaker. And we did not object to her being the Deputy Speaker. So it would have looked. It would have looked, you know, strained for us to object for you know, ele elevating the position. The position having have been elevated to the position. The posi position having become available uh, vacant. So the, the, the whole position in the end was, look, give her, let us see and let her demonstrate to the world that she can exercise the kind of independence that the position requires. See, our position is that she has not done so, and therefore she, the, 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 the criticisms being leveled at her are fair criticism. But Mr. Hilton, you know, um... You don't have to hit your head against the wall to know that it's going to hurt you. Mm. And we had seen not, not more than glimpses of the type of person the speaker is. And so it's almost like, <clears throat> well, we have a pretty good idea of what she's going to do. So my, I would argue that well, no, we would object from the beginning and then we know that we don't have the votes to stop it. So that's fine. But then you let her go. And all I'm, I'm all about registering that objection, registering that complaint, because then you can build on that argument. Nobody can beat you with that argument. So I think, and this is just my personal opinion, I speak for only sure. that I saw things in her personality and this is just based on this is well, this is based on public reporting as well as some of her dear friends that brought me to the conclusion that what we're seeing now, I could have predicted it. Couldn't you, as well as the other parliamentarians on your side, didn't you see this or no? Or no. you decided to give her a fair shake just to say, no. let her go? Let me let me say, she has never acted as speaker of the house. I mean, she's never been in a position. She were, she acted on a few occasions. And on those occasions, I mean, I think I think there was I, I couldn't say that she was she was obviously biased in anything that she did. In fact, what we what we are concerned about are the rulings that she has made, and in, in particular as it relates to both oversight bodies, it, the 
with the Auditor General and the ICE Inter and the Integrity Commission. She mm -hmm. she she had she had no occasion or opportunity to opine or to indicate on either of those um, arrangements until she became speaker and sought to up, upheld or to modify the ruling mm -hmm. by the previous speaker. So that's the clearest, and that is the bone of contention. No, we're not objecting to her simply that she, you know, she she doesn't have the capability or or the, the ability to to be the speaker. We are objecting on the basis that she has gone down the wrong road and that her rulings are are inappropriate and are wrong in law. All right. Well, let me bring in Herb because he he's been interrupted by. Um, the lack of Starlink. Let me see if if his connection is working now. Herb, it, yeah, it, it it should be working because I'm using the cell phone, but I wouldn't be able to hold this for six hours. That's the problem. I am. I, 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 all right, all right, Herb. I won't be with you for six hours. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I know the audience would love you, Mr. Hilton. But listen, um, what? Are the tests remaining now that Jamaica has to pass for the IMF? And are, are they in danger of defaulting if they begin uh, infrastructure development program using the reserves that they have? Because it's so badly needed. Bridges are out, roads are out. And I'm not talking about the main ones that the Chinese built. I'm talking about inner city, inner towns, you know, villages, what have you. Well, let me let me answer your question in this way. I I, I think I think you're bowling, I think you're bowling me a googly, but I, I, I see the ball and I play it on its merits. Okay. Um the, the, the truth is, as you know, there are we don't have, we have a standby IMF program. We, we're not under a, a policy um, prescribed program in the IMF. So in a sense, the government of Jamaica has the latitude um, to, um, to make the decisions and set the priorities um, consistent with its, 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 its fiscal, its fiscal um, um, situation or condition. In, a, in addition to that, we have, of course, the fiscal laws which were put in place by us to ensure that there is due regard paid to your fiscal um, situation. So within those constraints and within that framework, the Minister of Finance and the government and the cabinet has the flexibility to set the priorities. So um, I don't know that this is a, this would not be an IMF. Um, conditionality. The IMF has entered into standby arrangements, which are less, which are more, far more flexible. And in fact, once they keep in tune with and consistent with the fiscal laws and the fiscal rules, I think the IMF, the IMF is, is is good, and because they, they, these are monies that have to be paid back um, to the IMF, and the IMF will be what the IMF wants to see is a debt repayment, is a debt management. Um, um, policy and structure that will ensure that it will be paid back and that it will not be in default in that way. So I don't know that um, you know, the, and the reserve situation, so I don't know if you're arguing for them to utilize the reserve that they have, which is really a prudential argument or lack of prudence um, rather than it is an IMF constraint. Well, you know, they, they hide behind that conversation each time they are asked about inner city and town and village development and the fact that you have had the people who do driving for a living complaining constantly i when i watch tvj and cvm they're always complaining that the cars and the buses are mashing up they are constantly um, fixing, and there's no way they can keep that up. And, you know, I mean, people are owed a fair standard of living. 
you know, government do their part, and they do their part to keep their vehicles in proper working order so they don't run off the road and kill anybody. But it doesn't seem like the government gets a gist of doing their part. They're more concerned with how the budget looks, how the GDP looks, and whether or not they're looking good financially. And these guys are left out in the cold. Well, so so I I understand the point that you're making. We have said, we have said um, as as regards the debt management, we would have done things differently. We we agree that it is good to pay down your debt because we were at a level of debt that was just simply unsustainable um, and crimped the ability of government to do the things that you are suggesting. Today, at 72% debt to GDP ratio, it has created some fiscal space that government can make other kinds of priorities um, for the for the country. However, we, it was by by law and by consensus that we said we want to move to 60% of GDP. The reality, though, is that this government is moving at a pace that by next year um, or the year after they, they would. By 2026, they would pass that 60 that 60 percent of GDP. Our view is that we will we believe the target of 60 percent of GDP is a worthwhile target to be had, um, but that the pace at which that is being done that could be modified to ensure that focus be had on more of these pain points um, that the people are complaining about and addressing some of those issues. So. Um, whether whether enough is there to fix all the road problems, I doubt it. But but I think the the focus must be on some of those issues that the people are complaining about, and for which I believe after the local government election they would have been acutely aware. Of. Let me okay. Let me let Go me ahead. switch. Let me Go switch ahead. the topic. Yeah. yeah, let me switch the topic a bit here, Mr. Hilton, and talk to you now about. Um, another issue in Parliament, and it's this convention had 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 it that when the Integrity Commission submitted their reports that they were tabled soon thereafter, they didn't have to go to an oversight committee or that committee or over here or reviewed by anybody. The Speaker, in her wisdom, decided that. And it appears to be unilateral that she was going to change the convention and not table the bill soon thereafter um, submission, but she was going to hold on to them and have you know all different people look at them, and at some point in time, maybe or maybe not, they would be tabled. She sought the opinion of the parliamentary council, I believe. But that's not important. The important person that she consulted with was the Attorney General. And she asked for an opinion on doing what she intended to do. She received that opinion. She decided she wasn't going to share that opinion with anyone in Parliament, which I found rather strange because she didn't the attorney general is not her personal attorney and the privilege if there want if if there's one that exists it's not between the attorney general and mrs juliet holness as the speaker it's between the attorney general and the parliament and i would argue and my learned colleague i said again i had a discussion about this we agreed to disagree um by extension the people so i was making the argument that any Jamaican would have the right to see this. And he was saying, no, the privilege doesn't extend that far, but it certainly extends to the parliament. Now, I, the gleaner went, and, and forgive the, 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 the background, but there's a reason why I'm doing it. The gleaner yeah, went sure. and it, filed an ATI, filed an ATI with the, with the attorney general. The response was that uh, under section 17A, I believe, of the ATI, that there could be a privilege that could be asserted if there was a trial and therefore they can't release the information. 
I then wrote the Attorney General, and I got a similar response. And he said that, um, it actually came from the Solicitor General, he said that we don't have the privilege, meaning they're saying that, look, we have a client somewhere, and that client, as you're well aware, the client holds the privilege, not the attorney. So the question is, who is the client? Now, here's the question. And I'm just, I was, I'm, I'm looking at all of this unfolding and I'm saying, why didn't the opposition, as part of that, of that, of that cadre of clientele, why didn't the opposition write to the attorney general and say, we are part of that, of that clientele. We hold that privilege. And therefore we're asking you to provide an answer and ask him the same questions or, you know, cause we, we could assume what she asked, but ask the question, does the speaker have the right to do what she's doing? Why didn't that happen? Yeah. But again, you know, the, the opposition, the opposition has made this position very clear from the very beginning. And, and has done so consistently, which is, we believe that the speaker, um, re re in fact, the request came out of a, de a debate that was being had, and the opposition requested that the speaker get the opinion of the, the Attorney General's chamber. And so, and, and the speaker then agreed and wrote to the Attorney General. We, we were surprised and still remain um, in disagreement that that opinion must be shared with the parliamentarians who with the parliament itself the speaker acts on behalf of the parliament and requested and got the opinion um, about parliament and concerning the parliament this is not a matter of the standing orders this is a matter of the speaker's interpretation of statute and we believe that's an erroneous it's an erroneous interpretation and that the opinion offered by the attorney general is rightfully the opinion for the entire parliament. Now, we have gone further to say that we reserve the right to have this matter too um, brought before the courts for the court's adjudication. And, we, and, we, and we, we do so. And it's a matter of our internal consideration as to when that may happen. But we, in the meantime, we're still giving the speaker an opportunity to present the, the, the opinion, as she, as, as she said at one point, that she would. So we, we'd want her to, we believe she's had enough time to reflect and to see that she is in error and maybe um, she'll do the right thing and, and present the, if she, and if she doesn't, we reserve the right to do what we must do uh, for the broader interests of the, of the people of Jamaica. Before I bring in that, well, let me say this right again. Sure. You know, having requested and been and and been denied, you are standing, though, to 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 to, to pursue this matter. <laughs> Don't give him any ideas, Mister Hilton. Yeah. Don't give him that. <laughs> I guess, I guess, I sat is going to have to intervene once once again. That's no, just wait, more. Wait. That's more money, I said. You know, but here's the thing. Here's why I I I welcome, I embrace the Monica Rebel. Because there is this spirit in me that says, when you see something, you don't wait. And here, here is how I would have handled it. And again, this is just Ratigan's opinion. Uh, the moment I ask her, and because she was asked by Julian uh MP Julian Rob Robinson, and yes. he said, I will think about it and I'll get back to you tomorrow. And tomorrow is, is today. It still hasn't happened. So what would happen? I'll give her a reason period of time. I'd make a second request. And if that wasn't, and if I didn't see her forthcoming, I would immediately write the, the, the attorney general and say, listen, I'm a client, right? So you need to give me our, uh, you, you need to give me your opinion on this matter. And if he failed to do that, then you know what I would do. That's why them call me Sue. I would be in court. You know, yeah, uh, yeah, but but let me let me, let me let me you know we've been with how long have we been waiting for her to turn this report over? How long? Yeah, well, well, you 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 already concluded it's too long on the basis of your. I'm asking you. I'm asking you how long? No, no, I mean it. It has been months. It has been months. It has been several months. But and remember what she said. She said, "I will give you my opinion 
tomorrow. And it has been months. I can't wait no longer. Yeah, no, but I, I, but I'm saying that let me let me say this. Um, look, when you every time we take a matter to court, it costs us the opposition. Let me make yeah, that clear. Sat, yeah, I sat right there. Huh? There's no, I sat no, right there. No, but I sat. Let me put it. I sat. I sat is a. You, you can't answer for I sat. I sat after. That's what I'm saying. Yes. That's what I'm saying. He's right there. He's right there. No, so what? So the question from me to him is what? Should be what? No, you said to me every time you have to take something before it costs money. I said I said it's right there. No, but I'm I'm saying. What I'm saying to you, like, what I'm saying, have a consultation with him and work out work out a fee structure. No, but you know, reasonable. You, you, first, lawyer. first of all, first of all, right? Reasonable lawyer. Well, well, what, what you're asking me, I know what, what you're asking me is if we're having that negotiation. I will not say. Negotiate <laughs> 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 <Okay>, again. <laughs> but but, but here, here's, here's something that's practical, Mr. Hilton. Yes. That question is a public trust matter. Mm. When the public is looking on and following proceedings, they're very curious to know why certain things did not follow what they read in the Constitution or they read in the standing order. And if she has to um, rectify the situation by asking the, the um, Attorney General to give a, a, a opinion, Right? Yep. Why not just deliver the opinion for the smooth running of parliamentary operations? Yeah, Why hold true. it back? Is there yeah. a political advantage in her knowing that nobody else knows? Well, that, that question would better pose to her. I don't want to speculate as to her motives. Um, the fact is, as was said before, we believe that 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 opinion um, is, a, is an opinion for the members of parliament. It should be provided to the member of parliament and we believe it will be, and it must be at some point. And if it's not done voluntarily, it will be coerced. I said. No, I'm just, the, the, Mr. Hilton said he won't speculate, but the beauty of it is that the public is allowed to speculate. And I cannot, I, 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 not being a part of government, can um, incite the public to speculate and say what I say every time I go on a show. Like when you are in school and the teachers give you your report card and it's A's are on the report card, you show it to everybody because you want your mother and your father and everybody know you're bright. But when an opinion is adverse to your interest, you're not going to show it as fast as you need to. And the public can do what we will. All I can say is a matter for the Speaker of the House to prove us wrong and simply share, share the advice. But one wonders what that advice says now in light of, uh, in light of that, that statement yesterday coming from the Attorney General's office that was very surprising. So one, <laughs> one, one wonders if we even want to see the, the advice because it don't even matter. Because what I can tell you is I, I can say this to the public who every now and then they listen to me it don't matter what anybody says here is the truth about it and myself and mr ratigan are at odds with this the opinion from the attorney general given to the speaker as a house is for the parliament each and every person is is supposed to each and every parliamentarian is supposed to have access to it and is on each any member of parliament can simply write to the, the attorney general and say can i have a copy and he cannot say no, because if him say no, I will sue for free. <laughs> Nobody has to pay me. No, I will no. sue for free. There are certain mm -hmm. things that, that in the interest of justice and good governance, good running of the of the country, that, that certain things must be done. And again, the taxpayers will pay in the end, because the court has no problem from the apex court being the privy council to our courts of appeal awarding nice cost orders when the government continues on its road of incompetence 
So whether it be the Speaker, the Prime Minister, the Minister of Education, who should be the Finance Minister, or the Finance Minister, who should be the Information Minister, and the Information Minister, who should have a job, and all of these things. It doesn't matter who it is. Um, when you're wrong, and when you're strong, taxpayers is going to pay for it. But, and that's, that's simply how we should look at it. And the good thing about it, here's where it, in defending the People's National Party is they raise a the suspicion if the if the other side wants to to, to 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 stay in that cloud of speculation and have it fester, they are going to experience what they did in the local government election, and they're going to be wondering why they're losing and their 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 whole um PR campaign and PR government and just look in the comments when you when you have time, Mister Hilton, if you rewatch it. Those who are paid to just come and troll. That's 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 the power that the government have, but we are we're in a space now where um we expect accountability, we expect gov good governance, and borrowing from the words of the prime minister, if we are to get what we pay for, we pay in government now, so you know have no excuse. Everybody wants your seat because the salaries are nice, so you don't mm. get to. The word is pussyfoot. You don't get to pussyfoot around. And that's you, not that's not parliamentary, by the way. I hear it from Mr. Lambert Brown all the time, and I love when it is said <laughs> and I repeat it. And when when the former speaker of the house say you can't say it, I see the parliamentarian say, No pussyfooting. <laughs> and then go, and it's a word that is acceptable in thy sight and on mm -hmm. the Rattigan show, and I'm gonna mm -hmm. use it. But that that is the reality, um, Mr. Hilton, that um Good kudos to, to, to the People's National Parties for raising it. Kudos to the opposition leader for saying, yeah, we give you a rope to hang yourself and it tight around your neck, leg of yourself now. And if they don't want to do it, it's a matter of them because this is it is a scoring points contest and this is this this is what is happening. But uh, Mr. Ratigan did ask for the a copy of the the opinion <laughs> will be filing to get a copy of it and we don't care what the court says but we are we on the outside as a part of the dirty 30 who we know we have standing and you didn't need to tell well i should say they know they have standing and you didn't need to tell them we also will do our part in ensuring um that the, the government does what it has to do because what happens in 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 this reality is um the more the more um the more this is left hanging is the more it forces the hand of the prime minister to call the election by a, a round let me check my calendar so i saw no i promise you i didn't go to st thomas or west milan um no guard rings were used in this prediction but i'm looking at the date and it's it appears to be that the election is going to be sometime in december um at this rate and i'm going to the calendar and it appears the the election is going to actually be wednesday the 11th of december so <laughs> so good job so they can hold their reports and they can do whatever and all of that we know that they can take as long as they want for the ones for the five that i heard the office of the dpp is vacant now so it's going to be a little more problem tabling the, the reports, because when the reports come out, Mr. Rattigan goes say, lock them up. And the, 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 what do you call it? The West Kegi Act, the Mississauga Act, the Tuskegee Act. Magnitsky. So, Magnitsky. The, Mag, the Magician Act is going to, mm -hmm. all of these things. So it's, it's really bad, you know. Yeah, the stench of green has an odor now. And I'm just going to leave it there. Th those are my comments. Uh, look, Mr. Hilton promised us um, to take, to give us an hour of his busy schedule. We have five minutes left. If he wants to stay beyond that, which I don't, um, we'll gladly keep him on. But Herb, go ahead. We have five yeah. minutes left. Mr. Hilton. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering, sitting here, as the opposition asks the AG for a copy of that opinion, Mr. Hilton, or, or is there some protocol that prevents the opposition from doing that we don't think we need we need to ask the, the, the ag the speaker should give it to us and we've got to demand it okay because because you see you see this is a matter this is an important matter that has to be clarified so that 
this will not be done again. So we don't want to simply go around it and get the easy way out. We want to do it the correct, the correct way, which is that the, this, the, we believe, and we said from the beginning, that the opinion is, is a proper, and the, 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 each member of parliament is entitled to, to, the, to the opinion. Yeah. And that's our position. So if there is no need, if that's your position, then you, you, you're watering down your position by going, by sneaking around to the AG and asking the AG. It's our opinion no, and I, the speaker should give it to us. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sneak around. I would just tell her flat out that you, you have one week to give it to me or otherwise I'm going to the, I'm going to the attorney general. <laughs> But, yeah, but, but, if you, no, but if you go to him, if you go to him, he's simply going to say, ask your speaker. He no, he cannot, cannot sue him. He no, cannot but, sue so, him. So, so, you'll, 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 you'll join, so you'll join both of them and you'll wait yes. and, and you'll wait six months to get the answer. It doesn't matter. It's a matter of principle because you're waiting now. You're still waiting No, but the, principle is, but the principle is that we are demanding it from the speaker and she has not said she's not giving it to us. She, she doesn't have to say. Just, she does not give it. No, but, but I'm it, saying. But I'm saying we will choose when we when we bring it. Uh, bring that action. We'll choose. It. All right. And I'm I'm glad I saw it in the newspaper today because I was gonna raise it with you and say why is it that you are not contemplating legal action? But I saw it in the newspaper today. Who <laughs> does? Well, no. Let me, let me. What you have four? You have three minutes left. Somebody in the chat. They said you know should I ask you. Um, what's the opposition's plan for Monday morning when? The courts are supposed to be opened and people are supposed to go before the bar of justice uh, with the DPP. It, 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 what, what's, what's the plan come Monday morning? I, 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 I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the spokesman on justice I, I, and I've not had a discussion with no, her. Not your personal opinion. Just your personal opinion. What do you think based on everything you see going on? Well, I mean, I, I saw that there was a matter that was what well, that was stood down or discontinued in St. Anna, I believe, um, on the basis that the DPP herself sometimes, and in matters, um, are, is required to give instruction to her, her deputies. Um, and so in those instances where where they, there's a need for the DPP to give, there's a ruling, for example, by the court, and the DPP needs to direct or, or give advice to her her, um, her, her deputies, um, that could pose a problem. But I think in the main, in most of the things, I would imagine they could continue because the deputies themselves have certain latitude and certain um, and certain discretions that they, they, they can discharge and carry out. But if the broader question is about, I understand the broader question is about those acts no, the, the whole question of validation um, or invalidity of the acts um, by the DPP um, in our capacity once the ruling has been made. Let me tell you what my, my position is and an understanding of the law is that as at, as at um, Friday, when the ruling was, was made, all the, the, the actions of the DBP is probably um, covered. Um, but I think after Friday, um, when the court has ruled, I think the, the, whether if she were to continue in office and to give direction, I believe that those would be suspect. Okay. All right, look, we're going to leave here. They, they, uh, they, yeah. Let me just get this in here. I'm, I'm just stunned, Mr. Hilton, that you're making a remark that if she's in office, right? Because from a legal standpoint, the ruling has been made that she's been in that spot for two years, uh, well, going on two years without any justification. In other words, there's no legal basis for her to be there. So then they would have had to remove her. How is it possible, even if Delroy Chuck wants to appeal, how is it possible for him to keep her in place? Well, the, 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 I, more than Delroy Chuck, the Attorney General is reported in today's paper as saying that no vacation order has been issued by the court and therefore she can remain. I believe that's an erroneous um, interpretation. Interpretation. I, yeah, I believe it's erroneous, but again, 
you know, that's maybe another matter that the court may have to come out and say, well, you know, why would why should we have to tell you that it's a declaratory judgment? Well, you know, you know all the declaratory judgment says is tell you what the law was from the beginning. It's just declaring what the law is. Right. And so if it was illegal, it was illegal back then. So uh, on the other part of this, if a DPP is incapacitated for any reason or unable to perform, how does the deputy, the senior deputy, take charge? Or is there any any requirements there? Yeah, the 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 the, the, um, the committee, the services commission, would have to give that an authorization and say act in the in the interim. An interim appointment will have to be made. Okay. So the deputy, by default, does not actually take over automatically. No, I, I, I think those things are provided for. Because in okay. the case of going on leave, everybody knows first is going on leave, so you make the provision and you do what needs to be done. In this event, right. in this event, oh, the, the party leader, Mr. Golding, has made it clear that he expects and anticipates that the services commission should be doing its duty and beginning a process of of um, either appointing someone temporary, uh, uh, someone temporary, of course, and then to get the, the process on the way to find a permanent, um, a permanent um, um, person for the office. Okay. Thanks. Let me just, let me leave it there, Mr. Hilton. Thank you very much. We've gone over by two minutes. I promise. You. Right, no, so, no, 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 that's you. good. I'm, 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 I'm writing. Can. I'm writing my sectoral. I'm preparing for my parliamentary debate, sir. Okay, okay. Well, let's let's leave you alone so you can continue with the work of the people, especially the people at Waterhouse. Yes, um, yeah. You, you know, you, you know, you know. In the we play in the playoff tomorrow, uh, Monday. Oh, really? Uh, I'm yes, with Tivoli, the JP. Well, yeah. all the best. Look, take care of yourself. Well, before you go, Mr. Elton, can you confirm for Mr. Ratigan whether or not I removed this blue barrel behind him? <laughs> <laughs> Just wondering. Just move, move, move. Can you confirm if I removed that because Mr. Ratigan is, hasn't been here to know whether or not. So he, he always wants to. You know, sir. I'll, I'll, I'll make a call and I'll call him tonight. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look, thank you so much, sir. Right. Take care of yourself. All good the best. Good. Thanks, sir. All, right. All right. Be good. All right. All right. Um, let me just uh, let me play something here uh, while we have a moment before Dr. John gets on. Um, it is difficult. We keep on soldiering on. Yes. Life is difficult, but you must soldier on. Don't give up. If you are a coward, you don't belong here. If you are a coward, you don't belong here. If you are a coward, you don't belong here. But if you fight, even when things are difficult, Can you I hear keep it? on fighting. This is your home. Welcome to the home of black people who never give up, who keep on soldiering on. Even when it is difficult, we keep on soldiering on. One day, we shall arrive because we know we have a future and that future is what we make of it now no one is going to destroy us because we have an appointment with that future a very important appointment with the future and you are not going to stop me into making it into that appointment with the future Folks, that is the sentiment expressed by Global, the registered the owners of Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. No one is going to stop us. And we don't have any cowards around here. We don't. That's not how we operate. And let me put something. Let me put this up. Take a look at this, folks. See that? The Honorable Marcus Mosiah. I have no desire to take all black people back to Africa. There are blacks who are no good here and will likewise 
be no good there. And that's what's going on with our train. There are some people who will not be on the journey with us. They're no good before, and they're no, they, they won't be any good to us. So we understand when some people decide that they're not gonna, they're not gonna support us. We and we expect it. We expect it. And here's another message. Here's another message. Yeah. Biggest communication problem is we do not listen to understand. We listen to reply. I'll leave that up. Because we people are not listening to what we're saying. They're just reacting to the fact that all oh, these people want to take over. All oh, these people want to destroy brand Jamaica. And they're not listening to what we're saying. They're not listening. They're not listening to understand because if they understood the issue, we wouldn't be in this rocky position where we are with them. And we're fine. We're yeah, right. I get text seven. No, mega what yeah. Kevin set me up before him in, in, in step off, but you know, Kevin not too far. Kevin is not far away. Can always reach out. Oh, Dr. John is here. But again, see that folks. Just remember this. The biggest communication problem is we do not listen to understand. We listen to reply. And I'm going to put up this message again later on because you know why? And I'll just give you a little tidbit. This week, I had the opportunity to speak to a government official, a Jamaican government official. And we were talking about the ruckus between the Jamaican government and the owners of the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. And I made it abundantly clear to him that, look, we all want the same thing for Jamaica. We want peace, tranquility, prosperity, happiness, good standard of living, low crime rate, good drinking water, infrastructure, high standard of education, housing, all of these things. We said, we, we all want these things. But we are the only ones talking and taking action to get these things going because the other side is just promising, promising, promising. And we decided that the group that I represent, and now the group has, by the way, uh, I said, the group has whittled down now. It's no longer dirty, thirty. There's a certain minister running around saying it's three to five. Three to five people. <laughs> Causing all the problems. So, but three to five is thirty-five. So, they're increasing the number. Because <laughs> you know the ministers that too much in it, they can't really add a subtract. So, it's now the dirty thirty-five. Roger that. Right. So, yeah. But so they're saying, and we had. A, I, I said to him, look, you know, we're willing to sit, but this time when we sit, we're sitting as equal partners with you. We're not sitting as subordinates where you tell us what to do. And folks. If you don't, if you haven't read the global, uh, I'm sorry, if you haven't read, yeah, the terms of reference for the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, I am going to walk you through. And when you see it, you're going to be completely surprised at the amount of leverage and influence that the government of Jamaica has over the diaspora. Think about it. Jamaican government can't even run the Jamaican government. They can't run the country of Jamaica. And they want to take on something like the diaspora. Think about it. They should be spending the time fixing roads, taking, taking care of the healthcare sector so that the American government won't have to send out travel advisories and, comp and, and warn people not to come. By the way, an American woman died last week, I think, um, um, from some stomach thing in one of the hospitals. Not a good sign. But we're saying to the Jamaican government, take your hands, take your grubby hands off of the diaspora. Worry about what you have in Jamaica. You have a huge problem in Jamaica. Deal with that issue in Jamaica and leave us to just deal with our issue. Right? Leave us to, to, to concentrate. Leave us to collaborate, cooperate with each other. 
and, and, and establish a relevant, robust, strong, vibrant organization that we can turn around and now help not only Jamaicans living in Jamaica, but also Jamaicans living in the diaspora. Because there are Jamaicans living in the diaspora who are suffer like dog. Right? L leave that to us. But instead, they can't run Jamaica and now they, they won't come around the diaspora. Well, they have, not, they have something else coming to them. But here's what happened before I bring in Dr. John. <clears throat> we were willing to sit down and we had a gentleman's agreement that we were going to, he was going back to the government side and said, look, these people are willing to come in and, and sit down and so we can talk over the issues and we can, you know, come to terms for the benefit of Jamaicans living at home and abroad. What happened? This happened on Wednesday. What happened on Thursday? Minister Terry Long had a, had a, um, a press conference, a launch in Miami, and he, he leaned into us. I mean, he really did. But, and I'm not going to play the tape because we tried to hook it up, but no. I, I, I made notes. I'm going to go through the points he made and you're going to see in a demonstrable way that he has no business representing Jamaica on the international stage. None whatsoever. This man is plain and simple a liar. Or as we say, a liar. This man is a liar. And I'm going to show you how this man's a liar. And we have, at this point, we have, we have, we have, I wrote I wrote that government official, the one with whom we had a, a gentleman's agreement to meet. And I said to him, the minister has thrown down the gauntlet. I thought he was coming in the spirit of cooperation, collaboration, so that we could meet and, and, and try and come to terms for the interest of Jamaica. And I said to him, last thing I said to him, it is what it is. So I hope Nobody no call me no and talk, but we want to sit down and talk right now. I just hope nobody call me. Because that politician, that, that government official, she am like dog right now. He can't talk to me. And it's so, it's so sad because that person is a decent human being. And I would have loved the opportunity to have a group of us in the diaspora sit down with a group of, of, of Jamaican officials. And just go through all of the stuff. But that is off the table right now. So we'll get to that later on. Lots to talk about regarding that issue. Let me bring on Dr. John, our resident expert on a number of things, including bauxite, the economy, and renewable energy. Dr. John, welcome to Reason with Ratigan. And I shouldn't even say welcome, because you're a part, you're part and parcel of what's going on here. So um, when I say welcome, it sounds like you, you come on like once in a while. But you know, you know, you're part of this. This is your home. You can just come on. Just you have the key. Just open the door and come in. So, sir, um, what's on your mind? I know yeah. I have greetings, well, Isaac. Easy to play for you. Have and every holiday. Go ahead. Blessings, Doctor John. What's on my mind? You know what's on my mind, Well, you know, what's on my mind, the teeth, them in the country, that's the biggest problem, isn't it? Yeah, just teething up all oh, yeah. our money, man, just wasting our money away, it's quite remarkable. Can you hear me? You yes, right? when you say the thieves in the, in the country, uh, who are you referring to? Are you referring to um, the gunmen or uh, who, who are you referring to? The politicians, man, you know, I'm talking about the politicians, man, the teeth in our oh. box site, and now you look at the debt that uh, we're paying millions, billions of US, and we've got nothing to show for it. Quite remarkable. And we have this airport with two planes landing every week, 150 passengers a week, 40 million at least we spent on that. No, man, uh, it's time, time come for them to go, man. It's too much now, it's too much. I want to repeat. We can't have the country running like it's running at the moment. John, we can't. John, hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause, pause. Why is John sounding like a Dr. John? Why is he sounding like a PNP? Did I hear time come for the corruption <laughs> is to go? No man, repeat that man. Turn up John Mike. I'll make him repeat that. 
Ah, uh, because I said time come. Because I used the term time come. Lord <laughs> have mercy. I should, have, I should be wearing orange. I should have put on orange as well, should time. Let just wait. Let me just go and try to find the orange shirt. Yeah, but but Dr. John, uh, what I needed to repeat. You don't have to repeat the time come uh, mantra. Only if you feel like, or if you wanna, you want you want. You want to encourage Isaac, right? Oh, but listen, what, what, I, what, I, what I'd like you to do is repeat that piece about the... No, no, the, more uh, that. no, no, no. Airport. Yeah. No, 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 the airport. The airport that has been referred to as the Coke port. Um, but slowly, just tell the people what's going on over there. What's going on with that airport? Well, as I think most people know that it was, op it was opened in 2011 under the JLP government, and then they decided to expand it. We're only getting, from the figures, we are only getting, over the 10-year period, we got 11,000 um, passengers. So it actually worked out to less than 1,000 passengers per year were landing at this airport, and yet they decided to expand it, and expanded it, and it cost us over 40 million US to expand it and of course all the people are told okay there's going to be more jobs there's going to be more uh, for the hotels more um, passengers coming in so the, the whole economy around around Boscobel will improve and then we find out that there's only one airline landing there and that's American Airlines and it's landing a plane on the Wednesday and the Saturday and that plane only carries seven a total of 150 passengers um, coming into Jamaica every week, and we spent $40 million. This is US dollars, of course, expanding the airport. And then you've got to remember the cost as well of running it. So before, every year it ran at a loss. And last year it ran at a loss of 1.7 million US. That's why it ran at a loss last year. So the airport should have been closed down. But of course, um, they decided with sandals, of course, because they're involved in it, because Butch Stewart for an ear, always in the ear of um, whoever was in charge, let's expand it, let's expand it. And luckily for him, he's got his lovely um, um, sandals resort 20 minutes away from the airport. So we need, there's a serious amount of questions uh, need to be asked about this airport. Because um, Daryl Vaz is now talking about um, opening one in, in Negril as well. So we're going to have two white elephants just, just dead solely for um, hoteliers to make money. We can't make money from it. We can't make money from it. So, so there needs, to, there needs to be an audit of what, what's going on. Because so I sent up an ATI as well to find out how much they actually spent on expanding just the, um, the runway. And they didn't send me the information. They sent me information about other things, but nothing about the, uh, the runway. And let me just add that we spent, I don't know how much we spent on it, but there's a sandals lounge also at the airport. A sandals lounge. Now, are we the people paid for it? Or is um or the sandals? Now we paid for it, but is it a case that sandals are leased in it now because their name's on it? So that's something else we need to find out. So it's very questionable. So everything that you've said so far would lead a reasonable person to conclude that. This airport was constructed and expanded for a business that is 20 minutes away. Because I don't know, I, I don't know of a single person who has ever flown on American Airlines to Bosco Bell. Can you, can well, you hear, can say, you hear me? Well, it said it's just opened up. And yeah, if you live in that area, that's great. If you're in Miami or if you're in Fort Lauderdale, if you're in, in Florida and you're coming to Jamaica, that's good for you, isn't it? That now you don't have to go to, say, um, to um, Kingston or Montego Bay. You can just land there. It costs a bit more money. I know it's more expensive to land there. Not terribly expensive, but it is a little bit more expensive. So, yes, yeah, some people, some um, of the diaspora will actually and um, benefit from it of course they will but uh, not for 40 million dollars and for two flights a week the airport all the due diligence should have been done beforehand to find out okay we're spending 40 million 
So you do your cost to benefit analysis, don't you, to find out how much money you're bringing in and how much your costs are. And then you weigh those two up and based on that, the benefits must outweigh the cost. And we have a situation where the costs completely, completely outweigh the, um, the benefits. So that was not done and that should have been done. And that's what happens in this country. It's the same thing with our energy. With it. When I keep talking about we should have renewable energy, the same thing was done. There was no cost benefit analysis carried out. And we just automatically just transitioned from Venezuelan oil to US imported LNG. So you know straight away who's benefiting from that. Let me let me switch gears and play that video. Dr. John produced a video quite interesting um everyone i'd like you to just pay attention to this video um because i know you're gonna ask questions i know you're gonna ask questions and the video is not long i think it's uh, it's like 11 minutes or something like that and we can stop it and ask questions while it you know oh, 15 minutes i think minutes? okay let me, let me let me put the video on i could be mismanaged for as long as i can remember in 2013, the IMF labelled her as one of the most heavily indebted countries in the world and their prescription has been a severe austerity programme. The primary focus is... That looked like a neighbourhood when we grew up in a... One at a time, yeah. The problem with the so volume, Will. The GDP ratio... Can't hear it. ...percent before 20... You can't hear the video? Dr. John. It's breaking up. I don't know if everybody else can hear it. I'm struggling with it. I don't know about anybody else. All right, let me start over and then let me know. As long as I can remember. In 2013, the IMF labelled her as one of the most heavily indebted countries in the world and their prescription has been a severe austerity programme. The primary focus is to reduce the debt to GDP ratio to 60% before 2028. And this is being done by redirecting money from public investment in infrastructure, healthcare, education, etc., to debt repayment. Now, fast forward, and today Jamaica is an IMF poster child for debt management. Jamaica suffered economic hard times for many years, causing extreme and immense hardships. In 2013, Jamaica was one of the world's most indebted nations, servicing the Several national Several decades, Jamaica has struggled with unsustainable debt. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark says the IMF's review acknowledges the country's fiscal prudence. The macroeconomic stability that Jamaica has established has won uh, sort of praises from the international community. Jamaica is on course to lower its debt to GDP ratio to 74% by the end of March 2024, the lowest figure in 25 years, and represents a halving of the peak of approximately 150% 10 years ago. The announcement was made recently by Prime Minister Andrew Holness. Under the IMF agreement, around a third of annual budgets are dedicated to debt services. The Jamaica Labour Party and the People's National Party have created a weak economy dependent on remittances, that is charity, so these budgets are invariably inadequate. However, after taking a huge chunk from these tiny budgets, apparently Jamaica is doing well and the PM continuously brags about their stewardship and the silence of the opposition is indicative of their agreement with him. We have been able to reduce our debt, reduce our debt servicing so that we have more money to spend on the things that matter to you. So, everything related to the debt is going down, but no numbers were provided. Well, in January 2024, the World Bank produced a report about global indebtedness and the figures were frightening. As it relates to Jamaica, the World Bank says the country owed 17.6 billion US dollars last year. That's slightly lower than the 2021 figure of 17.8 billion dollars. As expected, the local media house, Television Jamaica, did not do any analysis. Here is an expansion of the table in their report. It clearly shows a debt on an upward trajectory. Not downward as expected, but upward. In fact, when it was claimed that the debt was at its highest, it was actually at its lowest. 
and over the 10 year period from 2013, the debt that we are told is falling actually increased by 40% from 13 billion to almost 18 billion US. In this table of ratios, the year we told that the debt to GDP ratio was at a high of around 150%, it was actually at its lowest. And during the following nine years, the ratio did not fall below 100% again. Now, this is not my opinion. This is World Bank data and it completely and utterly contradicts what we've been fed over a decade. The current ratio was not reported, but looking at the figures, it will not be trending to 74% in the near future. So how much was spent servicing this dodgy debt? Be afraid. Be very afraid. A bloody horror story. The World Bank didn't provide that data, but here is a table of the annual debt repayment figures for over that 10 year period. A staggering 22 billion was spent. So, in summary, under the supervision of the rescuing IMF, the JLP and the PMP have spent around 22 billion servicing a $13 billion debt, and it didn't decline. Nope, it ballooned to almost 18 billion. Every year, the BRJR group has regurgitated the JLP and PMP mantra about a fall in debt, but their report included a table with the debt rising from 12.9 billion to 17.6 billion, but this was not considered newsworthy, and this is indicative of a lack of journalism on the island. This is why folk must turn to social media, but instead of addressing legitimate concerns, the PM tells the country that social media is awash with lies. That is pitiful and certainly not prime ministerial. The fact is, the World Bank data shows a rise in debt, so an explanation must be immediately demanded from him and the Minister of Finance. And let me point out that the Leader of the Opposition was involved in the 2013 IMF agreement. They so, say, yeah, I want to serve, you know, serve the country. So I just parked my law practice, parked everything and just went into that. And that was hard work in a way because that IMF agreement that we had to get into was, I had to do a whole heap of things to, to meet those the, the things we'd agreed to. And my responsibility then was to, I, I was in charge of legislation for the government. So mm -hmm. a lot of the legislation that to do with finance and tax and the commercial side of things, customs, everything, I had to make sure it was done on time and delivered. So we were compliant with the IMF agreement. The details of the vampire IMF agreement need to be made public, but the World Bank data indicates that Jamaica was never, ever, heavily indebted. The analysis of the debt in Jamaican dollars is equally grim. You now know that in the 10 years between 2013 and 2022, around 22 billion US or 2.7 trillion Jamaican dollars was spent on debt servicing. That is indisputable. In this graph of debt figures from 1991, you can see the debt rising. In 2013, it was almost 2 trillion, and at the end of 2023, it was 2.2 trillion. In this table, I have compared the World Bank and Ministry of Finance figures, and you can see that they differ wildly. And when servicing for 2023 is added, around 24 billion US or 3 trillion Jamaican dollars has been spent. The minister spoke about debt servicing in his budget speech, so I'll cover that in more detail in a future block, but I can only but conclude that this debt repayment model is a scam designed to make greedy loan sharks richer. The evidence suggests that the people have been lied to and are enduring untold suffering and hardship based on falsehoods. For instance, there are numerous communities that have been marooned without bridges for years, so the people have resorted to building their own structure. Can you believe that? Only in a banana republic. Now, during the COVID-19 crap, Western countries had stimulus packages, but the Jamaican government preferred to spend over 4 billion US servicing the debt. It was reported that 24% of the poor were severely hungry but their plight was ignored because growing the national reserves was more important, increasing them by 1.2 billion to a record 4 billion US. Meanwhile, some of the poorest received a one-off payment of 10 grand, which was around 70 US. 
and that equated to $27 per day. The refund on a beer bottle is $30. <laughs> Just look at it. Caring? What a freaking insult. But he spares no one, no one from his brilliant fiscal management fairy tale. Not even children. At one point in time, 10 years ago, our debt to GDP was at 150%. You know what that means? The economic students inside here will immediately know what that means, right? Today, our debt to GDP ratio is somewhere in the region of about 78%. By the time we get to the next financial year, we will probably be about 74%. So, you, so I want you to understand the magnitude of what we have gone through just about 10 years ago. The country was really in a crisis. Through the sacrifice of your parents, who endured new taxation almost every year, no budget to repair roads, no budget to invest in health care, no budget to invest in public transportation, no budget to invest in garbage collection, no budget to build the auditorium that you're asking for. <laughs> no budget to pay increased wages to our public servants. Unbelievable. He has the temerity to accuse bloggers like myself of peddling falsehoods. Let me correct him. We do not have the money to invest in their school or education because every year around a third of budgets is earmarked for the pockets of greedy financiers. This is why the people are uneducated and hungry. And the continued sacrifices have not resulted in debt reduction and servicing costs increased 75% this year to a whopping 491 billion or around 3.2 billion US. And debt service of 491.2 billion dollars. Lying to the people is bad, but taking falsehoods into schools is immoral and unethical. But then again, this mob allowed toxic waste to be dumped beside a school so there's no laws that they want to sink to. But check this out. When folk check the lender to determine how much they owe, they're not told about bloody ratios, so why tell an uneducated people about them? Most don't know what a freaking ratio is, and many more can't spell the freaking word, so why? They inform the people about the debt to GDP ratio because there's something to hide, and spending 3 trillion Jamaican dollars servicing a 2 trillion dollar debt, which has somehow increased to 2.2 trillion, needs to be hidden. The figures clearly show that we are being ripped off and exploited to the max. The figures explain why there is no money for proper solid waste management, roads, bridges, etc, etc. We cannot advance with this fiscal piracy. It is immoral, unsustainable and will continue indefinitely if we do not act. There's a lot of talk about reparations, but dealing with loan sharks and corrupt governments should be the highest priority for all Africans. We cannot move forward tied to IMF debt traps and our finances mismanaged by treasonous parliamentarians. I hope you agree. We need to organise a national day of protest to spread awareness because it is clear that the country is not run in our interest. Our bauxite is being given away and our taxes are used to make the rich richer. If we want real change, we must have a movement to get independents like myself into Parliament. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and please sign and circulate the petition in the description. Thank you. Yes, John, thank you for doing that. Um, quite interesting. Um, some facts and figures there that I, I am sure most of us did not know because we've been fed a steady diet of lies, misinformation. Um, let me open it up for discussion. Isat, your thoughts on this this video put out by John? Um, it's very, very, very informative. I just uh, <laughs> the more as the video was going on, I just kept hearing um from the Andre show the the song Eli. <laughs> so I was just trying at the step away. I was trying not to laugh at it. Um. Not not at your presentation, John, but how how um it, the video has caused the prime minister to, to to it is clear how disingenuous and how um the engine of misinformation is just being is, is pouring out. 
And then um, your commentary on state media is just, um, it's so on point. Because you said, here are the numbers. And, you know, when you're watching TV, they just throw numbers at you. And then you listen to what is being said. And that's where you get your information from. And it's actually inaccurate. When you when you expanded um, the figures, and I got a clear sense of okay, you're saying this is down, but with when you when you um, juxtapose what it was before and then where it is now in relation to the U.S. dollar, we're actually in a worse position than we were back then, and you're making that clear as opposed to what is there. So, um, very informative video. Glad it was played here so people can um, get the opportunity to watch it again. I hope that you put it out on social media um, and maybe we can assist in doing that where um, TikTok, Instagram and, and, and YouTube shorts because um, it really is um, informative. It really is necessary. So thanks for that. Great contribution. Herb. Thanks, Isaac. Thanks, Isaac. Uh, yeah, I've I've actually been using some of your words in some of the um, presentations uh, up to last night when I spoke to New York via WBAI. I told them that that's a major issue in Jamaica with the government and part of the transgressions being lying to the people about debt to GDP and the fact that the debt was coming down. And when you look at the World Bank numbers, it's, it's a totally different picture. It's painted. Um, trust, I, I brought it up to Mr. Hilton a while ago. The public trust. Whenever the public can no longer trust the words of your politicians, right? There are some politicians who would stand out in the past. You know, when you talk about uh, politicians like Isaacs, uh, even Bustamante, Michael Manley, Norman Manley, you know, th their words stand for something. But we, we don't have anybody like that today. They can stand on their word. And their words mean something to, for the people to hang on to, give the people hope, right? Just by them saying something to them. And, you know, maybe that's why we probably need to get ISAT in there to run and, 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 and to do something to shake the system up, right? But, you know, he can't keep a low profile all the time. He's going to have to get out there and get out in front and, and show these people what real leadership is all about. And, and, and yourself, I mean, if you blaze the trail for him, I know you'll follow. So we're going to be waiting for you to blaze that trail and for uh, I said to come in as your deputy or something. You give him a break someplace. You know, you know, um, one of the things, gentlemen, that that is quite amazing to me is when they talk about the crime rate going down. Yeah. The murder rate going down. It, it it would appear to me as if it this is like a, a Donald Trump syndrome where you create the atmosphere for these things to happen or these things happen under your watch. And then you try to, you, 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 you do a little fixing here and there and then you say, look how great I am. But what people are not focused on, this is like a sleight of hand. This is like a magician. What people are not focused on is what was it when you got it? Not what was it when you got it? Now, the murder rate in 2015, keep in mind that this government took over in February of 2016, beginning basically the beginning of the year. The murder rate as of December 31st, 2015, was 1,208. Let that sink in for a while. 1,208. And if you remember... The Prime Minister campaigned, campaigned against that. And he said, look, I am the guy who's going to fix crime. I am the guy who will let you sleep with your doors and your windows open. And what did he do? They spent more money than any other administration and they boast about it. 
They said, we've spent more money than anybody else to deal with this crime problem. 1,208. Last year, it was, it was 1,300 and something, right? So for me, the yardstick is not the year before. The yardstick is when you received the mantle of leadership. And because you campaigned saying, look, we're going to get this thing below 1,208. You're going to be safe and secure in your spaces. And it has, it has not approached 1,208 at no time. From 2016, 2017 was a banner year. 20, 2016, I think it was 70, almost, what, 1,600 and some odd. I think I have the stats here. Um, I don't know if you have them handy, if you have the, if you have the stats handy herb but i just had him here a while ago it's it's nowhere near 1208 and so i am holding the prime minister not based on last year based on what he said he was going to do when he took over in 2016 and so we see this going on where the 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 the, the, the a problem occurs under their watch and what do they do they turn to the opposition party. No, when 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 look, I am an equal opportunity criti uh, critic. I criticize the opposition. I criticize the government. The problem is that there's only so there's only so much you can do with the with the with the opposition because they're not in power. They don't have the power of the purse strings. They can't make a, most of the critical decisions being made being made in Jamaica. The opposition. They don't have a say. Remember, they only have 14 people in parliament. And the government um, or, or the, 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 the JLP, they have, what was it, 40, 40, 48? Yeah, 48, because yeah, it needs 63. And, and, and um, Mrs. Dalrymple, Philibert, she resigned. So they have 48, and the opposition has 14. So whatever they want, they're going to get passed. It's going to pass, right? So... I don't understand how you can make that argument now, how you can how you can point to them when you campaigned on their deficiencies and you said, I am going to make life better for all of you because these people have made it miserable. And then you get a chance to do it and then you turn around and say, oh, it's those folks. I don't buy that. I don't, people voted for you because they were tired of those folks and they said, you are coming in as our savior. You are coming to do the job that we need done. And you said yes. And but, they gave you their trust. But Mr. Rattigan, with all due respect, I've been telling people for years, if they gave me the opportunity to suit up like Bolt, I would have beat him. I would have beat him and I would have had all those medals. And if they give me the opportunity now, the next elect the next Olympics, just qualify me and give me one race. Gold medal. First hundred days, gold medal. Just remember that. Well, yeah, I see where you're going with this. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. You don't come in after eight years. What? 2060. Yeah, you don't come in after eight years and then get to point to what happened before you took power. No, you don't. And people just pay attention. Watch the sleight of hand. Watch when they fail. They'll say, oh, but look at what it was before. And we say, what you should say to them is simply this. Yeah, we agree. That's what it was. And that's why we voted for you because you said you're going to make it better. So you can't point to them and say, they made it bad. I know you're here. What are you doing? Making it worse? You are supposed to make it better. So, family, please, when you hear these politicians, they come and they start telling you this nonsense. Just say to them, listen, we know, we understand that there was a problem. And that's why we voted those people out. Because you came in as our savior. But now you're pointing to those people because you're failing. We don't accept that. We want you to stand or fall on your own merits or demerits. So don't let them don't let them tell you that. Not, hey, you know what? Let me just make one quick point before I bring back Dr. John in. 
Minister Terry Long has been going around claiming that the three to five people are spreading propaganda and distrust and all kinds of nonsense. And we're indicating that we're destroying brand Jamaica. He's the one destroying brand Jamaica with his bunch and his pack of lies. And I'll show you one lie. I'll show you one lie that he, 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 he used to talk about it. We don't hear him talking about it anymore. Let me see. No, it's not that one. This one. All right. Take a look at this. All right. Folks, he was running around last year, late last year. Minister Terry Long was running around telling people that for the first time in many, many years, decades, Jamaica had uh, Jamaica's exports exceeded its imports. He's been saying that, and he can't run away from that statement. That statement is in print, and it's it's digitized. It's 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 he, he, you know he, he made videos with this. He said Jamaica's exports for the first time in decades exceeded its imports. Now this is the last set of statistics we have from statin let me put let me show you this here it is right here statin bullet statin is the is the clearing house for statistics for jamaica we have no other statistical body Th this is this is our our clearing house for statistics right now look at this walk with me you see right here Total imports. Look at total exports. Look, all right, look for January to October. All right? Total imports was 6.3 billion US dollars. Total exports for the same period was 1.6 billion. There's a deficit of 4 billion. Where does that say that? Imports, exports exceed imports. Where? And if you notice, he hasn't said it in a long time. He's been saying some other things. But if this were true, why did he stop saying it? Because we stopped him in his tracks. We said to him, Minister, you have no idea what you're talking about, or you're a bold-faced liar. And either way, Either way, you should not be representing Jamaica. He hasn't mentioned this since we brought it to his attention, but who the hell put that in his speech? And he was interviewed in the diaspora. He was interviewed in Jamaica. And this is what he was saying. This is what he was saying. And it's not true. There's a deficit of $4.6 billion dollars. But we have more lies that he stole and we're going to expose Well, well, it's the wrong. same, isn't it? Dr. John, the floor. With the debt. Same thing with the debt, isn't it? Yes. Well, it's the same thing with the debt. It's just the lies in it. I mean, say those are World Bank figures. They're not my opinion. The World Bank figures, and I just an analyzed them. And they said in 2013, when the IMF rolled up here, they called us, they said that we the most a bank put up they said that our debt to GDP ratio was nine, nearly 93%. And then you heard in the piece where they said it was nearly 150%. And you heard wholeness talk about it being 150%. We really have to, we really need to find out why were we under such severe austerity? Why? Why were we spending all? Over two billion US every year on a debt that isn't coming down. We need answers. Simple. We just we got to have answers to this. Well, we can't just sit back and think, oh, John came up and did this um, this video. Oh, it's interesting. Are oh, they liars? This is big. It's a big deal. It's a massive deal. Twenty four billion US, and we got nothing to show for it. Then you've got to remember as well, they borrowed the money, and what did they spend this money on? Now, I lived in Europe, 
And during the crisis of 2008, 2009, it was a big deal about Greece having to pay, repay money. But when you went to Athens, you saw them at a new airport. You saw them with a new um, uh, underground system. You saw all this infrastructure around. So you knew that they spent some of the money on the people. Where has where, where our money been spent? I don't, I don't see it. There ain't no new mm -hmm. laws, new hospitals. We have hardly any roads. So where's this money gone? Why but, when you, you I mean, but when you're paying, you've paid 24 billion US over a couple of years. Why is it that Jamaicans, family members, wake up, open up on their eyes? Why is it that we allow the government to keep spending our money like this and we're not holding them accountable? Here's another one. Look at this one. Over $43 million spent for Commonwealth Heads of Government attendance and Johnson Smith's Commonwealth campaign. Remember this lady? You remember this lady? You remember this lady I sat? Is that the, the Minister of um, Tourism from so, uh, African State? <laughs> Ghana. Ghana, <laughs> right. And that's Ampino. Ampino, yeah. Okay, okay. Ampino. yes, 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 yes. Look at this. 43 million spent on that on that expedition. <laughs> 43 million. We'll get to that story later on because there's something else going on with that story that I need to inform all of you about. But but John, the floor is yours again. You know, um talk to us a little bit about your campaign now. We want to hear about your campaign because people have been asking me, you know, is this this is this a worthwhile cause or is it an exercise in futility? going down the path of previous third-party candidates. Talk to us about that. Well, I was, I'm a third-party candidate. I say that I'd go in as an independent. But I said, as I, I said before, I wouldn't um, stand if I don't have some kind of project behind me to show the people that this guy can deliver something. Because at the end of the day, I said, I always talk about renewable energy and the people need to understand that we should have renewable energy because it's 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 a damn sight cheaper, isn't it? I mean, people keep saying, "Well, oh, do we have the um, the money for it, or do we have the expertise down here?" I'm not talking about that. I'm just looking at it from a financial position. It's like saying, "Oh, okay, then why do people buy a house? You're renting, and then you, and then you decide, no, I don't want to rent anymore. I want to buy a house." Now, when you're buying a house, how many people have the money up front to just pay for the house? They don't. You go and get a mortgage, don't you? That's what you do. So in Jamaica's case, that's the simple thing we do. When people can, then the other thing is because people now are so scared of debt because they see these figures and they keep talking about, Nigel Clark always talks about, oh, uh, if we borrow more, you think about what happened in the past. There's a difference between... Um, investing and spending i'm not talking about spending i'm talking about investing the people's money when you invest it you get a return on your you get a return on your investment and that's what renewable energy will, will deliver all our schools should be off the grid and that's one of the say it's a project that i'd like to do here to show the people look if we take one return and say hang on well why is my child why can't his school look like this one now because they're not paying their electricity bills now. They have extra funds now to put into uh, education, into feeding programs. I was watching something from, I can't remember, Spot Valley, one of the schools recently they were talking about, and the literacy rates have gone up there because they started a, a food uh, feeding program in the morning. Children can't learn if they're hungry. So these are simple things that we can do. All I'm talking about here, Will, is same pending in the re over 150 million every year that goes to JPS and we get very little for it. I leave my yard at night, I, I can't see anything because there's no street lights uh, mm. I'm working and that's not and that's not a lie. If you drive from Lucy to Negril, it's terrifying. There's hardly a street light down there. Now this is supposed to be a tourist road, isn't it? So you can see how much they really Really care about tourism in this country. They don't care about it because they only think about it as everybody being an all-inclusive. That's it for them. They don't want the tourists going out anywhere in the dark streets. So they don't they don't like the streets. But we need them because we live here. 
So there are these simple things that we don't have. And all I'm saying is that um, if we put to the government, look, this is the way that we think things should run. And we put up how they do things against how we think, how we think, how we think things should be done. I'm mixing up my words here. You with me? Yeah. We have, this is our analogy. We reckon that this is the way that we can get. Yeah. We need renewable energy because it will deliver proper solid waste management. And it, more importantly, it pays for itself. That's the most important thing. It pays for itself. It is not spending. Spending is when you build a new parliament building that is spending and no return on that. Sorry, Willie. You're going to say something. No, I was going to say, you have some, you have some really good ideas for Jamaica. Why aren't those ideas resonating with the people? Do you think that there is, is there something that you think that you're not doing that you, have you analyzed what you're doing to say, look, you know, I need to change my strategy in terms of informing our people about um, ways to improve not only the economy, but the country. Is there anything, is there something missing in what you're doing that that's not causing you to resonate? And I'm assuming that you're not resonating with, with these folks. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not resonating. Uh, say, I'm a man, I've only got my little platform, let's build a Jamaica, they can see there. I've got very few subscribers on it. But I have contacted people you think who would be behind such projects. For instance, I said, with a bauxite, we don't get any money for bauxite. So which, which organisation is the one who always making noise about bauxite? It's um, the Jamaica um, Environmental Trust. They're the ones who do it, and I provided all the information I've spoken about on here. They have it, and yet, whenever there's a, there was a, another uh, leak, um, a poison, a poisoned, well, the real co cobra poisoned again last early in the week, and yet again, you'll hear them talking, and nobody's ever mentioned. Hang on, Windelco doesn't pay the um, the bauxite levy. They're getting the bauxite for free. They're getting the bauxite for free and poisoning our water, putting people out of work take him all the way from the people in, some people in St. Andrew and, um, and um, Spanish Town in that area. They don't have water because of the, the real cobra poisoning. And again, poisoned by a company that doesn't give us a dime. Not only that, they deposit their waste right next to a high school. So I've told Jet about that. I've told um, the National uh, Integrity Action, um, Jamaicans for Justice know about it. Every last, every organization and everybody you think is a humanitarian, um, so that's um, what they call again. Um, they call um, with Rosalie Hamilton, what's that? Advocates Network. They know about it. But yeah, it, I don't know, Will. You, you have your program and you invite these people on all the time. You can ask them when they come on that next time. Ask them. You say, Dr. John's been on here, he talks about these things all, all the time and yet he's getting no help. Why isn't he getting help? Why aren't you out there um, talking about the things he talks about? It's very frustrating because I can't do it on my own, obviously. I'd like to hear yeah. from Herb, actually, because he's being very quiet. And the people love hearing from Herb. Look, I, what I've been looking at is what program can you deliver on for the people of Jamaica that would impact those people and the opinions of jamaicans and i put it in the private chat and i started putting it out in the comment section okay because here in the u.s you have what is called super fund en enforcement under the comprehensive environmental response compensation and liability act all right the u.s Environmental Protection Agency identifies responsible parties for contamination at specific sites, right? The EPA then negotiates with or orders these companies or individuals to clean up the contaminated site, pay for the cleanup work conducted by the EPA or another party, right? Now, the executive orders is what mandates federal agents to practice environmental stewardship at overseas facilities 
So it covers overseas facilities. So I'm asking you now, are those facilities former U.S. facilities, the ones that have the contamination? The ones that, like, for instance, behind you in that picture, are those... Sorry, Herb, you're breaking US up a little. Can you just repeat that, please? No, okay. Can you just repeat that, Herb? I didn't catch what you just said. Okay. I'm, try I'm trying to find out or identify the facilities behind you with the you know, oh, the, with the phone, chemical ponds. Can you mm -hmm. hear me? Are you hearing me? The, the facility yeah, yeah. Be, behind you with the chemicals in, in the pond, are those former U.S. Uh, facilities like Kaiser or, you know, in the, the U.S. bauxite companies that used to be there decades ago? And, and did they leave those sites behind? That one's um, Russian, actually. That's Windelco. It's, it's Windelco. No, that's Windelco. And that one's owned by um, a Russian company now, um, U, U, UC or U.S. Russell. Okay. Russell, R-O-S-O-L. Rus that's the company Rus now. Rus it's Russian. Rus yeah, that's Russell. Now, what I'm asking well, so, is... Yeah, but the bottom line is... Uh, we've got to remember, uh, you, you shouldn't actually be talking about um, contamination. The first thing you have to find out is, do we get any money for the box site? That's the first thing. If you're getting money for the box site, you're thinking, okay, then we're earning from it. Then you're thinking, okay, then look at what the, um, the costs are. That's what you do first, surely. Are we receiving any money for box site? No. Then you stop it. It's simple as that. You shut it down. We're not getting anything for bauxite. There's no reason for it to be for us to have mine in the country. Now, the, the reason I ask the question that way is if the EPA has to do an investigation to find out who is responsible, then it's possible they can go all the way back 5, 10, 15 years and discover who was the bauxite company operating in oh. the area? That's what I'm saying to you now. And that bauxite company... No, um, Windelco uh, built that in the last... I think they built that in the last three or four years. I think okay. Windelco built that. All right. I'm not 100% so, sure, but I, I'm... But, um, yeah, I, I think Windelco built that. Okay. So... You're telling me then there are no bauxite holding areas with chemicals in the water that has been there 20 or 30 years or longer that would have belonged to U.S. or Canadian companies? Oh, yeah, I'd have thought so because I did a video um, that um, I'll... Jazeera had a story back in 2008. Yeah. So that's more than 15 years ago. And that was when some of these companies were around. And you saw an area where, um, I can't remember exactly where it was, but you can see that nothing grows there anymore because nothing can grow there because the, it, it's poison. Yeah. But under these various regulations, I only pointed out the regulations for the U.S. companies. Now, the Canadians like to mimic what the U.S. does. So if it's a Canadian or a U.S. or even a U.K. company, then we should find out who has their Superfund cleanup regulation and who's responsible for enforcing that. Because then they would conduct the necessary investigation, identify the culprits, who did it first, Right? Not who last was there, but who did it first, who abandoned the stuff there, whether or not the Jamaican government was paid for the initial cleanup, whether or not the, the, the people who were affected, if money was given to the government to take care of the health of those people. This is the kind of stuff you want the investigation to reveal. And to me, if you're able to accomplish that under any of these funds that are available for the cleanup, 
and for the investigation, then you would have accomplished a lot, even though it may not uh, show the um, progress as far as whether the place is still viable, right? If it's not viable, yes, yeah, certainly close it down. But showing that there is damage done to people and that the land cannot be reclaimed is important. So that you can then file an action in whatever parliament to have them require the EPA or the Canadian version of EPA or the UK version of EPA to come in and take the necessary action to remedy the situation. And by the way, if the Russians have uh, their version of EPA, then we can file an action to the Russians as well. And asking by the way, them if the Russians have, come in, have uh, their version of EPA, then we can file an action to the Russians as well. And ask by the way, if the Russians have, come in, have uh, their version of EPA, What's then that? we can Where's the feedback coming from? File an action to the Russians as well. Yeah, we get no feedback. I hear you, Herb. But um, again, but at the end of the day, I mean, as I said, we have JET, the Jamaican Environmental Trust, and they've been looking at bauxite, they claim, from 2006. Surely you'd have thought they would have done all this already or not. Not, you know, um, I've only started looking at bauxite in the last couple of years. And these, these organizations said they've been doing it for nearly 20 years. So you'd expect that they'd have done all of that before me. So I don't, I don't know what has gone on before. But as you can see, <laughs> um, you, you wouldn't say that they're really conducting any kind of investigation into um, bauxite. Everything they ever talk about is always just solely about, oh, there's a bit of environmental damage. They don't actually look at the figures that come out of bauxite. And that's what they should be looking at. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, something has to happen that if it's beyond our scope to clean it up, then let's find out who's responsible. And let's write to their government and ask them to force a cleanup because the people are, are suffering. I said. The, the people are suffering. The people are suffering. So I went to a, I went um, to a bauxite region quite recently, and every when I was there with my uh, brethren, every, all the people they came out when they saw us with their cameras, they asked us who we were, and immediately they started to tell us that they, they, they're plight. Everyone, one of them, my children, come there, been, all have been uh, a minus problems with a big problem then they had uh, eye issues and then you say that you've got to remember as well these areas do not have running water they rely on rain water harvesting you can't rain you can't harvest water when your roofs are covered in red dirt so your water gets contaminated so they're having to buy water and these are poor people they're having to try and find the equivalent of 25 us to fill up a tank. Where are they going to get this money from every week? And then you say the government and the uh, the uh, bauxite company say, oh, we're going to deliver water. But they never come through. They just don't deliver water. When I was there, they said the last time they had water was prior to the election. Of course, the local election, they, they delivered water to there then. And they, didn't, they haven't come back again. And that was like more than five weeks later. I said, I, um, I have no comment on this particular topic at this time. Why is that? That's why I said that. <laughs> no, that's what that, that, that's what I said. Let me let me uh, let me tell you why. Let, let let me let me tell you why. Um, let, let me ask you this, then I said. Yeah. Would international law permit? a claim to the respective governments of those 
people who previously operated in Jamaica saying that, hey, here's a damage being caused by a company that you failed to regulate under the rules of the EPA or mm -hmm. whatever company. Simon uh, should think that I wasn't listening, but I was listening. But here's my problem. Um, we, we, we elect officials, have been elected these officials, they go into contractual arrangements that Jamaican people generally, they don't, it's not, I, they don't have the knowledge. So they're not going to, I'm going to say that they, they wouldn't even, they don't know what we're giving up. They do not know what we're giving up and they don't know the extent of the damage because majority of the persons in Jamaica, they're living below the poverty line or at the poverty line and they spend too much time trying to live. What I will say is the responsibility to protect the people is our government. I don't think in international law we're going to say that other governments fail to regulate international companies that is guided by privity of contract. If your government wants to contract with a private company to destroy the um, ecological system or the environment, that is solely placed at the feet of um, the government. And we just have to appreciate that. The thing about it is, um, even when you look at um, the, the picture behind John, not, John will come here every single week and what he what the, the points that he raises, they are accurate points, you know, but he also make mentions of NGOs who um, it simply is not their mandate because it's not attractive. It's not attractive because people won't understand it and because they won't understand it, they won't give funding. I think the most traction that he that that John has highlighted is the misinformation that comes from the decrunching of numbers. But even numbers is um is so difficult to follow that for me. If you're not speaking it in KFC, if if, if John doesn't come next week and say, here's the thing, Isaac, you get six pieces of chicken this year, and then and then next year it's reduced to one piece of chicken. I can the only time he gets my attention is when when I say, but hold on. How it was from four and now it's one. If you're not having that kind of conversation, there is a disconnect. So as 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 there are persons, if you're watching the um the comments, they're a bit um they're a bit disconnected because um they simply don't understand the 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 um what what where the liability would lie, where it falls. But I think that um I will just say this in terms of a claim that it lies at the feet of this government and when the government fails the people i'm i'm at a loss for words that the loyalty and the division between the citizens of the country when it comes to governance because at the end of the day it is, is the citizen that's that suffer the small amount of people there's only 63 of them that's in parliament that is allowed to spend the resources of the country for the benefit of if you want to say it themselves it it blows my mind that it is allowed and that, that that's why i said i don't really want to participate in the conversation where that where that is concerned but to say that i i i object that it is the international community that is responsible and i mean if we the citizens want to wait till it gets so bad that we need international intervention similar to that of haiti then that's on us. Herb? Yeah, I mean, I I understand what you're saying, but if not an attempt to force at least an investigation and clearly identify the culprits, oh, the Jamaican government was given X million dollars to take care of the cleanup. And this date, they signed for it. And then we can go forward with corruption charges after that. If the cleanup was never done and the money was used for something else. And the people were never taken care of as far as their medical stuff, right? somebody's got to identify what's going on we can't keep these people living in the same neighborhoods that are uh, that are messed up because they're gonna keep getting messed up themselves and then eventually die 
Okay. Well, I, that has happened, Herb. But yeah. here's my response to that. It lies at the feet of the government. Um, it, I mean, there are like, uh, even as we're speaking, there are almost like, I can say there are about 17 claims from arising from the rear cobra that the, that currently before the court it's 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 before the court in sections 2019 2020 2021 and then i hear myself repeating i don't know why that currently before the court it's it's right before the court sections 2019 what's causing that okay it's gone good yeah so i was saying that um and so we have that before the court and it's going to go through the system in the same in the same manner um five to seven years then it goes through the the courts of appeal then it goes to the privy council win or lose it's going to go all the way to the final court what we have to appreciate is this um the we have to have a little bit more education and it may have to come through john about um carbon credits we have we have to link the issues in terms of um land ownership when it comes to the maroons we have to we have to think we have to we have to think about protecting the environment and we have to we have to have accountability from government but the simple thing is this if you if you have family members who are sick um from the mining from from these companies that listen we you all the technology that we use bauxite is is critical and essential for it to happen so for all intents and purposes if jamaica become barren and the people the people never existed the world at large outside would be so okay because they could just finish um digging up the land and and jamaica would look like the amazon sections of the amazon or or the rainforest or whatever and um the people would be fine with that. Jamaica is only 3.5 million people. If we never existed, the rest of the world would be okay with that. An election in India takes six weeks for the 780 million people to vote. Jamaica don't even want to have um, one hour or 10 hours worth of polling. They wouldn't even say two days to get everybody to, um, to, 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 to vote. I'm, I'm just using that as an example, but whatever, whether people want to appreciate what their rights are not, there has to be um, representative actions and there have to be people who can help for people who don't understand. I see Pauline saying that she doesn't agree that um, people don't understand. Some people do understand what is happening. We don't have a say unless we demonstrate. Demonstrating is is a nine day wonder, just like media. Um, if you if you watch the videos, I don't know, Ratican hasn't played it this week, but you see the medical, the Meadowbrook girls fighting and it looks so grand and they thump up each other and then everybody and the high schools fighting and one and two of them get stabbed and one or two of them die. But it's going to happen again next year and it's going to happen and demonstrating it has no effect. You have to take it through through the law. You have to get it through litigation and you have to shut down the power hungry persons but just know that when government is in power and a sitting minister is allowed to collect a percentage so when they say yes i'm gonna open up a airport and a 73 million dollar for build the runway the percentage and it doesn't have to it's a simple thing you know if if, if the government is gonna do that the lawyer representing the government has to be paid if he gets a percentage of the $73 million, and if it's even 1%, that's a whole lot of money. And, and so when you're dealing with corruption, people don't understand that corruption is, is, is just as bad as murder and all, the, all of the ghetto crimes that we think are the bad crimes. And we have to get there. So that is, that, that is how we um, go through public education and when people are sick, they don't have no time to be suing nobody. They're worried about life. Like when people are poor, they're worried about not being poor anymore. And when people are hungry for KFC, we just want to go buy our KFC. We don't have no time for what's happening in the world. We're trying to find the next buffet. But I'm just using that um, to give you an example, Herb, of how disconnected we are from the realities. And, 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 and you are in America where... There are places similar to Jamaica. What I mean by that, there are places in the country part of 
the, the, the Alabamas and the North Carolinas. Can I just jump and, in there, Isaac? Texas. Huh? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yes, John, go ahead. Can we I have... jump in there, please? Um, let me just... While you're talking... Recall, just... the... go ahead. Yeah, you have to recall that... No, go on, Will, sorry. The... No, I was saying we have we have, we have have the next round, I guess, here. I want you to finish. Don't go anywhere. I'm just going to bring them on right now. Um, we have uh, Michelle Bowen, a fan favorite. Um, a serious attorney out of New York, um, no nonsense. Um, she'll be here to talk up the things. We have Patrick Beckford, another no nonsense person, and he will present um, a different version to what we've been fed by the government of Jamaica concerning the their um, their business exposition in Jamaica, which they call a conference. And we have with us Ambassador Curtis Ward, who has spoken about this subject at length, and he's um he's gracing up with, with gracing us with his presence this afternoon we're happy to have all three of them join us um there's michelle there is patrick and then Curtis Ward. all right go ahead john finish up please yeah okay um we've got to rec uh, remember about the box like that um there's one company noranda and the people they decided that they wanted to no the government gave them a piece of land to mine in saint anne and the people there decided no you're not i'm going to do it and they went to court they won the injunction and then the, the government appealed against the injunction now you've got to remember this is jamaica where cases will stay for years before they go before a judge but not this one within two months it was before, they, they appealed at end of January, and it was heard in in March. Now, to date, we still don't know when the actual court case is going to be heard. But the point I'm making is here: is this is that the government lied in court. The government lied. They provided figures saying that we will receive thirty five million dollars from Naranda in 2223, and we didn't receive a dollar. That is documented, there is evidence of that, that the government went to court and lied. And that is why they bought their mining in this area right now. As we speak, they mine from six o'clock. That includes Sunday, I'm talking about every single day they're down there. They were there mining, the area I went to, they were mining there on Easter Sunday. So this company, Naranda, is there mining based on a lie, and I'm thinking, well, why, why can't we do something about that? Why can't we just show the evidence and say, look, here it is in black and white. We can see it here from the fiscal papers that will come down that this company says that we will not, we will not be paying the bauxite levy this year. And yet they went to court and said, oh, look, we need this money because they'll be paying 35 million. Knowing full well, we're never going to get it. It's documented evidence, it's there. So why can't we do something about that right now? Why do we have to be waiting around? I don't get it. It's hundred percent fact. It's not. I'm not making this up. It's there. I've shown the details. I've shown the documents. Everything. You know what, John? Why can't we do something yeah. about it now? Right. Yeah, Doctor John. Um, we we certainly the One Jamaica Legal Defense Foundation would certainly like to take on this as a project, but we can't financially, and that's one of the reasons why we're having our our first fundraiser tonight. Um, someone in the chat made a very good suggestion. They said, maybe we should be looking to the international court. Where is it? Um, yeah, take it to the international court. I'm sure there is some international organization that, that could be uh, could be interested in this. Um, we what what we what we can try to do is to look around, um, find out if there's any international organization with an interest in this i'm sure um there has to be an environmental group out there that would take this project on so why don't we do this let's let's put our heads together and and because this is a massive project because now you're talking not only suing the jamaican government but international corporations multinational corporations 
that's going to require a lot of time, a lot of investment. So, John, let's let's talk later on this week and try and come up with a solution as to how to go forward with getting an international organization to pay attention to this. How does that sound? Most likely an NGO. Oh, NGOs out there. Okay, there's a bit of a delay. We'll remind. That sounds great to me. I will talk to you in a week. All right. I know you have to go someplace, but please, if you can stay with us, this this is going to be an ex this the, the part we talked about with you was exciting, but this part is it's personal here, so <laughs> you don't want to stick around for this. But please feel free to stay with us. But I I do know that um, you have an event that 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 um you have to attend. but but stay with us stay with us folks and john we're going to be talking again sometime during this week about i'm not going to let it drop it, um the environmental piece trust me on that um so there we are folks we have we have been joined by patrick beckford michelle bowen and ambassador curtis ward and there's a very good reason why these three people are here and they all look so sullen smile at the michelle man yeah there you go. <laughs> yeah 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 i don't know why yeah everybody just looks so sullen and so forlorn and just you know what i mean so folks i don't know where to start um except to say that the government of jamaica is extremely upset at no longer the dirty 30 or the hateful eight no, they're down. They've have, they have us down now to three to five people in the diaspora causing all of this dissension, putting propaganda, telling lies about this Global Jamaica Diaspora Council and the conference that will be held on June, from June 16th to June 19th. If you notice I didn't say where. I'll tell you where now. They, on, on Thursday night, the uh, Ambassador Audrey Marks made a comment. She said there will be only one conference held from June 16th to June 19th. I wanted to congratulate her because she was referring to our conference. <laughs> our conference is the Global Jamaica Diaspora uh, Council's conference. We own that name. Nobody else can use that name. We own that name. So, I, but I didn't. They will be having, somebody else will be having a daytime exposition, a business exposition, where they'll be selling services and products and uh, talking about investments. We have dubbed our conference as the People's Conference, where we will be dealing front and center with the problems affecting the ordinary Jamaica. We're not concerned about you know, some multi-million dollar corporation getting a contract here or there. In fact, with the government, they were smart. What they would do, they would say, listen, let's combine. You do the Jamaica piece, we do the investment and the business. Piece. We have one conference. That would be great. But see, they have no interest in that. Their only interest is to make a buck. And like I said, let me play, let me put this up again. Um, because I don't think um Michelle, Patrick, and 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 the back of the world. I don't think they, they saw this. Let me put this up. There you go. The great Marcus Mazaya Garvey said, I have no desire to take all black people back to Africa. There are blacks who are no good here, and will likewise be no good there we have some well we have some people who they will not see the wisdom of what we're doing no matter how much we try to explain no matter how much documentary evidence we provide and so we have no use for those people um so they can continue and here's another one here this is how we are per, this is how we are uh, proceeding look at what it says don't listen to what people say behind you. A lion never looks back when small dogs bark. We are lions and lioness here tonight. We're not looking back. 
and small dogs. And they have a saying, it says in politics, and I guess in most things, if you're explaining, you're losing. We're not explaining anything tonight. We're directing traffic tonight. We're not explaining about the accident. We are directing traffic because we have the name. And by the way, we also, tomorrow, I have a meeting because we're going to take the, um, the, uh, the logo. That logo will become ours. And we can say this because we know that they cannot do anything about what we're doing because family, if they register, they will have to take the government influence out of the organization. And they cannot. They don't want to do it. That's why they haven't registered. Think about it. Like I said, you have all of these brilliant minds back in 2019. Brilliant people. Rocket science. Rocket scientists. And then you have some people who come from the place. But they're behind me. Some people who never got the best schools. You come from the... Um, as... Jeffrey would say, Vum Vava, Vum Vavi family. We are not people of influence. Nobody knows our name. We are marginalized. And yet, yet, we were so smart that we realized that they didn't register the name. And what did we do? We told them, register the name and register as agents of a foreign power so that you can be in compliance with the Foreign Agent Registration Act. And they refused. Simply because if they had done those things, then they would have to remove the three government officials sitting on the governing board. They don't want to do that. And we are here to tell them tonight that should they go and form an organization, another one, then they'd have to kick the government out. If they file a 501c3, the government can't be on it. You can't be foreign government officials running a non-profit in America, tasking American, uh, uh, Americans to go fundraise and do all of those things. It, it won't work. So what they're likely to do is to get their own people and form an organization. But guess what? It's a, it's a, it's a diaspora organization, so they're going to have to have voting. And guess what? When they, when they have voting, guess who's going to run in their election? We! And we're going to take over the organization. Don't forget, people, that there's a person in England who's representing 800,000 people with, I think, 17 votes. That's 70. The, the, the lady who represents my representative in the Northeast, she got less than 100 votes. Less than one. Think about that. She has a region that has more than a million, I've been told. And she was only able to garner less than a hundred votes right now we have 2384 people devices locked down right now and i guarantee you half of them they live in the diaspora and even if we have 500 in the northeast i know no way to vote for me and i know no way to tell the people and my friend and my neighbor for vote for me so we gone over 500 votes already so we get that seat there now what do you think i got when we get out of the place <laughs> What do you think going to happen? As you said, hell and powder house. And then down in the Florida region, eh, we have people like we have people like Jamaican Carlos. We get him regular 2,000 people and things that are 3,000. I watch him and I, if Carlos run down, so Carlos is a shoe in. So now in America, two out of the three are me and Carlos. One of the things going to happen now, if you don't want to take California, fine, no problem. But out of the three, two away like-minded with the writers so who run the thing look i've stood on this soap back for long enough i have a whole bunch of things i want to talk about but ambassador ward has an engage as an engagement tonight and i want us to hear from him as much as we can and then when i'm gone i jump back from the soapbox and i bring michelle with me and i bring patrick with me and i have her with me i said run gone i don't know if it's chicken time now or whatever <laughs> but hopefully he will rejoin us Ambassador Ward, welcome to the program, sir. Good evening. And I would like, I think you have made some statements about what's going on, and I think you may have even written an article or two, or two about what's going on. So, given the time constraints for you, 
please, we'd like to hear from you regarding this issue. Well, thanks for having me as part of this discussion. Um, I want to be very clear up front. I listened to everything you said, Will, and I don't want my presence here to be interpreted as an endorsement of what you say or anyone else may say on this program. I'm here to give you my opinion, my views, my understanding of what I see happening. From the very beginning, I thought the structure, the way the GJDC was structured, I thought it was very flawed to begin with. I've written about this. I've written about the fact that the level of consultation with the diaspora was pitiful, to say the least. I have watched what's been going on between, what's the size of that group now? Three or four? Three to five. <laughs> oh. You know, this is a mistake that the government, government makes or whoever is offering that kind of description of the group. I heard the foreign minister on a real program in Jamaica referred to the group as a fringe group. And in an interview I did, I corrected that. I said, this is not a fringe group. I have no idea what the numbers are, but many of the sentiments that are expressed by this group are sentiments which have broad support across the diaspora. My understanding is the government was not prepared to respond with dialogue, but rather with confrontation. That was a mistake. I said by referring to this group as a fringe group would excite the group even more. I have to look on what you presented up front, Will. That, that slide with the lion. You know, oftentimes, I'm not saying that you guys are the lion and the government is, is in an inferior position. I'm saying that there are contending views within the diaspora. There are contending views between your group, which is now registered as Global Jamaica Diaspora Council and the, the government operation in bringing the diaspora together and hosting the biennial conference. There are contending views. There are differences of opinion. One of the issues I have is I don't see where there's any attempt at dialogue to resolve the issue. Because no matter how much support either side has in the diaspora, neither side will have the support of a majority of the diaspora. There will be those who support one side, the government. There's one who will support the side of, of, of this group. And there will be many more who 
support neither. And I do believe that those who support neither will be the majority. And it is incumbent on either side to win that majority over to their side. But I've been talking to some people in the diaspora and I just want, and I hope somebody from the government is listening. People are asking me, why is there no dialogue between the two sides? You see, when one side don't please the other side, that's a mistake. When the foreign minister referred to your group as a fringe group, that was a mistake. By the same token, we all have to respect the government and its position. And the government did not arrive at this position overnight. Members of the diaspora have given the government, and I would I, I use the term given carefully here, cautiously, with some qualifications. I should say have allowed the government to take this whole thing and run with it. Because there are members of the diaspora who believe being on the government's side will get them somewhere or something. And they will speak out against your group without even trying to understand the issues, the underlying issues which gave rise to your group in the first place. And I really hope that there can be some dialogue between your group and the government because it, it's not doing the diaspora any good if we can't have harmony with the government in Jamaica. But the burden to create that harmony is not with the diaspora. The burden to create that harmony is with the government. The government has all the resources that they need to reach out in that spirit of dialogue to resolve the issues that exist so we can move forward in building the future of Jamaica, not as a diaspora that is separated from the country, which is controlled by the government, We cannot afford that to get that divide to get even wider. I want to stop here because I'd like to hear from some of the others. But I do believe that there has to be some dialogue which has to take place. And you have to tone this temperature down because it's getting hotter and hotter on both sides. And that is not serving the diaspora well. Ambassador, thank you for the opening. Let me just quickly um, say something that I, I said previously. You weren't here. Uh, and then I'll turn it over to Michelle, Patrick, Herb, and Isaac, if he's available. This week, I was in contact with a government official. And we were talking about the exact same things you just spoke about. Long story short, he and I agreed that there are valid points to be made on both sides, but more so overwhelmingly in our favor. And I told him that the group that I'm a part of 
would have no hesitation, no objection to meeting with government officials to discuss this matter about the future of the relationship and the future of Jamaica. We parted company with him saying yes, he would reach out to his folks and would try and arrange something so that we can sit and as you said, cool down the temperature. This was Wednesday. On Thursday night, the Minister of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade did a launch in Miami. And boy, oh boy, did he launch into us. He launched into us in a, in a, in a, in a massive way. He accused us of misinforming the public, providing them with propaganda, lies, and that they were going, they meaning the government and their supporters, they're going to push back against this. And this on Thursday night was the second time he said it this week. He said it earlier in the week in London. We have the videotape. So I take your point that we need to sit and come to terms, and we can. But we cannot in this environment. And as you said before, it's incumbent upon the government to make this happen. We have reached out. We have reached out to them and said, look, we're willing to talk. But we made it clear to them that we, we, our priorities are water, corruption, health, education, infrastructure, things of those nature. We tell them that this, these are the things we want to talk about. We know you want to talk about products and investments and, and commodities and all that. And we're fine. We can talk. We believe that there is a middle ground there that we can talk. But, Ambassador Ward, I must tell you that I'm sorely disappointed in what I heard from the junior minister and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. So, if, there, if there's any blame to be placed at anyone's feet, let it be clearly placed at the feet of the government because we still stand ready to discuss these issues with them. But we are not taking a back seat. This is not my mother's diaspora. This is a different diaspora. They may call us a fringe group. They may say it's three to five. But look at what three to five people are doing. Look at what, look at what 30 people they claim did in Miami. They claimed it that we caused the American government to enhance the travel advisory. We didn't take credit for it. They claimed it. Now they're saying three to five people are doing this. Well, the one thing I have before I bring on the rest of the folks here is this. Mr. Minister, and I'm speaking to you directly, Minister Terry Long. You said three to five. Call names. Call names. Call names and tell the people who are these three to five people causing disruption. Spreading propaganda, telling lies. Call names. Because the Minister of Information, him called name already. He called names. Actually, he called one name. He called my name. So I'm telling you, follow in his footstep. Follow in his footstep. Call names and make we talk. Because we're calling you out. And we're saying that you are a liar. And you are one of the reasons. You are the main reason why we are where we are. Because you haven't seen it fit to extend the olive branch as we have to say, look, we're all Jamaicans. We all love our country. We all want what's best for our country. Let's come together, put our minds together. As they did, as they claimed in 2019. Let's do it again. In that spirit, we are ready to move forward with an engagement with the government. But we do so. We do so in the spirit of being equal partners. That's the marker we're laying down. We're not going there begging anything, asking for anything, um, beseeching. No, 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 no. We go there as men and women equal to the people on the other side. Because our issues are the people's issues. And we know the people of Jamaica, suffering people, the people who are going to bed tonight, the 70% of who are going to bed 
with the Nobelist are full of empty calories are nothing. The, the, the overwhelming majority who are making minimum wage, what, 86 US dollars a week, less than 20 US dollars a day. Those are the people that we are primarily concerned about. We're not saying we do it to, to the exclusion of the people who live up on the hills. No, because there are good people who live up on the hills too. There are good people in PSOJ. But we're looking at the government and we're saying, you need to reach out to us. Let's, let's meet across the table and let's get this thing settled. I turn it over to the lady in the group, Michelle Bowen. Thank you, Mr. Ratigan, and thank you for having me here on your panel today. Greetings to my fellow panel members. Um, I, I have to tell you that um, I'm very disappointed right now. That's probably why my face looks that way, Will, with what has happened, uh, the context in which we are viewed in the diaspora by the government of Jamaica, the lack of respect that I believe has defined their engagement with us for the past maybe, well, I don't wanna put a number to it, but I've been involved for the past 10 years. Um, it was surprising to me that the, the dynamic between what I saw as the government versus the members of the diaspora was so dysfunctional that I began to wonder, <clears throat> is this the same diaspora that allowed uh, a sole Jamaican who had very little education and came to the United States in the early 1900s to lead and build the largest black liberation movement to date in the United States. And that is Marcus Messiah Garvey. We're walking in his shoes. And then we look to the 1930s where the Jamaica Progressive League came into being and sowed those seeds of conception of the nation of Jamaica. And the, the instrumental role that the diaspora has played in the birth of the nation of Jamaica in 1962. And here I come now in 20, what is it, maybe 2012, some, somewhere around there. And I see that we have uh, over 2 million people now, Jamaicans living in the United States. And the government of Jamaica has seen it fit to organize, I put that in quotation marks, us and to lead us and to, to guide our, whatever it is that we're doing with regards to helping our nation, not dealing with us as, as equals, as Will just said, but dealing with us in a very paternalistic manner, um, sometimes even condescending. I remember in 20, I think it was 2019, when there were elections and this new uh, structure was being imposed I remember how insulted um, our candidate for the Northeast region, forgot her name now, remind me, Will. Akilia. Uh, absolutely, Akilia. I remember Akilia. how she was so disrespectfully treated by the minister and, and there was an article in the newspaper that was pretty much putting her in her place. So here I am, you know, we are intelligent people and Many of us have gotten the chance to go to school, not just here, but in Jamaica. We didn't come here to, to um, become educated. A lot of us came here because of different reasons. And we have in a certain level of, of intellect that we use to analyze situations. So I'm looking at the situation here. There's $3.8 billion going to Jamaica in remittances that's helping to keep the country afloat. It's over 20% of the GDP. And the people mention that all the time because that's the number we can easily quantify. But what we do to support the nation of Jamaica and its people is so much more. We have our alumni associations that are keeping our high schools afloat many, many times, and we don't really get credit for that, and we're not asking for credit. There are hundreds of charitable um, projects being run in Jamaica, funded by P 
patriotic Jamaicans living in the diaspora, the, the back to school programs where they, they give the children the, the school books, the school bags, um, all these task forces that now exist, they're actually doing real work. Um, I have been involved in a not-for-profit that sent hundreds of thousands of dollars of medical equipment while it was supposed to have arrived in Jamaica. We, we did it through an intermediary and we understood that some of the equipment got to, went to other islands. But the fact is we have um, people here in the United States, in Canada and in the UK who care about our nation. We're very patriotic people. And to be treated this way by the government, to be treated as though you know we are marginalized, what we say uh, doesn't really carry much weight, um, except for the people that they have been able to um, get involved with their particular uh, structure. Um, I understand that the elections for the, this diaspora council is run from Jamaica. Uh, I don't know how people are nominated, but it's a questionable process. These things are very, very troublesome to me because um, it gives me the impression that uh, the government is not really dealing with us in a fair manner. Uh, it appears to me that we are being exploited. That That's what it, it's looking like to me. Um, I would really... <laughs> As Will said, we, we have extended the olive branch. I'm not really familiar with the details of what has been the, going on, the conversations that have taken place, but we are standing here ready to, to have a conversation with the members of the, the government who um, are in control of this diaspora council, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And um, <laughs> we, I have to be very careful with, with, with my words because I, I don't want my perception to, to prevail. I really am a person who deals with facts and I don't want to overextend my opinion into an era that may not be appropriate, but the government of Jamaica really does need to respect us as equal partners. We, we have competence, we have resources which have been flowing into the, 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 the island of Jamaica uh, for the past um, decades to help to, to stem the tide of poverty. Um, the education system has been bolstered by our efforts. We just want to be recognized for what we're doing, not just to give one way either. What is the diaspora? getting out of this relation. When I go to Jamaica, I feel like I'm treated in a way that um, is less than, than appropriate. I feel like I'm being shaken down. Okay, people hear an American accent, they know I, I've been living here for over 40 years, so I can't help it. My accent is an amalgamation of Jamaica and the United States. <clears throat> we get taken advantage of, we don't get, um, we're not offered uh, these incentives that other foreign foreign countries and, and members of, of other uh, organizations, corporations are, are given all kinds of incentives. I'm waiting for Jamaicans living abroad who have been so patriotic and so sacrificial in our giving to our country and our people. We are waiting for the government of Jamaica to extend some of those courtesies to us so that we feel welcome when we go home and we feel welcome to retire in Jamaica. We feel welcome in, in starting businesses in Jamaica. I don't feel like that is the situation right now from my perspective. And there is a lot that can be done to change that situation. As far as the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council goes, I have looked at the FARA regulations and it is my opinion that the people in who are part of the, the the diaspora council they are acting as agents of a foreign government and they do need to register with the department of justice now i've been told some people are of the opinion that they're advisors um and they're they're advising the, the jamaican government i'm not sure how 
that fits into our international law scheme of international law. I, I, I am aware, and we have Ambassador Ward here to attest to the fact that foreign countries relate to, for, to the United States through their ambassadors, through their consulates and their deputies, and, and you have honorary consulates. So I'm not sure how uh, a scheme like this fits in. Um, how do we in the diaspora become advisors to the government of Jamaica. And at one point, the, the, the word representative was being used, but who were they representing? Because there's no communication really between members of the diaspora and the, the, the Global Diaspora Council, no significant um, communication. So clearly they're not representing us. And if they're representing the government of Jamaica, again, we're back to the same argument that they may be running afoul of the law. So this is very confusing for me. And I don't think that, you know, I'm I'm not an intellectual slouch. I'm not the brightest, but I'm not I'm not really dumb. So it shouldn't be so hard for me to understand what exactly is the the, the goal of the Jamaica government in their engagement with the diaspora. It is too confusing. And secondly, how are the interests of the diaspora being addressed? Who's representing our interests? Yes, we want to give to our nation and we do that willingly and we do that without reservation. But what's the government of Jamaica doing for us in this relationship? It seems to me to be very one-sided and that's disappointing for me. For years, I think the first two decades or maybe three decades of my life here in the United States, I didn't really have much to do with anything Jamaican. And that was because of the reason I left Jamaica, because of crime, it hit my family personally. And we left because, not because we didn't love our country, but because Jamaica became a hostile place and hostile environment and unsafe for my family to live. And when we left, we left with a heavy heart not because um, you know, we were trying to ignore what is happening at home, but it was a matter of survival. Now, having been here for a while, we look back to our country because we Jamaicans, I believe, are one of the most patriotic group of people. It's one, the Jamaica diaspora will sacrifice and the government knows this. I think that our love for country and our compassion when we hear about how people are suffering sometimes is exploited, it's taken advantage of, and that may come with the territory. But there has to be a time when the government of Jamaica realizes, okay, the diaspora has more people in it than the people living in the island. There's no way, it's not legal and it's not practical, it will never happen. The government of Jamaica cannot lead the diaspora. It just can't happen. We can have a relationship that is respectful, that honors, that honors each of us. We, we, we honor each other for what we bring to the table. We have a lot of, there was a statistic that I, I saw recently that said 60% of Jamaican professionals no longer live in Jamaica. So we don't only have financial resources, we have intellectual resources, we have ideas, we have expertise, and we have the willingness to give many times without getting anything in return. But we have been rebuffed at so many turns, uh, most recently, um, because I belong to the Crime Intervention and Prevention Task Force. I, I, I remember vividly uh, the situation when the Minister of National Security made a comment about not needing our expertise. We should just pretty much send money and stay out of their affairs. Well, there comes a time when that doesn't work anymore. Um, and we are demanding to be treated a little better with a little bit more respect so that we can have a relationship and engagement with the government of Jamaica that is more productive that is, um, it, it, it is more beneficial to both the diaspora and the people of Jamaica. So um, 
that's those are my thoughts for now. all right all right well received um let me go to patrick um he's been a stalwart in the diaspora as they say movement but now the global jamaica diaspora council is no longer a movement it is an organization patrick the floor is here, sir. thank you and good evening those um in studio with myself, uh, my friend um, Ambassador Curtis and um, uh, Miss um, Bose and um, everybody in the thing. Okay, let me let me go back a little bit of history. And before I do that, you know, I I I, I was thinking about Rex Nettleford, the late Rex Nettleford, all week. He was instrumental um, in a part of the one that leadership in terms of gathering in Jamaica to when they're conceptualizing the diaspora movement at UWI. And then we move from that into um, the first um, conference and the first two we had um, from the Northeast, Dr. Uh, Mignot was elected the um, advisor board member. And then I succeeded him um, thereafter. But to this, um, I, 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 I let this marinate with everybody what Rex Nettleford said as I move forward and as I come into context. Rex Nettleford made the statement, I, 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 can't, I was gonna try to imitate him, but he says a butto in a Benz is still a butto. And um, I, we laughed, but um, the context of that um, manifests itself again this week. But I, 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 I but let me go to my time as a and as an advisor board member when i sat there at the first time with um i think delano and arnold brown were um, um changing over at that time um my role as serving on, on boards as a teenager um at the credit union and you know different places jc's I realized um, I learned about um, responsibility of members doing business law. Uh, we always talk about fiduciary responsibility. So I go with that uh, mindset and realize if the board was a window dressing, that's where we have this advisory board. Because as a friend of mine, a good mayor friend of mine in New Jersey, classified uh, those in Jamaica and our government as a Tekisha class. And I said, we are the philanthropical class um, in terms of um, our contribution and everything. But um, being sitting in there, um, I wanted to inform myself of the, how other um, diaspora um, acts in these United States, luckily, in 2009, um, Hillary Clinton, as the Secretary of State, had this global diaspora conference at the State Department. And myself and a few others, um, Marlon Hill, I think, in Florida at that time, and uh, my delegation, we were present and we, we interacted with other well-established diaspora movement. And I think that struck me um, I developed a relationship with the Irish diaspora. And then each diaspora that were established were given presentation to say, to say how they operate. I mean, um, like we had Nigeria, we have Ireland, we have Israel, Argentina, India, and Korea. These are stalwarts within their communities back in their homeland. And you know, I could tell you, and I won't, um, <clears throat> I mean, kind of belabor the point that these diasporas, how they operated in unison, they do it independently of the government, but the government look and collaborate with them. Uh, for example, I, the one that I, is still ingrained in my, <laughs> in my brain is that Ireland, the Irish diaspora, were responsible for settling the wars between the Catholic and the Protestant. And they did a simple thing. What they did 
was it take the children, for Catholic children and, and uh, Protestant children and take them here in the United States and Canada and house them together. And that they realized, but wait, Curtis is um, around the corner. He's Catholic, Patrick is on the other corner. He's um, Protestant and yet we're fighting and we eat the same thing, we talk the same way and everything. So that bridge the gap. So when they go back and they st the strife is still there, I'm gonna see Curtis or Curtis is gonna see me and we hang out together and everything. So that, so that bridge the gap. Argentina quickly was responsible. They had a massive um, illiteracy problem. It was their diaspora who, who did it. Um, Korea established um, because a lot of them were in um, Silicon Valley and they took that expertise and most of our electronic things came from uh, Korea because they conceptualized it. There was their contribution. So with that mindset and learning that, I made a proposal at that time at my um, second um, meeting, let's look at reconstructing the diaspora where autonomy is given in the diaspora. The minister, we should set up her own organization. They did her with that. Um, Arnaldo came with this mapping project and he and I were fighting about it because they said, you can't try to get our information in Jamaica. That, at that time, scamming started to come up and everything. And we, we, you know, I fought back and they were trying to get this state from Jamaica to get all our information, put it in a mapping project to see what we can contribute and everything. Fast forward to 2018 when they decided they want to go on a um, global diaspora. And I, I, I will keep telling you, I, I sent him the proposal that I made. Changing the, the diaspora where the government of Jamaica ha sits on it because I'm not a lawyer, but I learned from lawyers that, and having set up 501c3, um, I realized that we can't have foreign um, government officials involved in our 501c3 or running it. And they pushed back that on it. Akila was, I mean, supportive of, of the ideas that we're talking. And that's why they excruciate her and tried to, I mean, <laughs> just belittle this young lady, brilliant, um, that that's, that's what it is. So um, I don't believe there are two sides. We have the diaspora and the diaspora is an entity of itself rather than the government being on the side. The diaspora is the diaspora. The government must stay in their lane and run Jamaica, which in my opinion, they're not doing such a good job at it currently. And let us manage the affairs and collaborate with the, 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 the government where we can contribute to our expertise. Because one of the proposals that uh, was made was to set up the government would set up to learn from our expertise because we have people with requisite skill sets like urban development, um, health, education, all the different um, things, financing and, and setting up things who are running corporations and high officials in government there. They, they could contribute that and sit on statutory boards. Simple things like was mentioned to say, hey, why not appoint diaspora members as justice of the peace for the Jamaican diaspora? One legal person looked at me and said, but we can't do it. That I said, but when I asked the question, who is the government? You're going in parliament, you could make laws. You know, that was fine to them. I mean, and yeah, I'm a little country boy from Falmouth, just trying to tell these people that, you know, be bold and try to do things differently and so that we could contribute and make things. I, I, I just say one thing on the side about that. In 2020, during COVID, we collected over 300,000 US dollars on Radathon. And this was to buy PPE that Jamaica didn't have. If one P was bought out of that money, man, I would I would go to Times Square when these guys are demonstrating and dancing out the clothes on. That's I, 
and, and we don't know where that that where that money went. One minute it went to consolidated funds and everything. So well, you know, that's just a, but I lead forward to now. I am supporting what um, the group here are doing. I think that is the best way. The dialogue the government needs to do, because I, I'm just going to give you some facts. The registration fee is 160 US dollars. The conference is on in um, the conference center in Rose Hall. The hotel accommodation was set up in Coral Spring in my parish. And I'm, I would, I'm pushing back at the against that as a Trelawney person. Because then you got to take the person to cross the border, go on the highway in a bus that the $160 is paying for. They're taking them, they're paying it at a hotel that is all inclusive, paying all inclusive, and but they take them to have breakfast at the conference center and lunch, and they're paying to be fed. All these um, excessive and, and, and logistic nightmare, in my opinion. But let me just state, because at the elephant in the room, nobody wants to say this. And I mentioned um, Rex Nettleford's statement. I'm incensed. I'm annoyed at the per gentleman who says he's a minister of state. He should resign from that position. And I, and, and I, the minister of gender affairs, let me say something. She was quick to berate the leader of the opposition when he talked about the office offices of speaker and prime minister being husband and wife not a female and she started to use the word misogynistic and i mean anti-woman here is a minister sitting with the first female prime minister's face being defaced and he was speaking and he's blaming a, a, a low-level staff. I've been around ministers and watched how they operate. They make sure ev everything is crossed, everything. That guy does not deserve to be a minister. And they are invited and they, I keep getting invitation. I would never go to a conference where he's a chairperson or even to listen to the prime minister because he can't produce his is is integrity commission thing I, I i don't i don't as, as a person who practices um the faith i could never sit with with with, with what you call them judas is you know dipping with them i'm not jesus so you know i can't i don't know but definitely and and that really i would not really because of these actions could not be on the side with them and everything and i, I i'm waiting for babs the grange to come out and talk about misogynistic and everything because as a gender of fear mark golden did never said mrs juliet wholeness he said talk about the speaker and his content was respectful and he said that here's this guy you know which in my opinion whether dreadlocks or butto as rex netterford works words are this so, you know, my thing is that let's move on and get the conference and get it worked up, organized. We can leave the government behind because this is legal in the United States where I live. So, you know, that's my point. Uh, Patrick, listen, thank you so much for, for giving that background concerning the diaspora's involvement with the government to um, set up an organization that would be beneficial to both. Now, before I bring the other guests on, I must do this because people, you have to see this for yourself. Let me just go back and put this on the screen. I've put it up before, but I, I, I need to put it up again. Um, here we go. The biggest communication problem is we do not listen to understand. We listen to reply. All right? No. Let me just do a quick presentation and I'll show you the reason, the primary reason why I'm sitting here doing this is because of control or the lack thereof. We cannot have a government control the diaspora, 
the government cannot run the country. It's doing a very poor job of running Jamaica right now. And yet it wants to come over, it wants to come over and run the diaspora. That is that that is not going to happen. Now, take a look at that document. See that document? The Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. They claim that this is their logo. Well, I hope they can register before we do and register it in what company. What company are they going to register in it? They can register it under this. Look at this right here. See this right here? Maybe you can't see it. Let me see if I can enlarge it. This, this, this coat of arms here, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, I want to see them come to America and register this logo under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Now, I have something to show you guys. We're talking about control. And for those of you who <coughs> listen to reply, listen, listen now to understand. All right? That's the name of the terms of reference and operational modalities. Fancy words. We said this is how we're going to operate, and this is these are the rules. When you take just walk with me through this. This says right here that it is going to be that the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council will be guided by the national diaspora policy. Fine. Look at this. It says it will provide policy, it meaning the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, will provide policy advice and recommendations on strategic issues identified by whom? The government. Right? And support the government. See that? Um, now, look at, look at the disclaimer that they put here. They put the disclaimer to say, it is important to note that the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council is not an arm of the government of Jamaica. But we're going to show you that it is an arm of the, go of, the, of, the, of the government of Jamaica. Here it is. It comprised, and this is back in 2020 when they did this, because now we have 30 members. The Global Jamaica Diaspora Com Council will comprise 28 members. 14 will be elected. By the way, when the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade made her speech at the launch in Jamaica, she said, oh, you know, the Global Jamaica Diaspora, it's vibrant, and we have, we have voting. She forgot to tell you this. Let me show you what she forgot to tell you. She forgot to tell you the remaining 14 members should be appointed from the diaspora in Jamaica. By whom? Not by the diaspora members, by the minister with responsibility for diaspora affairs in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. You tell me that's not government control. No, they appoint more than half of the 30 members. They, the government of Jamaica, appoints more than half of the members of the 30 of more than half of the 30 members of the global jamaica diaspora council i defy them to tell me that's not true but here she talks about this 14 will be elected but she don't tell you about this 14 will be appointed and appointed by them they don't tell you that now look at what the minister will do the minister will rotate appointments the minister may appoint look at this this second one right here the minister may appoint more than one member from a region the minister not the diaspora look at this then they have seven individuals that they selected for appointment as sector reps education health and wellness arts sports and culture citizen security wait a minute citizen security why them not go to him and ask him to solve the problem of of, of um guns coming to jamaica why them not go to him they, they appoint him and said, we have a guy we appointed, uh, Kevin Jr. out of Canada. Go to him and say, yes, berate and, and bother the diaspora. Go to him and ask him to help you solve the crime problem. You, you appointed him. Look, here is the other one where they have a discretionary appointment. The minister may appoint one other individual who's not selected on the basis of everything we talked about. So 28 down to 29 are based on whose discretion? The minister. All right. See safety and security and governance, the way I'm talking about. No, people pay close, very close attention to this. Very, very close attention to this. The governance structure of the Global Jamaica Diaspora. The, I'll read it for those of you who can't see it. The Global Jamaica Diaspora Council will be led and supported by four individuals. Who are the four? The chair will be the minister. In the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, responsible for diaspora affairs. That's the Honorable Minister Terry Long. The Vice Chair is one of us in the diaspora, one from the Council. So we have one on one. Look at the other two. 
the Under Secretary for Diaspora Protocol and Consular Affairs. Government official that. And the last one is the Director of the Diaspora Affairs Department in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. People, how can we succumb to this? Four people leading the organization and three of them are government officials. And you tell me there's no control there? Come on. Let me continue. Then look at what this one, the that look at the next one, the diaspora affairs department in the ministry, blah blah blah. Will be the secretariat. We didn't even get to become the secretariat. Them control it. Right? Then look at what the chair, Mr. Terlang, look at what he will do. He will provide leadership to the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. We are being we are lambs being led to the slaughter. Where is our right to lead our organization? Oh, I, saw, I forgot. It's a movement. I'm sorry. Then it says he will lead the process by formulating a strategic work plan. Look at this. He's, he's, he's formulating a strategic work plan for us, for the Global Jamaica. Di and look at the next one. He, he will establish rules of procedure for decision making of the Global Jamaica. Look at, look at C, people. Look at C. Just take a look at C. Let me big it up gone too far look at c the chair will establish rules of procedure for decision making of the global jamaica that's and you tell me that there is no there is no no attempt to manipulate to control to influence to direct this person is in charge of your organization or oh, your movement it is now our organization let me go down somewhere man Do, duties and responsibilities of the global they might tell we were our duties right and it says that look at look at the first sentence the work of the global jamaica diaspora council presents an exceptional opportunity for whom for the government and the ministry to engage with a wide you see it's not for the diaspora to engage you know it's for the government and the ministry to engage with a wide range of, of stakeholders whose views perspective blah 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 are essential to attaining Attaining what? The national development priorities of the government. What are the national development priorities? It is Vision 2030. It not have nothing to do with the, with the diaspora. I hope you understand what I'm saying, people. Look, we continue. Look here. First sentence highlighted in order to ensure meaningful and effective exchange and interaction between the diaspora and the government of Jamaica. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs will identify a number of key policies. Not we had identified them, them identified. And then they will bring it to us for debate and discussion. And then they tell us that they will do it. It will be done quarterly meetings. Them I tell we it will be done on quality meetings. Right? Then look at the last sentence. It is generally ex expected that these discussions will focus on either new policies and strategies under development by the government emerging and complex issues are areas of high policy priority to the government it's right there it's right there here is it finally the global jamaica diaspora has an important role in promoting diaspora awareness and engagement of the laws regulations and policies on issues in the respective host countries and jamaica and in facilitating communication and advocacy on these laws me ask my 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 rep me ask Michelle, Michelle Tolonil about Farah. She never knew about Farah. This is her responsibility. She's supposed to know about the laws and the regulations and the policies in the respective host countries and so on and so forth. She know in a compliance. She's supposed to know about this. She no know. All right, hold on. Promoting, ah, here is the real reason why them have this thing. Huh? Look at it. Promoting. The government of Jamaica recognizes the strategic importance of foreign direct investments, trade, and economic remittances to Jamaica's development. That's what it's about. It's about investment, investment, investment. Money, 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 money. We don't care about the people who are dead like flies in Jamaica. Right? Look at this. And in line with what I just said, it says that they're going to create an, an, an enable an environment to attract diaspora investments to foster entrepreneurship, business development, innovation, and direct investments 
through what? Diaspora bonds, financial and money market. How much of the diaspora can, 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 can understand this and, and have money for putting out them things that we don't talk about? No, for we in a di in a in a in a in a in a the in a the in a the diaspora, if we not work for a month, we done, we dead like dog. And them are you see what I'm telling you? See what them focus is? The focus is not on you, not on the folks in Jamaica. It's on their pockets. The rich will always want to get richer. Look at this other one right here. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade will identify the annual priority areas for engagement. We don't get a chance to say, well, we, they are going to identify it for us. They are going to identify the issues for us to discuss. People, come on. Look at this other one. They will organize opportunities for business to business networking with Jamaican companies. How much are in the diaspora own a company? How much are in Jamaica own a company? <sighs> Here is the problem now. Here's the problem. Here's a big fat lie when I'm telling you. Them say that it's a it's a it's a it's a movement. And them said, my representative tell me this, Michelle Tolonil tell me, oh, we don't get involved in fundraising. Well, look on this. The realization of this objective will rely on having data on the diaspora. So they might tell them for spy power, their composition, location, and issues of, con and of concern, as well as having strong government and diaspora institutions and associations that can lobby. We think we're in the lobbying business. Where, where that word come from? Lobby. I thought we weren't involved in that. Here, here it is. Supporting and encouraging re research on the diaspora. They're telling them, spy on them. Tell them, tell us what you know about them. The dirty 30. The fabulous five. The hateful eight. Tell us what you know about them. Here's a social and economic opportunities for the improvement of Jamaicans residing in Jamaica and host countries. That is what they're supposed to do. Partnering with, partnering with Jamaican government ministries, departments, agencies um, to explore ways of improving service delivery to diaspora communities. Like, for example, when you apply for a passport, you don't have to wait a year to get on a passport. Me ask my representative, Michelle Tolonil, and this program, we talk about the, about the passport issue. And what did she say? She said, oh, you know, there's a passport thing and I call the CG. Me no want you call no CG. Or, no, refer me to the CG. Me want you unblock the log jam so me can get my passport. That's advocacy. That's representation. We're not looking for uh, we're not looking for a courier. We're looking for an advocate. Here it is again. Each year, the ministry with responsibility for diaspora affairs, along with it, will will identify the annual priority annual priority activities for the GJDC work plan. So they're going to set up the work plan for us. For example, go out and, and get money so we can get to minister. Nobody knows where the money go, with which which smacks of money laundering. But that is what I'm telling them for though. And them tell us, oh no, we don't do that. Here's a here is if it if people if we didn't have any if we didn't have any doubt about the role of the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council to lobby and to, to, to uh, fundraise, which them said they not do. Look at this one here. The government of Jamaica seeks to optimize the contribution of the diaspora to the development of our country. Beyond the considerable contributions made in terms of remittances, the diaspora has been instrumental in making and, facilitate, and facilitating philanthropic contributions to Jamaica and the communities from which many emanated and many continue to contribute their skills and resources to be. They are telling us to go out and get money. Go out and get money. Here it is right here again. Promote and facilitate philanthropic contributions by companies, associations, and individuals in the host country. Go out and lobby them people and get some money for it. Here it is. Hold on. Uno na go believe that one I'm here show no. Uno na go believe that one yeah. 
you not going to see it, you know, but you can't be, don't, you not going to say, no, I can't believe my lying eyes. My eyes are my light to me. Look upon this. Look upon this. Ju the Global Jamaica Diaspora members, right, I said, so, members are required to, right? Right up there, so. Members are required to. Look, what you, look one of the things we require to regularly meet with Jamaican diplomatic mission or consular post under whose jurisdiction they fall. <laughs> Geographical ju jurisdiction or otherwise, we don't fall under nobody jurisdiction. And to be briefed on the government of Jamaica's priority areas. What about the diaspora priority areas? Here's another one. Support the promotion of events being hosted by the overseas mission as may be real. So in tandem of something, we have to go support it. Free labor. And by the way, it's really free. And I'm going to show no. No money I get that people I get. No money. No money. Here it is right here again. An additional 14 members are appointed. Look at the word. Appointed. Not, 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 not elected. Appointed. So when Minister Kamina Johnson stand up, they're not telling us, oh, we have a we have a mechanism in place for elections and they're elected. She not telling us that they might appoint more than four, more than half of the members them. Now look at what them do now. When you them control the, the voting mechanism, you know, right? Them control the voting. So when you have a vote, when you when you want to run, you know, something like this, you have to, the names have to be vetted by them. Not by us, by them. And then look at this. Once them get the name, nothing, it, the names have to be confirmed. By whom? By the minister. We have to confirm that so we are actually Global Jamaica Diaspora Council members. We can't do it for ourselves. No. We are idiots. We can't do it. Look at the, the minister will confirm the persons who receive the largest number of votes. So all of a sudden now, in them, in my, in my the election boss. So he will confirm who get the most votes and say, okay, and then like that. Then look at this. A, sh <laughs> a short list of the proposed appointees will, will be sent to the elected council members for review. Prior to what? The final decision of the minister. Look below. Look below. This, this bottom one here. The review will not be determinative as the final decision regarding confirmation of appointments will be that of the minister. Yeah. Once them, them, once them cook up the election and things like that, them said that you will get a letter of confirmation from the office of the minister of foreign affairs and foreign trade. Once them cook it up, them give a little thing and you say, all right, fine. See the free thing that women are telling about tonight, if you never believe me, you know. See, tell you know. Global Jamaica diaspora members serve on a voluntary basis and are therefore not compensated. People, you see, when we, our organization, what we are talking about, you no know, 501c3, you no. Know, once it gets to a certain level, when people start work, you cannot, certainly, you will have some volunteerism. But some, certain people must be paid. Based on their skill sets. Some people must be paid. But look on this. Them say it's not compensated. And you agree, if you're a member, that when you burn out your little car engine, you run out your little gas, and you have to pay for your hotel or whatever. Um, look at that. Look at the very last phrase. Will be the responsibility of each member. So the Jamaican government are using it for fool. Ali button work for nothing. <laughs> See, right, that's a meeting. Watch out. Meetings and code of conduct. They might tell we know how we must behave. Right? And see how we must behave, yeah, I know. Any discussion you have within the council must be held confidential. And cannot be disseminated without the written permission of who? The chair. And who's the chair? The minister. One of the code of conduct is that you must be honest. <laughs> then how come them are going to expect we to be honest and the minister won't sign the code of conduct with, which contains honesty? How come him don't want to sign the code of conduct when, when them get training pan? 
training it, training done by the integrity commission how come they don't want to sign that but they're going to expect they will tell we say we must be honest <laughs> come on here's another one take responsibility for his or her actions when was the last time a government official a jamaican government official come out and take responsibility for action or inaction when was the last time that happened but them say them want us to do that do as i say don't do as i do well them days are over i know them days are over. oh here's another one the chair the chair the minister may terminate the appointment of a member if he or she brings anyway the GDC or the Minister of Foreign Affairs into disrepute. So the chair has that power. All right, folks, we reach the end now. Reach the end. We now have to look upon this chart, yeah. Look upon this chart, yeah. Right? Uno say, over here, sir. Look at the top of the chart. Who did there? The chair. Right? The chair there, him run the whole bang. No. Don't this this is this side right here, the left side, the extreme left, that's the old diaspora advisory board that they got rid of. The middle and the right, that's the new one. Right? So look, 28 members. This was back in 2020. No, they have 30. 28 members. They have 14 elected and 14 appointed now let me share something with you know what happened in 2020 you see you see right here canada i have two members and two youth council two youth council members and the uk i have two members one north one south and two youth council members and the us have six them have uh, one uh, council member in, in the west and midwest one in the northeast, one in the southern, in, in south, and them have a, council, a youth council member to accompany each of them, right? So this is six, but them, the numbers are right here. Four for Canada, four for the United Kingdom, and six for the US. That's 14, right? When this organization was formed in 2020, did you know that the youth council members were all appointed? So when you see 14 up there, it's only seven that were elected. Three from the United States, two from the UK, that's five, and two from Canada. The youth council members were all appointed by the minister. So in that year, in 2020, and see the, over here, them, them, have, them, them, um, them have 14 that they appoint. So in that year, in that year, they appointed 14, 16, 18, 21 out of the 28 people on the council. Make them come tell me, Samia Lai, 28 members in 2020, 21 out of them were appointed. And we now have no say. We now have no say. So, See, it says right here at the bottom too. It says the founding leadership of the youth council will be appointed as the youth members of the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. After this first term, elections will also be used for selection. So the first time they had it, they selected 21 out of 28. Now, I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, let me go back. I submit to you this. That highlighted area. It is important to know that the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council is not an arm of the government of Jamaica. I submit to you that is a lie. That is a lie. And ask yourself the question, why is it that they did not register the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council? They did not because all of these things that you're seeing here, as Michelle pointed out, couldn't happen in the United States under 501c3 company, uh, not-for-profit. 
couldn't and wouldn't happen. They would have to yield control to the diaspora. That's why. So, you know, and, and by the way, last, this past Thursday, when Minister Terry Long started out, he started out by saying that the di and I have, I have it right here, the diaspora is represented by a government. That's what he said. And also, for all of you listening to me in Jamaica, the minister said that Jamaica has the lowest unemployment in its history. 4%. Well, them actually lie about that. Because I have the stat right here. It's 4.2. But you give him it. You know, when I have a big cover, something like that. Although 0.2% are holy for people. But you know what I'm saying? On top of that, him said we are upskilling. I never heard that word before. We're upskilling our population so that they can get work in robotics and engineering and blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what? I went and I looked at the stats from starting today. And most of the people working in Jamaica, they're unskilled. They're unskilled. The, the fastest growing population in the, in the work sector, unskilled clerks, laborers. So I have no idea what this man is talking about. Um, teacher, it says the largest, the largest occupation the largest occupation group in Jamaica, service workers and shop and market sales workers. That's the largest working group in Jamaica. Then they have another one called elementary occupations. That increased by 22,000 people. So what is this man talking about? And then he went on to say something that I don't think, I don't think you people, in, you know, our family members in Jamaica will like. You know what he said? He said, so because we're upskilling our people and we're almost at full employment, that's going to ease the burden for owning the diaspora. So we don't have to send no money. We don't have to do no Western Union because we are make good money in Jamaica. He said that. Go back and look at the tape. So when we don't send no money, no, we don't. I hope we don't complain because the minister, the esteemed minister said we mustn't send no money because we're not doing well. We don't have good jobs, good paying jobs, and we're not great. So here's what I'm going to propose from this point going forward. That in December of this year, the diaspora must send zero. Don't send no money. The minister says that is they're upskilling and everybody's working. And they don't need nothing. So we I'm going to make up, I'm going to make a platform out of this that we send no remittances home for December. I have people I send remittances home to monthly. What may I tell them from now? Don't expect a dime from me for December. Zero. And I'm encouraging everybody who's sending home money in December, don't send no money. We need to send a message. Don't send money, send a message. Say, enough of this nonsense. Enough of this nonsense. And I can calm down now because I wanted to get that out of my system. And it's gone. So the message has been sent, and I'll, I'll again I'll say if they want to talk, we are prepared. If they want to talk, we are prepared. I'll turn it over to Dr. Rupert Francis, one of our leaders, a stalwart in the community. Dr. Francis. Hey, hi. Yes. Uh, well, thank you very much, Will. Ambassador. Me things, how you do? What to see you? Michelle, <laughs> long time JDCIF. Patrick, you're going like you don't know me, but it's all right. I have more hair than you. <laughs> <laughs> Herb Nelson, stalwart in the JD. And yeah, my brother. <laughs> my brothers, my brothers. Listen to me, man. What you got talking you know, about? I'm going to want to talk to him. I'm not talking to him at all. The man too light. I am sorry. I, I, I did go into colloquialism. I, I should speak in Queen's English. No, I have never seen. I, 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 I welcome dialogue as Ambassador says. He knows that. I welcome. But when you tell so many untruths, I'm wondering if I can talk to you. Because we sent a message. They sent a message saying they want to talk. And yet you have this man. I call him Terry Short, not Terry Long. He goes up the 
every time and messes things up for everybody else. And he doesn't know what he's saying. You know what I mean? He doesn't, and, and I don't think he cares. I would love to see, because I am telling you right now, they are driving to try to drive people to hate us. And that, as I say, is a dangerous trend. We are not driving anybody to hate anybody. We love Jamaica. We love what Jamaica has to offer. But let me make it quite clear that I am not supporting Mr. Terry Lang because as far as I'm concerned, he has done it time and time again, and he knows it's not the truth. They put out a press release. I'm telling you, people, they are trying to make people hate what we are doing because they say we are anti-Jamaican, we are not patriotic, and we do not mean them any good. Now, let me ask you a question. If we are the diaspora, and we know that the diaspora should be run by the diaspora, like other countries, and we're saying to you, let us run it as the other countries have been doing, and let us do what Jamaica is, that we have been doing for Jamaica for the past how many years, investing in the diaspora, and vice versa, investing in Jamaica, investing in you, and so on. There are people in the diaspora right now who need our investment, who would be really doing much better than they're doing if we were to support them with the type of money and know-how that we have. The question we have to ask ourselves is, is the government interested really in improving the lives of the average Jamaican? Improving the lives. I saw uh, uh, what everybody was saw um, the the uh, the school episode the other day, where the school some young people got out and then they were fighting. Or I think it's Meadowbrook. Can you imagine? And we, I am a little appalled that the, our people in Jamaica have not come out and said what is going on. And two persons I think were stabbed. Young people. I've never seen that before. And I'm saying to you that we have abandoned our young. They've been taken away through trafficking. They've been taken away by the social media and it's all its fandangles. And so we have a different group of persons growing up. And that's the cause of leadership, leadership everywhere. So I'm calling on everyone on this platform to indicate your support because Mr. Terry Long said on numerous occasions we are only three or four. And right now on this platform, we are seeing six people alone. And in the um, people who are listening, as I was earlier, there are 2.7 thousand persons and in many different platforms every day. So I'm asking you to tell your friends that is not true. Tell your friends to come and listen to the persons that are out there every day. You have Jeffrey Tavares with his Mecca dog. You have um, Jamaica Carlos, right? You have Reason with Ratty Gun, right? And you have many other platforms that are speaking to the same issues every day, every evening. Let us go to the conference. I don't no. know why. I'm not going to be wrong, with, um, but I'm only I'm closing on this. Just closing on this issue. The conference will be held to review the conference. Let them stop the propaganda. We are not having a parallel conference. Parallel, as far as I'm concerned, being beside or together, or at the same time. We are having a conference in the evening. And we're going to invite people who are good, people who know their content, who are professionals, who are willing to give you tips to improve your lives and how our leaders could be improving our lives in Jamaica and indeed in the diaspora. You may be alarmed to know that we have homeless Jamaicans in several jurisdictions in Jamaica, in, in, in the United States, UK, and Canada. And we must address that as a diaspora. There's so many things that we can do together. And we must not allow them
to destroy us or to separate us. We must work together. As Michelle said earlier, Marcus Bazaar Gavi is one of the most prolific men to have come out of the West Indies. And I don't know how many of our people know this because many of them don't seem to like him. And they didn't like him at the time. Mr. Howell, who will start the Rastafarian movement, they burned him out, moved him, right? And there you have it. I have no desire to take all black people to Africa. There are blacks who are no good here and will likewise be no good there. Let me tell you something. I saw a diagram the other day of um, other nationalities. And on most nationalities, like the Chinese, the Indians, the whites, and what have you, you'll see a spider web. They're all knitted together, to working with each other. But on our diagram, there were dots all over the place and none connecting. There are still people who are blaming the British, the Spanish, the Portuguese for slavery. But they are acting more like slave masters than these people who have left us. We have, we have a responsibility to the Jamaican people, especially the young, the underserved, to do what we have to do because it's obvious that our politicians have now become our slave masters and think we should worship them. And they are no longer servant leaders. We are their servants. People have been saying that I am unpatriotic, me in particular. They have said that I've done things that I've not done in the media, and they have lied. And we have a good way of allowing them the lies to catch up with them. Mr. Tyrone, your time will come. Minister of Foreign Affairs, your time will come. And don't seek to withdraw it, because we will make sure that you cannot withdraw what you have said, because you better have the proof to what you have said. I have no fear. I myself served, as I said, the distinguished Jamaica Labour Party and the government of Jamaica for nearly 30 years. And I'm not ashamed. I am not ashamed. But as far as I am concerned, I'm very disappointed. And you can say what you want to say. And you can go out there, you can tell people this and lies and innuendos. Even in a taxi the other day, people from Jamaica calling me and telling me what people say they would do to my person. And um, uh, I like this. Don't listen to what people say behind you. A lion never looks back at small dog barks. Well, I'm really not a small dog, but I, you know, I, I don't worry about that, my friends. I worry about the people of Jamaica and where we are going. And this, we are no one or two persons. <clears throat> we are a movement and not only a movement, we are an entity now. The global diaspora, we have that. And we have the logo that was giving them hell. And we have good people. And when they talk about we losing people in the crime task force, let me tell you something. I am not saying a couple of people have not been disenchanted on the whole thing, but I guarantee you, the majority of the persons that we have been with and have given us support are still there. I guarantee you. I don't know what Kevin's situation is because he's still a member of the global diaspora. Maybe after today, the Jamaica diaspora crime intervention parental task force. But we love Kevin. Kevin is a very good professional in corrections. And um, I don't know how he got there, but he got there, wherever he is now. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity once more to be on this platform with Wilfred and all his erstwhile people. And I look forward. I would love to see in Jamaica, and I know. Michelle would love to see more faith-based involvement, especially among the children. When I saw that, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see all of them faith-based people come out and say, no, not no more with those children, because it never looked good. And um, I'm glad nobody died then, but I'm wondering. I see this carnage on the roads too. So and many of those persons are driving without licenses, and they bought them. And I say to anybody who says there's no corruption in Jamaica, then you are corrupt. And you say, yes, you are corrupt. And if you say also that there's no killing in Jamaica, then you are a killer and minding a killer. Okay? This is clear. Don't tell me what, you know, I'm not holding my tongue on you anymore. You need to stand up 
as a man or woman, stop listening to foolishness. Mr. Terry talk your talk, Doc. Yeah, but Mr. Terry Dunn has his skeletons in the closet, you know. I wrote it somewhere. He might better careful. He better careful because enough investigation is not being done. He might run up in mouth worldwide. It's all right, Mr. Terry. Don't worry. We got you. <laughs> When we done it, you had you had Terry shortcut. All right, <laughs> remember I tell you, remember me tell you something, Captain. That's the one you put on the, in the press release. Yes, me. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> what come with me? Not again. All right, no. All right. Thank you very much. One love, one heart. No, don't leave us that. We 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 have with us um uh Mr. Hugh Wildman, attorney extraordinary out of Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Um. We, we we have to remind people that what you saw yesterday with the DPP, he started it. He started it when it first happened. And I think his, some of his cases are still pending. Mr. Wildman, if you're listening to me, let me see your face and you can... Ah, there he is. All right, let me add him to this thing up. Yes, sir. Thank yes, you. Sir. We have a bone to pick with you, you know. You tell me about it. You can come on the program. Eh? You are me. And no, last, man, I, no, I've been very busy. Believe me, the court is very busy. Oh, you tell me, but everybody where you see right, that's so busy except me. You no, know? I don't yeah, go on and I'm busy. Know, everybody else is yeah. a wild man. Yeah. <laughs> so, they will bring on all the virgin Jamaican Carlos, too. Seeing that, yes, no, yes. Mr. Wildman, I know you have a limited amount of time, and we are going to start our, we are gonna start our uh, fundraising activity in a few. Yeah. And yeah. We have some more people join us. But what I'd like you to do is. Yes. Give the audience a sense, yes. comprehensive sense of what took place. Well, first of all, start with your lawsuit yes. and then bring us up to where we are right now, please. Okay, okay, fine. Um, well, you know that the, the DPP under the Constitution of Jamaica, before it was amended, was supposed to hold office until she reaches 60 years old. And what the Constitution said is that if before she attains the age of 60, the prime minister, in consultation with the leader of the opposition, can agree to her getting one extension. And the extension that was given to her, first extension, I challenged it on the basis that it was not in compliance with the law. And that matter is now in the Court of Appeal because the full court had ruled that it was, and we think that that ruling was highly flawed having regard to the various provisions of the Constitution and the Interpretation Act. So that is in the Court of Appeal. We have filed our submissions and ready for the argument. The Attorney General is yet to respond. A date is, it should, that matter should be coming at any time now. But subsequent to that, because of my challenge, the government clearly wanted to give her another extension. And mindful of my challenge, what they did, they realized they couldn't go for an, a second extension. So what Mr. Chuck did was to overnight literally amend the Constitution. Well, this is very un, un, <laughs> unprecedented in the country's history where you could just run through an amendment of the Constitution like that in a matter of two days and have it, the governor general assent to it and what the perp, what that did was to say that she could become she could stay in office beyond the age of 65. now the problem there is this nothing wrong in extending the age limit for the office of the dpp and the auditor general as they proposed they proposed to do but this was clearly an amendment to facilitate miss lewillin because they wanted to keep her in office they amended the constitution and to give her the option to go up to 65 and even beyond mm. now my argument uh, when this when this took place i immediately came out of the block and said that this was unconstitutional and it could not be done. Because what you're doing, you are, one, you are passing a law, amended law, 
and to give it a retroactive effect. That is to say, to make it have effect backward. So we say that that amendment could not apply to the incumbent. It could only apply to a new DPP, mm -hmm. somebody who is going into the office for the first time, and not for somebody who has already exhausted her tenure under the Constitution. And the government is seeking by the back door to amend, to keep her there. Mm -hmm. And that is the crux of the argument. So my position is that the amendment could not have retroactive effect. It is a prospective law, not retroactive law. And that is where the argument comes down. What the full court did yesterday was to agree with my position that the amendment, the parliament can pass whatever law they want to pass. They have the majority. But what they cannot do is to say that the amendment could have effect to give her an, another extension that to be defeating the constitution mm -hmm. and that is the mm -hmm. essence of the argument that you could you could apply to a future dpp but it could not apply to the incumbent to give her another extension which is defeating the very constitution itself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's where well, the argument is all right well let me open it up then because I've manipulated this platform here for a long time. Because my head hurt me because I just get out of my soapbox about the diaspora yeah. thing. So yeah. um, I see Jeffrey, Jeffrey Tavares want to ask a question. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Council, how are you doing? Not too bad. I haven't seen you in a long time. Welcome. Thank you. Um, the question I have to ask you. Yes. If the DPP was sitting in that chair for a long period of time. Yes. And it was unconstitutional. Yes. Is it that she has been taking taxpayers' money unconstitutional? Is it that she has um, went to the court? Yes. Went, went to the court, present cases to the court, and she's an illegal, she's a, she's a illegal DPP? That's correct. You, you have raised an oh. interesting question because that is one of the issues now at large. Okay, let me answer those questions. One, you can't force her to give back the money because she actually worked in the job. So your can, government can't take back that money. But what is clear, and this is what is going to cause a crisis in the country, possibly as of Monday morning, everything that she would have done from September last year, when she was given this, extension would have been a nullity and can be challenged in the courts mm. that is a fact mm. now there's a provision in the constitution section 96 subsection 2 which says that nothing done by the dpp but mm -hmm. only by virtue of the fact that he or she it attains it at prescribed age will be invalid by virtue of that that provision, which a number of persons are looking to think that that could save whatever she did in the past, I submit not. It cannot. That put, that section has been interpreted by the courts in the Paul Chen Young case. Now, that section applies. I call it a slip rule section. That is to say, if you are in the office of DPP, and let us say the time running out on you and you do something and before you um after you would have left reach yet retirement age you could rely on that you could rely on that provision is an accidental provision so to speak and say whatever i did while i go over the age one day two day, days it's said but what does not apply if you are put on notice as in this case if you are put on notice that you do not have the right to be there, you exceed your time, as was said in this case, and you continue in office, or if the government continue to have you in office, then that provision cannot avail you. So in other words, our constitution is saying that she can stay there, and what she did in, in the past then, she, she, she sent people to go to jail, um, no, and they have tainted jurors and all those... 
that she would be, they, they, those persons would have a right to, to challenge what was done while she was illegally appointed. Lord help us. <laughs> the country is so in crisis, think... Council. That is what I'm saying, that you could have a crisis there. And, and what I think government will, will want to do is to run to pass legislation to try and save what she did, but I don't think... You see, we can do that in civil proceedings, not so in criminal proceedings. Because we sell a man to jail illegally. You can't remedy that by ordinary legislation. Be, 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 before I yield, Mr. Rattigan, please, before I yield, let me ask um, counsel a question here. Um, the, the, the Attorney General issue a, a, a statement in the newspaper stating that um, she, she, she can't go because of... of, of um, Based on, I don't have the thing in front of me, but basically what he's yes, saying. I know, I know what you talked about. The attorney yeah, can general, you elaborate more on that for us, please? The attorney general is out of place, just like what Mr. Chuck is doing. The, the, the attorney general cannot interpret a clear judgment of the court and tell the person, say, this is what it means when the court already spoke. So the attorney mm. general is out of place. The judgment is clear. It says that sec, um, section two, subsection two of the amendment is invalid and cannot uh, give the incumbent another extension. It is clearly said, stated there. So no interpretation from the attorney general can change that. That is clear. My, my God. Michelle, we, we, we have a lot of work to do. The country <laughs> gone, the centre cannot hold. Mayor and I keep on the land. Mr. Rattigan, over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, God uh, help uh, us. Thank you, Council. Council, yeah. one of the things that the court said was that the proper way to extend the DPP yes. is a meeting of the minds between leader of the opposition. That is correct. And, and, that, is, and that is how it what obtained on the 96. But they recognize, because of my initial challenge, they recognized that they could not get another extension under the pre-amendment constitution. That is what happened. They recognized mm -hmm. it. My goodness. Mm -hmm. And that's why they went ahead and amend to say that she could continue in office beyond 63. So there is no way now under the construct laid yes. out by the court that she can be saved. No, definitely not. Okay. Mr. Tavares mentioned a crisis a while ago, said so the country is in crisis. Yes. Uh, I want to do a little prognostication for me. Talk to me about the crisis that's coming on Monday. Okay. The crisis is this. She's been stubborn, and that stubbornness is being supported by the Attorney General and the Minister of Legal Affairs. But here's the problem that they have. If she insists on going into the office Monday morning and no one is appointed as DPP to take her place, it means that all the criminal cases in Jamaica will be put on hold because the judges will not entertain the prosecutors in court because the prosecutors prosecute on behalf of the DPP. And if there's no DPP, who are you going to prosecute on behalf of? You know, let me stick up in. Can you please tell the audience what happened? I think it was yesterday when... Yes, yesterday when I went to court in Alpha Tree. Just after the ruling, I was on my way to court. And when I got there, I had a case to start, a new case to start. And I intimated to the clerk of court and the judge that they have no jurisdiction to embark on a trial because there was a ruling just a minute ago that the DPP is, is illegal. And the case had to be stood down and they, they made calls and to consultation and they agreed that the case had to be postponed also tell them that the, the 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 incident between the dpp and the judge yes i heard that she went to the supreme court and a judge told her she was trying to appear and the judge told her that i can't hear you where, uh, where are you she said she's the dpp and the judge said no 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 uh, there's a judgment out can't hear it <laughs> <laughs> you no longer exist. Mr. <laughs> so, Wild well, Man. Yeah. Well, what, what about Michelle, the uh, Herb, Dr. Francis, Jeffrey, Patrick, Jamaican Carlos, 
counselor is here at, at all disposal and that. Any questions you have for him? Mm -hmm. I think we should heal to Michelle. Michelle. Well, I just want to congratulate you, Mr. <laughs> Wildman, to have the your name is Wildman, so you are <laughs> seems to be a lion. I've heard your name many times before. Yeah. Um, I am um, friends with a lot of colleagues of yours. Yes. I, I support I really respect the fact that you justice not done only be done but appear appear to be done but to be done yes so um you know and and we need to do that in jamaica and i think that we have a lot of people in jamaica yes. with a lot of um support and not you know that yes. must be the right thing because that jamaica cannot be derailed a lot yes. of people think that jamaica is regular jamaica is this jamaica is that but jamaica is all of us and what we have done so far to keep it together that's and true I really that's I want true to that's commend true. you again not because you know I agree with you. Uh, yeah. and, and keep up the good words, sir. And, and that is what I was saying from the beginning. I warned the government when they came about with this amendment. I went on a program, the Ann Jackson Miller program, TV program, and I, I was the one who articulated the position that if the amendment cannot save the DPP, cannot apply to her. And they ignored my warning and they went ahead and do it and this is the result of it. Mm -hmm. okay, um council before council. Remember, the other council um um ask a question as a, as a lay person yeah. um i've heard a lot um in the united states about the clean hands theory yeah so that is the reason why it's a similar thing with the dpp right now so anything she touched yeah during that period she has dirty hands so to speak so well the law is the law is that because she was not properly appointed, mm -hmm. then anything she would have done in the past would be a nullity. It, the law, when they say something is a nullity, it is treated as if it never existed. Okay. Let, let me, let, uh, Mr. Wildman, Herb Nelson, uh, let me um, ask you maybe a couple things yeah. before the council comes in. The DPP. Yes. Is she subject to prosecution yes. for the advice she gave to the, the judge in the uh, Vibes Cartel case? Put it say, I not I want to say prosecution, but it is a basis on which she could be impeached because of, I mean, one could say that the, the advice was so so egregious that no DPP acting properly could have done that. So one could look at that and see whether it reached the standard under the constitution for removal. That is an issue which you know one would have to look at whether whether it reached that that I bar to satisfy the test for removal. Because I remember, for example, when I was in Grenada, there was the auditor, the director of audit down there, and it's a very very important case. She had made she had submitted a report to parliament and in the report when it was submitted to parliament somebody went and marked up the report but because she was so political she was being supported by her brother and others she accused the prime minister at the time of the as as uh, of doctor in the report and it was not the prime minister i had just gone there as legal advisor to the government and i remember distinctly that they issue was whether she making that statement that the prime minister adopted the report amount could, could provide a basis for removal of the director of audit the director of audit down there is like the auditor general in jamaica yeah and um the prime minister felt strongly about it at the time and decided to um report the matter to the governor general for the gg to set up a, the, the 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 machinery under the constitution to determine whether she should be removed wait right? where I quote judges, or could be judges, just sit on that tribunal to determine whether she should be removed. And they had a hearing, and they recommended that she be removed from office. It went right up to the Privy Council. And by two to one, by, by majority decision in the Privy Council, they agreed that her behavior amounted to misconduct, and so she lost her job. So the question would be whether the action of the DPP in this case reach that standard that could amount to removal from office okay let me just add something here councillor oh, okay. we in the diaspora we have composed a letter for the prime minister yes. along with 
exhibits which we plan to send to him within the next yes. two or three days yes. and this letter is asking him under the constitution to recommend to the governor general to impanel yes. um uh um to, to, to have a, a panel yes to look into her activities that's what i'm what saying the, the constitution makes provision for that yeah right for, for, for possible removal from office for misconduct that's exactly what we're we're, we're doing the, well, yeah, that, that, that's the same habit, that's the same thing that was was done with the director of audit in grenada that's what i'm saying so right so what does that mean that 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 machine would have to be invoked with right. uh, and, and the gg set up this the constitution right. outline who can comprise the panel right and so they would set up an, a, a panel evidence would be marshaled and then they will determine whether her conduct reached the standard to for removal under the constitution especially right. like you said that she had been doing that in the past you understand right. so, yeah. So, so yeah that 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 is the machine that would have been available no to, to determine in that. addition to that we are also sending complaints over to the glc they okay. can't remove her because she can only be removed under the constitution based that, on the constitution provision but right. they can discipline yeah. her yes they can so, yes yeah because so we're, we're the, going to do that not that we are going to do that as yeah. well because you know we're not a kind of you know we're not hide and we're not play hide and seek we tell people what we are though okay we okay so we're planning we're planning to do that um, I said, rejoin us. I said, you have a question for Learned Council here. Oh, 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 hold on, Rocky. Remember, Rocky, remember you have Michelle who's going to ask a question. Oh, sorry, Michelle, go ahead. I'm sorry. You volunteered me for a question. Mr. Wildman, it's a pleasure to be on the same platform with you. I've heard about you for a Thank long you. time. Thank you. You're a mutual friend of ours. I won't call her name right yes. now. <clears throat> but she... um referred your sister to me on a matter earlier oh i see years back anyway i have i have i do have a question is this legal what was the procedure legal for amending the constitution in these two short days okay a good question the, because the provision that provision the constitution requires a simple majority you know it was that a deeply entrenched provision in the constitution they could go about it that way but they, they, there are two issues they must consider one legal and one political it is because the constitution is the highest law in the country that but that 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 document ought not to be amended in the way it was amended because you what you need to do is to allow for debate discussion input it should not be done that way where it is rushed through so even though it is a, it is a it's not a deeply entrenched provision it should require debate discussion from both sides and all the parties because you're talking about the office of the dpp which is a very imp and the director of audit which is a very or the auditor general which is a very imp two very important institutions that touch and concern the lives of the people so from strict political i mean standpoint that was bad legally they had the majority to do it. So, so so they could have done it so the question is now was it done the right way to allow for the dpp to continue in office and that is where they get caught and can we um attack that can we get it the, the amendment overturned <clears throat> no you, you, you can't overturn the amendment but what is clear is that they can't use the amendment to continue the life of Miss De Miss Llewellyn in office? So, so this the, is so, setting a really bad precedent that they ram these amendments well, through overnight, and what else will they slip through? Well, that is where the politics, the the, the, the people now can speak in a different way about that. But the point is that is not every provision in the constitution that is deeply entrenched, and that is one of them. Got you. Um. Uh, I sat. Greetings, Mr. Wildman. You know, I, I, I had to rejoin because there yes. were persons on the live were calling me to ensure that I ask you if yes. you have now considered um, your picks for the next D, DPP. <laughs> being that the office remains vacant. Yes. A full 24 hours. Yes. And people yes. just want to know if you have a pick. 
That's but, all I came back. I, but, I, 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 I could make a suggestion. <laughs> very, very, very well. <laughs> I, I could go there and hold the office until they, they get some <laughs> That is all. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> that will be a good one, um, Council. Yeah, yeah. Very good one. Yeah. I need people to understand that mm. where, where we're looking at here, mm. like our brother Isaac, is not a DB DB liar. Yes, this is yes. a real liar. This is a man who was DPP in Grenada. That's correct. <laughs> and I was and I was I was deputy DPP. Paula and I were on the same level when I left. In fact, she she got the job because I left the office. Otherwise, you would have gotten it. That is correct. And in fact, when when the time when it came up for, for the DPP. I was the number one contender. And because they knew that I was the number one contender, they took my application out of the pool. They didn't want me to come for the interview because they realized that I've got the job. And at the yeah. time, it was said, told to me, that they wanted a woman in the job. They realized that I was more than qualified. I was the most qualified person for the job. And and, right. and, and because they can't twist you around and bring you yeah, around. Yes, from yes, yes, that, was, that was it. They said, they said that I can't be controlled. There you go. You're, you're, you're a loose cannon, you know. I mean, no disrespect <laughs> to you. So they, they can't well, twist you around. And... I, I, don't have, I don't have been... You see, I, let me tell you why I stay. I'm a stickler when it comes to the law. I, I believe in the application of the law. So sometimes it can work for some people, sometimes it works against some people. But I, I, yes. I try to go with the law. And so some people may not like that. So I will I so I will take certain legal position that may not be popular with some people at times because that is mm -hmm. in my the law. Yeah, All right, mm -hmm. Carlos. Yeah. Oh. Good evening, uh, viewers and listeners and uh, uh, panel, Mister Wildman, Coast. Yes. Thanks for being here, sir. Yes. No, never question. Um, uh, I'm, I'm here with Elroy Chuck, Justice Minister. Said tomorrow is going to be business as usual. What do we? What do we uh, gonna expect? What what do we should we expect tomorrow when if the DPP should bust them doors open? And number two, is Jamaica embarking on a um, a constitutional crisis? Yes. Are we facing a constitutional crisis? Well, I suspect what will happen Monday, because one of my colleagues called me today, asked me what they think I should should be done, and I told him what should be done. I suspect that if she turns up Monday morning. The, there is enough basis, very strong basis, for anyone, anyone to go to the Supreme Court and ask for an injunction to restrain her from continuing office. Because you have a judgment, a declarative judgment that has declared the law that she's on law, she's illegally there. So you would have satisfied the test for an injunction and, and you file a claim asking the court to declare that she cannot sit in the office. So it, that to me, that can be done easily. Mm. And any Jamaican could do that, sir? Any Jamaican could do because yeah, you have, this is this yeah, because, 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 because in light of the Privy Council case of Dumas from the Trinidad, anyone, yes. any citizen would have standing to bring that claim. Yeah! <laughs> Jamaican <laughs> people, <laughs> sorry, Mr. Ortega, not taking over your show. Jamaican I'm people, you hear that? constitutional crisis. So, yes, a wild man. And I, yes. I, I, are you telling me, as learned counsel, Isaac yes. Buchanan has told me, yes. that I, living in the United States, a Jamaican yes. citizen who was not renounced his citizenship, yes. I am standing? Yes, it, well, yes, yes, it is a Jamaican had standing. Thank you very much, sir. Say no more. I'm um, standing to, to bring a claim uh, and to, uh, seek, an uh, and to seek, seek an injunction. Okay, sir. So, um, so, 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 Mr. Rattigan, that means that means Mr. Rattigan, that means if nobody does it, you know, come tomorrow morning, tomorrow we can do it, you know. All of us can do it. Indeed. Um, Michelle, you're gonna yeah. say something. Yeah, are we is this unprecedented, these kinds of um irregularities in the, the history of Jamaica jurisprudence? Well, in, 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 in Jamaica, this is a first time in Jamaica, really. This is very, it's disgraceful. I mean, we're dealing yes, with it's people, embarrassing. It is embarrassing. Yeah, embarrassing. Attorneys at the highest, in the highest offices yes. in the country, not respecting a court order. That is correct. And that is, that is, that is the 
the, to me. So why should they expect this the regular citizens to obey any laws? Correct. That is a very good point, and that's a point I've been making. It is egregious. I think that yeah, to me, the government is going on a dangerous path with that. Really, I agree with you. Yes, this is what banana republics do. That is true. You're perfectly right. You're perfectly right. All Mr. Right. Wong, Mr. Yeah. Mar 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 I, okay, I, I just wanted to bring this other thing up. Yes. Um, in the United States, if senior officials, yes, legal officials, lawyers, yes. if they're aware of an incident yes. that is reportable, yes, such as the other senior attorney and others who might have been in the room with the judge. Yes. When the DPP told the judge what she told him. Yes. There was another senior attorney there who yes. happens to be related to somebody on this panel. Yes. Right? If that person was there, yes. and that person went along to get along, yes. isn't that a, a breach of integrity or or some breach of ethical standards in the law annals somewhere? Well, because as I said... I know they would be charged in the U.S., but I'm wondering why aren't they being charged down in Jamaica? No, it is not... There, there will be no criminal charges there. It, it, it was just a clear case of bad judgment. Bad judgment as to how that matter was handled. But because it was clear that when the information came to the court's attention and the DPP went over there, they didn't have a jury. They did not have a jury. I remember I was doing a case in St. Mary years ago when I was deputy. And I had a similar situation to contend with, a rape case from St. Mary High School. And... I, there was information that given to me that the foreman of the jury was paid. And I got that information very good source. In fact, it was a police source. Who knew, and I knew, I knew exactly where the money was paid and when it was paid. And I came from town the morning and I saw the, I went straight to the judge in chambers. I called the little lawyers them and let them know the information that we had. And I told the judge that there's no, no second thought. This charge the jury same time uh, and have a, a, a new trial and have the case transferred to Kingston. That's what we did. So you don't, so, you say you don't, once you have that information, uh -huh. the, the, the issue is immediately you discharge. You didn't have a jury. So you said there can be no charge whatsoever, no kind of misfeasance malfeasance <laughs> anything no i i think it's more disciplinary action or you know that, that 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 could arise from that but you have to show that um it you know it mere error of judgment will not suffice if you, you have to come with more so no but where i think she has compounded the thing by coming on radio and saying that she has been doing that in the past so right that, right that, that could create a problem and, and, exactly. and that means other people might have been aware. That that right. that's, a, that's what I'm saying. So, so that could be a problem. Yeah. I, I think she need to be investigated, though. I think they they really need to find out what are the cases out yes. there. Yes. And um, there's several uh, things uh, they need to do. Because yes. review of the convictions, the legal challenges. Yes, eventually vacating convictions yes especially in the case of those um uh cases that she she knew yes. were fixed yes you know and and then you guys have to do something about restoring public confidence and accountability the policy. well well that that is true but because, because by making that statement about she has been doing in the past i don't think she she recognized what she was yeah. saying we can see why you're in the first position to get get the job <laughs> she was a distant second <laughs> my goodness and I let's pray i hope they give it to him now no, I, I, don't, I don't think i don't think they would really <laughs> no but she has a law license like every other attorney in jamaica i assume yeah. um can just a regular citizen appeal to 
that board that issued her that license because these are ethical um yes yeah, yes 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 that's what we're doing michelle we're gonna send we have the we have the forms and, and everything oh, we're gonna send okay yeah, no he said to the supreme court but there no, must be no, the no, the gs is different from right the, yeah. so there there are two avenues to to handle this yes 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 mm -hmm. Let me ask you, somebody just um, come a dear friend of ours called and, and asked this question. Yeah. Said that the governor general, with all the resources at his yeah. disposal, legal and otherwise, when yeah. he got this, yeah. we know that you can't bring a charge against him in Jamaica. Yeah. He's not, you can't bring anything. But isn't there like a, a, a cloud considering his decision? Because well, you, have raised, not, you have raised an interesting question. Because you know, and I've and I've been talking about it. When it came, for example, the first challenge to the appointment extension, I had some serious questions about the office of the GG. I'm I'm being honest with you. Because I maintain that there was no gazette in place at the time. And I got the distinct impression that is after I filed this claim that I don't know how a gazette does turn up like that i don't know because when i made inquiries at the, at the print printry i was told by the person who was in charge that there was no gazetting of the appointment that was told to me all right so i have some concerns there secondly in relation to this extension now well it depends on the posture of the gg you recall that in the past we have had GG, at least one, who would defy the will of the executive if they think that something was being agreed just mm -hmm. And would probably say, hey, well, some breaks here. Florizella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, that's the point. That's the point. <laughs> that's the point. That's the point. That you're, you're bang on. Yes, you're sir. On. And that's a long time ago. A long time ago. Exactly. Mm -hmm exactly so right now what we have is just a rubber stamping that is correct so, so, so what you're saying what you're saying now is that this this gg is a yes man to andrew wholeness <laughs> no, <I'm not>. you, <laughs> no, you, you don't say it i'm saying it <laughs> but, no. but, but again, um can you allow me to ask uh, mr wildman a question please yeah. sure okay uh, mr wildman um yeah. you know um it's a pleasure to um have you on the panel, right? Uh, all the um, persons on the By panel. Way, hold on a second, there, Byron. Let me just introduce him, Mr. Wildman. Yes. This is Byron and his wife Anne Marie. They formed the duo called Mystic Sensation, and they okay. are a sensation on social media. And they're okay. out of Canada. So, Byron, <laughs> go ahead, please. Okay. Yes, thank you for that. Um, you know, um, all protocol due to um the chat all the persons in chat all the persons in tv land yeah right, all the persons in, uh, on the panel yes mr um mr wildman as yes. it relates to um the dpp yes right um as it relates to the tainted um jury situation yes right we have seen that um somewhat the dpp right um as um i could say inserted or influence and so then that yes. is proceed I am saying here to the fact that um, we had a case, presidents already set, yes. and I can, I can, I, I'm going to read something to you as it relates to Patterson and Small in a giant statement dated yes. Monday morning, yes. yes, with a legal president. So the question that I'm asking yes. was the DPP, Paula Llewellyn, aware of this presidents that set, and if so, then why she um, ch um she chose um to go contrary of this. Well, it is, it is clear to me that she was not aware of it, and other, several other persons were not aware of that decision. But I think even without that decision, the, the, the answer to the question was, was, was evident. You, you have 12 jurors, one discharge, and you're down to 11. This is a murder case. In a murder case of that nature, you can't go under the jury act below 11. No, if you have information that this thing occurred, there are two bases to say you didn't have a jury. One, because of the possible contamination. And two, the, the one who was clearly the mischief on the jury. 
he would have demonstrated that he was no longer fit to be on the jury. So on, on both fronts, you did not have a jury. Mm. So the case should have been automatically concluded right there and then discharge and uh, you start the noble councillor uh, um it would appear to me that this government is is arrogant in the way it treats court orders yes. why do i say that yes in march i believe of 2021 yes the court ruled that the jcf should implement a digitized um overtime system because it yes. was managed yes and it wants you to do that so that people can be paid on time and accurate yes. and the court gave them one year yes that said it should have been done in 2023 that's correct yeah yeah to date that system has not and the money was disbursed for yes. that so to date that system has not been fully implemented and people are constantly complaining police officers who that put is their that is, yeah that is true and i know about that i know about that yes you know about that all right so that that court uh, that that court order is in they violated that court order yes. am i correct in saying that that is correct yes what do we do at this point about that and you know that is the same court order that caused mr james to be in problem with the with the high command mm -hmm. and and it seems to me that he's also having some challenges in terms of, boy, this is a very strange place, eh? Because we applied for a mandatory injunction to have him reinstated. We have, we, I know we have a great case. And we were expecting that a ruling would have been done probably two months now and, and we can't hear anything. And the man is out there suffering. So I don't know what to make of it. Yeah, you know, tell me, talk to me about this. The, in in America, you call it a temporary injunction, yes, and a full injunction. But and one of the, it 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 goes to the element of ir irreparable harm. That means yes. And basically, you're saying, look, you need I need relief from the court because I'm yes. being harmed. You know, in a way that it's going to be difficult for me to to recover. Yes. So, why is it that it's taking so long in Jamaica for them to respond to this to your to, to the motion? I don't know. <laughs> that is that is beyond me. <laughs> System, politics involved. <laughs> well, well, it's it's a direct manipulation of the system against them. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's he's in the right. They know he's in the right. Yeah, I, I think but so. You, I but think so. they they manipulated it against him. Oh, let me just quickly just tell. Uh, Mr. Mr. Wildman has, has, I mean, I'm taking up his time because I had to twist his arm because he promised yeah. a while to come on. But yeah. if okay. anybody has questions in the chat, just put it in there, please, and I'll ask him. Cause yeah, because yeah, we're imposing on his family time now because he's, uh, I don't want to talk <laughs> business, but, you know, I found out something about him last night. <laughs> so, <laughs> if anybody have any questions in the chat, please put them up now. In the meantime, um, anybody on the panel, if you have a question for Mr. Wildman, please go ahead. Now, well, the, the, the one thing I find, Mr. Wildman, yeah. was when the, the, uh, the folks in, in London, yes. the Privy Council, sent the case back to yes. the, the appeals court. Yes. If they knew that the DPP had committed these um, infractions, yes. so to speak, of the law, yes, could they have taken action there against her? No, or no, no. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Okay. It doesn't work like that. No. So, so could they have recommended what action be taken? Uh, no, as I said, it, they would not. They, the Privy Council would not get into. Would not get into that. The Privy Council would just rule and issues of law that come before them they, they wouldn't get into that they, sometimes what they and 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 to me it, it, that that was evident in this case when you see for example the privy council gave a judgment like this and they name the dpp by name right they are sending a signal there okay because so they normally would just refer to the office right it, the, but when you see in this case, they actually named her. I think that they were sending a signal. So, 
All right. Well, this brings me back to the appeals court. It must have been obvious to the judges of the appeals court who reviewed the case. Yes. And the arguments made by his attorneys. Yes. That this was in case factual and that they should have handled the case at their level without it going forward. Yes, yes. I, I think I, I agree that that the the what emerged from the case. I was not following the case in detail really. But right. clearly, given what we know now know about the case, it is clear to me that the the appeal should have been allowed at the at the local level. So um, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, no. I mean would would it be logical to assume that somebody manipulated it at that local not level? Necessary. No, no, no. It just they take a different view on it and uh, view on it, but the the kind of quote the privy council see that the view that the court of appeal took was the wrong one. So no, and they don't I want to say there's no manipulation, but I just think that you know probably error of judgment on the court's part. Well, I, I mean they're at a high level to making mm -hmm. these type of errors. Yeah. I'd love to have seen the write-up that they did in yeah. rejecting this argument. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um Thanks. Mr. Councillor, a couple, there have been several yes. questions in the chat. They're asking yes. about current cases, and I don't think you want to yes. make any comments on those. So I'll just answer yes. those questions for you to say if the if a case um, is before the court, yes. um, it's very unlikely that Mr. Wildman is going to make any comment. Yes, guys, the, the subject is here, rule it apply. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, some, the, there are a couple of questions here. One is, can the DPP be charged? I think we talked about that. Yes. Uh, can an appeal... Oh, here's, a, here's, a, here's, a, 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 here's something that crossed my mind. And this yes. question just, just, just jogged my memory. Yes. Um, is it possible for, her, for the DPP at this point? Because we're hearing that she's going to ask for a stay. No. Nah, uh, good question. Good question. Again, I think the minister and the AG, based on the statement, they are clearly on the wrong path with this. You cannot, and I say, you cannot get a stay of a declaratory judgment. There's nothing to stay. What the court does is to pronounce the law. So you can't get a stay of that pronouncement. So I don't know how the minister could have said something like that. You cannot get a stay of a, of a declaratory judgment. That's Do again not. why you were in first position for that for that job. <laughs> <laughs> if, 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 if I may, Mr. Are Rottigan. You're reflecting well on her competence at all. <laughs> if I may, Mr. Rottigan. Yes. So, counsel. <laughs> yes. That means that the minister of justice, who's a, who's a, who's a well-known attorney. Yes. Is it that he knows the law or is it that his memory is going <laughs> or termite eating out his brain? My words, not yours. <laughs> Why he go along this route, sir? I don't know. <laughs> to help bend in, in help bend and, and, and break in the constitution, the law of the country. So that means that we should we, we should we should we should file a suit against the Minister of Justice <laughs> and also report him to, to, to the legal counsel. Well. You don't have to answer that one, sir. <laughs> I, I, I have a, I have a, I have a question that I want to ask, and it's a, a scenario. Concept, and if you might, you, I don't think you probably will answer this. Yeah. But there's a particular case that is of concern to many of us uh, here in the diaspora, where a well-connected um, person, um, I, I, might I say, in in your profession, and someone. Yeah. Um, there was an incident, yes. uh, let me say that, that happened uh, where they just said that person, I mean, the, the, the whole system was manipulated yes. because of connection. Yes. So um, by virtue of the, the what is now said that this DPP has messy hands, yes. is, it, is there a way that that could be investigated independently or how would that come to be because since there's a lot of question about not only this the dpp but yeah. other people 
who seem to be in a circle. I, 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 I think I know the case, sir, brother. I will not mention it, but I, let me make a general statement. Mm -hmm. Do you know that, and I don't think a lot of people are aware of this, a private citizen, if they think that they have evidence that a crime was committed, be it murder or wounding or whatever the case may be, can commence prosecution if they think they have evidence. Question is whether they have evidence. But can they demand evidence that is suspect? Well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, they, 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 if, um, and, if they, and, and wait, no, and wait, and if the citizen, if the citizen is of the view that the police have evidence and suppressing the evidence, they can take action against the police. Wow. Well said. Thanks. <laughs> um, Councillor, there's another question for you. Yeah. Um, in essence, it's saying that can the government then say, okay, you know what? We'll abide by the decision. She's yes. gone. Yes. But we're going to appoint her but, as yeah. a new DPP. Is there a rule that says a DPP cannot be a DPP twice? Cannot be appointed twice? No, there's no rules. There's no such rule. Once so you satisfy the requirements. So is it possible that they could say, all right, fine, we'll abide by the court decision yes. and we'll remove her, but yes. then we're going we're gonna to appoint her as a new DPP? No, she could not. In that, because that would be defeating the, 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 the thing. That would be giving an extension through the back door. No, that couldn't work. But is there any law right now pro pro preventing or prohibiting the government the same, from doing the same ruling of the the same rule of the court would apply? The same rule because this is what you'll be doing there. You will be using the uh, manipulating the constitution to say resign or court say you and then no uh, apply. No, that would not be permissive. That would be defeating the very language of the constitution. Right. That you can't get more than one uh, one extension. Okay. So somebody's asking, uh, folks, um, Mr. Wildman will not entertain any questions concerning cases that are before the court. So while I want to ask him, I know he's not going to answer. And he just mentioned the subjudice, uh, and, and ISAT has mentioned it on several occasions yeah. that on matters before the court, yeah. the attorneys are prohibited from talking about it. Right. Yeah, it's not like in America where you can't say anything yeah. you want to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can make general comments, but not to go into discuss the case. That's okay. The All right. Um, let me see. Okay. I'm looking to see if there's another question. Um, but Mr. Wildman, the people them love you up, you know, we've gone over 3,000 devices, you know. You serious? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. We are kick up dust tonight, man. You serious? <laughs> yeah, that means the boy next week, I have to go hang on for you anyway. You have to go. <laughs> you have to leave the gym early this evening, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, folks. Um, any any other question before we release learned counselor? Um, uh, uh, Mystic Sensation. Any question? Let me go around the room. Yes. Um, let me just ask a question here. Yes. And, um, I am not going to ask Mr. Wildman. Um, of any case that is yes. presently um, before the court, but yes. I am interested in a particular case that is not before the court, and this yes. is why I want to ask you. Um, we have understanding as it relates to some um, cases where it would be prudent for the yes. prosecution and um, the investigators to work in tandem. Yes. In terms of um, having, you know, um, a successful um, prosecution. Yes. Right. So a particular case um, as it relates to um, Patrick Bailey, because that yes. is not before the court. Yes. Right. Um, what is hindering um, the prosecution and the investigators to work this um, particular case? Well, I suspect that is the case, Your There's nothing to, 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 I mean, there should be nothing to hinder any, any investigation. The question must always, I don't know what evidence they have gathered. And, and so it's difficult to comment on that. But the police should be able to say, and I think that where the police falling down with that case is that 
they should be reporting to the public periodically as to what progress they are making in the investigation. Because by not saying anything, it's going on for such a long time, it undermines confidence in the police. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, I thought. the injunction question because yes. i just said you 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 answered that question already I, okay so that that's a good one no, I guess the, 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 the particular question was how is it that mr ratigan and the dirty three to five or dirty 30 has no standing in the camino johnson case but they can file an injunction in in a matter similar to the. I, I don't know what are the details of mr ratigan but i know that based on the dumas case out of trinidad Okay, privy council case. Any public issue here in the public issue, a citizen, any citizen have the right to approach the court. And in fact, the point was reinforced recently in a case out, out, out of Antigua from the privy council again. Okay, that the citizen have the right to approach the court and ask the court a public issue. For its intervention so any citizen have the right to invoke a constitutional breach and this is a constitutional issue all right thank you sir Jamaican Carlo. Do, mr wildman do encourage the dirty 30. you see, these, not... you see these, these people on this platform I, I have to warn you from now okay they're they're a thorn in the side of the of the of the of the government Oh, and I get you. They deal with um, ministers of foreign affairs with dreadlocks and I wipe see. them, wipe, use them locks, wipe the floor <laughs> all across. So I'm just telling you, you'll get a bad reputation. Okay. You, you'll have to <laughs> seek refuge. But I just thanks. Want, that's okay. thanks for the warning. I take exception <laughs> to that. I take exception to that. <laughs> We're not going to tarnish Mr. Wildman. Except reputation. Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> Except me. <laughs> Car Car Carlos, you up? You're up next. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, I don't have nothing more to say. Boy, I listen, Arati. Listen, me, I listen, my brother. Me, I learn. Respect, <laughs> Mr. Wildman, for putting up yourself a question in my brother. Really appreciate it for coming on these platform here. Yeah. Um, come give the people some education right. about the legal structures in Jamaica. So I'll continue yeah. to listen, Arati. If anything pop up, I'll ask. Yes. Yeah. All right, my brother. Yeah. Patrick. Well, I, I just want to say to the council, guys, it's just refreshing to hear um, um, one of the, 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 the profession that I revere and respect so much growing up with the Dudley Thompson yes. and uh, Vivian Blake and yes. um, and all those people. It was just l learning, I mean, how to argue yes. from these guys and the, the passion for the law. Yes. Uh, and it was... It, it, it reminded me that our justice system then, even though it was switch and leaning to the money side, yeah, you yeah. have people like Dudley, Vivian, Blake, I mean, yeah. and all these guys were, were passionate about yes. defending the That's innocent. Yeah. You know, so you reminded me so much uh, of, of um, those yeah. folks. Yeah. Uh, really, uh, it's a pleasure to just listen to your clarity, yeah. you know, uh, with the law. Yeah. You know, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. And me, me have a question. We have a question, Rati. Question of Japot Ahmed. Um, come we been seeing this on social media. Some people are fearful that they will uh, amend the constitution again to keep her there. Any no. truth to that, Mr. Wildman? No, I don't think they would take that chance. No, 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 no. I don't. No, no. That, yeah, that. Too much publicity and yeah, negative yeah, publicity. Yeah, take that chance. Don't take that chance. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Tavares, Mr. Vumba Va, Vumba V. <laughs> all i can say is that um i i i must leave my hat off to council wildman because knowing him from jamaica have the pleasure of sitting down and talking you have even had a drink of vix with him one time <laughs> it, it is, is 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 refreshing to have him come on yeah. and speak to us about the laws of our land and the constitution yes and it is it, it for us to sit back here and allow those people who are in the effluence of society to continue breaching the fundamental rights of the Jamaican yeah. people, to continue breaching the fundamental rights of the Constitution. Yeah. 
They are putting the laws on the people who live, who live below crossroads, yet they are breaching the law. <laughs> there is something wrong somewhere. And until yeah. we as a people stand up, and I think that is why they don't like the dirty dirty. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that is that's why they, they continue fighting against us. I see. <laughs> you know, and the time has come, Mr. Wildman, for all yes. Jamaicans. Whether you're a lawyer, barrister, or no yes. lawyer, no barrister, yes. the time has come for all of us to stand up and say, Enough is enough. Yes. You cannot have a government yes. who believe that they're above the law. Yes. You cannot have a justice minister. Who yes. believe that he is the law unto himself yes. and breach the constitution and get away with it. Yes. Breach the law of the land and get away with it. And he's a lawyer. Boy, I tell you, I don't know. I am disappointed. Because let me tell you why I'm disappointed. I cannot believe that the government could be making so many mistakes on the legal front since they're in power. So many basic mistakes. I, I, I can give I can give several examples. Several, I mean, to do with, for example, public officers who have been removed from the job or tried to remove from the job in breach of the constitution. Not, I mean, they, they're just making the mistakes repeatedly. I have, I have gone to court several times in respect of these matters, and we have succeeded in all of them for the same reason. They're not following the constitution, and it amazes me. I can name several where we went to court. They tried uh, recently. I have uh, two of them back to back. Same thing. They're not following the constitution. And we go to court and we're able to overturn what they are doing and put by the people on the job because they are breaching the constitution, section 125 of the constitution. They're not following the law. All right. Um, Dr. Francis, our fearless leader, wonder if he's here. Maybe he stepped away. Michelle? Yes. Uh, Anything for. Well, um, your comment just now is very gracious. You're saying that the government has been making a lot of mistakes, but I think at this point, yeah. Jamaicans at home and abroad are wondering if there are actually mistakes or deliberate intentional <laughs> acts. Well, I, I, can't, I can't fight you with that one because some people have that view. Yeah, so yeah. we just have to keep um, yeah. trying to keep people accountable and thankful to professionals like yourself that stand yes. for the truth and for justice yes, yes. um your reputation precedes you and yes. i pray that god keeps you and protects yes. you yes. and that you continue to prosper in what you do so that thanks. the people of jamaica will yes. benefit from your work and your excellent work thanks thanks, yes. thanks. all right herb d yes sir thank you sir um this is might seem like a general question yes but why would high-ranking government officials need to utilize between 10 to 18 different instruments i'm talking about cell phones tablets and laptops all at the same time mm -hmm. when they travel wherever they go in your experiences, why why would they need that? Do you utilize ten different cell phones? No. Okay. So <laughs> why do you think a government official would need ten different cell phones, four tablets, four laptops? <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> and chopping, I chopping. <laughs> well, all right yeah well look before you go counsel i have one simple question for you yes yes you could change one thing yes. in the jerry today if you had that power to do what would that be? one thing in the what where judiciary oh the, oh oh lord <laughs> boy I tell you, that's a big one that's a big one. There are so many changes I like to see, so that's a big one. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it there. <laughs> Mr. Ratigan, <laughs> Mr. Ratigan, leave the judiciary alone. 
You know, that's how I'm on. You don't see you trust to and happen in the first sag all out and get the king. Why is that money? I go after him. But I go after him too. Listen, counselor, it's been a pleasure. Thanks. We are humbled and thankful that you found the time. Yes. Spend with us this afternoon when you could be anywhere. Yes. Um, and in fact, you were somewhere and you yes. left that to come and join us. So yeah, man. We're extremely grateful. We wish yes. you all the best. And please regard Reason with Ratigan as your home, sir. Okay, thanks. Don't yeah. stray far. Don't stray thanks. far. All right. Thanks. Um, thanks. All the best, everyone. You know? Thanks. Bye -bye. Any closing, any closing remarks for us as you depart? Yes. Anything for us before you go? Well, I think you guys are doing a great job. I mean, you're keeping the um the jamaican flag high abroad and and then taking particular interest in your country which is very very commendable i think that that's a great thing and you're, you're you're very public spirited and i think i mean we need more of that and and i think you guys are on the right track you know to make sure that government for example is kept accountable and that the society we have some standard in the country to make a lack standard believe me lacking in standard so I see nothing wrong with what you guys are doing, ensuring that standards are maintained. All right, Councillor, again, yes. thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the weekend with your family. Yes. Take care of yourselves. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, folks. Oh. That was a treat. That was a real treat. Back on the platform, I'm gonna take that now as well. Oh, yo, yeah, I know you forgot. I know you forgot. All, All right. right. Hey, big up yourself, I said. We'll talk, all right? All right. KFC call. Right. KFC call. All right. <laughs> it's on. All right. Um, hold on. Okay. Um, we're back. Let's see. How many of us are here? All right. So, I know that um, Fireman was trying to get in. I believe he was trying to get in and loan some. Fireman, loan some if you can't hear me. We have the spots, we have the spots available. So please join us. Um, we are we are late into the into the fundraising thing that we had planned, but you know what? It was well worth it because it's not every day of the week you get a Hugh Wildman on your program, but you can do a you can do a fundraiser anytime. So uh, here's Mr. Lonesome. Um, there he is, Renegade. We're not afraid. Man, we're doing this. Keep it in, yes. man. Yes. All right, now. Yes. Bye, 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 up to you. You, you're the man. <laughs> no. Hey, Jeffrey. I don't know if you're watching the piece with um, with um, with Mr. Wildman. Were you yes. watching it? Mm -hmm. yes, yes, but you yes. never get to me. They want to ask one question in the I'm going to put it back to you, right? You remember 2015 with the letters? You remember say the same chocolate coffee, the registration of the of, 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 of the Prime opposition Minister. leader. Yes, yes. I'm opposition leader. Yeah, he was the opposition leader. Yeah. Yeah, because in the call, Chuck has said for resign. Chuck did a call for him resign because Chuck has said, you know, me, me supposed to have it yourself. So Chuck has said, anybody who hold the office, whether you're prime minister, opposition, and that and that I make them from them you breach the constitution. Anything mm -hmm. against that, you for resign. Remember, Chuck did I tell the Andrew I mean, Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yes. Let me just say to the our listening or viewing audience that uh tonight is a is a momentous night because it marks the first time we've gone over three thousand devices listening. Yeah. I don't know how many we'll end up with, but but um I really feel proud of the the the, the panel and I really have to say thank you to all of you in the chat and all of you listening and uh, watching from home um we are going to delve into our fundraising thing now people you know that the one jamaica legal defense foundation is the vehicle the financial vehicle to holding government accountable um not only do we talk but we take action and we continue to take action on behalf of the people in jamaica as well as people in the diaspora but primarily the people in jamaica because they need help they need to know what's going on with the government and i'm telling you what you're looking at here you're looking at a powerful panel because how many of us are here eight 
Yeah, eight. Right. Really, really, three, three, six, nine of us in a mystical. Nine. Oh, yeah. I'm going to forget. Uh, yeah, yeah mystical. mystical and and yeah, 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 yeah. And Marie Van Byron, forgive me. Yes. yes. Carlos. Yeah, forget to learn some. Bless up. Bless up. Yeah. <laughs> but, but think yes, about, man. think about, think about the, 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 the power and the influence of the of social media that we can sit here and command an audience that heretofore we couldn't this 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 advertising space was controlled by traditional media and traditional traditional media was for the large large part in jamaica controlled by the government so the government would only release whatever they wanted you to know but see now with this platform we're able to do some deep dive and oh i know i mean oh there he is mr deep dive over there so herb yeah we can do some deep dive and so we can provide information. And you know what? I'm telling you, panelists, it's amazing. Week after week, I get calls from people saying, Boy, we never know this Aguana Jamaica no, until you and Lonesome and Carlos and Jeffrey and Mystic and Aromatic and all of, all of you guys reveal it. We didn't know these things were going on. Right? So, big up to everybody for being here. So, the vehicle to finance the lawsuits. To finance the protests, to finance the um, background investigations, to finance us going and talking to public officials about the Magnitsky and so on and so forth, is the one Jamaica Legal Defense Foundation. And we're asking you tonight to make a contribution. We have three over 3,000 devices still attached to the program, which means you might have about 4,000 people. I'm being optimistic. And if everybody should just jump in and put a ten dollar tonight, right? It is going to go a long way. The herb tea, he's doing his background stuff, and I think he has two reports already. I, I, I think he's still going through them because there are some things that he doesn't want to really share right now. But at some point, he'll have to share most of it with you. Then we have the protests coming up May tenth. Then we have another protest in Canada. Then we have. A protest in washington dc in june and at that point in time in june we will approach legislators because the uh herb and and his group the ngo they have something called legislative week where they make presentations to a whole bunch of um legislators on the hill at that point in time we're gonna seek an audience and that's when we're gonna talk about the magnitsky and other acts where we can that we can use to hold government even more accountable then there is um we have a oh by the way my good my good friend i know him don't want people know say me and my friend or my good friend the cg down in miami we're coming back you know we're coming it's around robin we're coming back to your neck of the woods and guess what this time i don't think we're gonna we'll be able to say it's a dirty 30 we might be able to say it's a dirty 100 or the dirty 200 because we're picking up steam and we're coming back right the, the the cg up in new york i heard that she's worried scared stiff because of what's going on here because you know our place that our people that and we have people who have reasons to come out and join us in 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 a in a, in a, a show of unity to say we're tired of what's going on in jamaica also people ask well what do you think a little protest can do well, it's not just a little protest because we plan to have ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, um, CNN, WPI, all of, you know, New York is the media capital of the world. And we're sending out a very devastating but truthful press, con uh, press release. And we know that these people are going to show up and the pressure that it will, be, it will bring on Jamaica. Also, we want people to know that um, some of the funding we have used to... to um, take control over the name global the global jamaica diaspora council and we're also going to take control over the logo so once and for all we won't have any more issues i repeat i said it earlier i'll repeat there's only one global jamaica diaspora conference that will be held between june 16th to 19th one and that is the people's conference which will be held at night time in the morning a group which shall remain unnamed they're having a business conference it's a business exposition so if you're interested in selling in buying selling wares 
you know, they have something called the marketplace, which has been around for a while. You, you know, you can go. By the way, we're telling people, do not go. Here's why. It's your conference, the diaspora conference. Yet they're telling you, pay your plane fear, pay your hotel fear, pay um, ground transportation, phone, food, and then also pay a registration fee. And you no better pay that. If you now go, you no better pay the one fifty or one sixty before me, mid me, because after that, the I hear that the price is going up. Do not go. Don't waste on the money and go. If you're going to Jamaica, if you want to go see your family, by all means, go. Go see your family and, you know, um, um, spend the money on the economy, right? But don't spend all of that money to go listen to foolishness, to people that try selling no wares. That conference is for business people. It's not for the typical diaspora. It's not for none of we right after. So that is for people who have money to spend and money to do. And by the way, the minister said it herself to show a, another example, another piece of evidence of the control. She said, we have planned this conference for you. <laughs> we now have no say. You know, they plan it for us. And so we go like lamb to the slaughter, spend the money. And I mean, I have a bunch of things I can show you. You hear them talk about all... Oh, the, 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 the dirty 30, the hateful eight, the fabulous five, or oh, we're causing problems. Lies, because I can go back and show you newspaper clippings going back, back to 2011 with people complaining, said the conference is, is foolishness, is all chat, 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 and nothing else. Year after year after year. Patrick can testify to that, and he has. He's been to several of them. I've been to one, and I'll never go back. Not, not under the present construct. By the way, why is it that we have our conference? It's our conference, the, the global diaspora conference. Why is it that it's never held in the diaspora? It's our conference. Why is it it's always in Jamaica? I have nothing against having it in Jamaica. In fact, I want it to be held in Jamaica. But I want it to be held in Jamaica after we have the one in Canada, we have the one in the US, we have the one in the UK. Then you do the one in, in, in Jamaica. I mean, remember now, it's biennial, not biannual, biennial. So it's every two years. So you have one in the U.S., two years later, Canada, two years later, the U.K., two years later, Jamaica, and you rotate it just as though we're going to rotate the protests on them. Same thing. And by the way, for the CG, I just want to mention, continue mentioning two phrases. Bryan Square Park, Cyberlock. You and I know what that, that means. All right, and we'll talk more about it, but keep that in mind because I know your folks they're watching and they're reporting, and that's good because it's always good to be informed. So, people, when you like up the live, I'm gonna go in at the thing. We we have um, Herb, what happened to the um, I, I saw a thing from um, from Melly, she said that the PayPal or whatever it's up now, something like that. Yeah, yeah, the um. Let me take a quick look. Go ahead. Okay. But, yeah, folks, we need all the assistance we can get. And by the way, just remember, there's only one Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, and that is that council is owned by all of us. Everybody upon the platform, yes, sir. Everybody out there will listen to it. It's owned by everybody, not by the Jamaican government. Tell them to take their grubby hands off of our organization and by the way another by the way pretty soon we are going to issue a cease and desist order so all of you people out there running around talking about your representatives of the global jamaica diaspora council be prepared to get a letter and if you continue to use the title use the name then we will see you in court and we're not ramp about that we love the court so we will see you in court. So I hope, I hope when you do this on behalf of the Jamaican government, I hope them have a little fund and a slush fund set aside for represent, you know, because we are going to take on to go to court. We are going to seek civil judgment against, you know, right? So no think twice. I remember now, you know, you know, get no peer. The, 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 if you not get peer, then that's illegal. And I hope you not come down the taxes. You will not get no peer based on the terms of reference. So if you not get no pay, why are you going to put yourself through all of this? For go to court, for go to get your own life, for one big name. Well, you know not belong to you. Don't do it. I'm telling you, Michelle Tolonil, 
Donna Chin and Peter Gracie. Yo. What did I say? Forewarned is to be what? Forearmed or something like that. We are telling her right now that pretty soon you won't, we're going, you're going to get that cease and desist letter. And <laughs> you continue to use the title, then problem. <laughs> By the way, I noticed that them kind of switch up the title, the name of the conference now. It means 10th Biannual Diaspora Conference. It's the name Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. <laughs> Shut them, it. Them, them, <laughs> them, I know they have to switch it up already. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Al Je Jeffrey, why you put up your LLC? You know what we tell you, C's and this is. You make sure you put up your LLC. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I know, no, no, no. I know. I, I, I want you to send me a C's and this is loan zone. <laughs> because I know you'll do it, you know. <laughs> I know you'll do it, you know. So I know you to send me a C's and this is. <laughs> so, here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to do a quick presentation and continue to put your donations inside there. The Lord loves a cheerful giver, and this is a really good reason to give. But what we're going to do open the phone lines because I know lots of people out there want to ask questions, right? Hold on there, Ratty. Ratty, hold on there. May I cut you, but may I cut you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're not good beggar, Ratty. You're not good beggar at all. Come on, people, give it up. <laughs> Um, I've Kevin, I've, I've Kevin punched the information in the, in the, in the kingdom, man, at the feed, man. Me not see it there. If I have a 20 minutes, I beg, we have beg tonight, you know. Um, I'm going to fling up the thing, you know. The, the other bottom, man. The other put bottom, on the feed. No, put it's on the feed. People want to see it. I beg, we have beg, you know. Yeah. Give it yeah. with love. Store it above. <laughs> Give it with a willing heart. <laughs> you know what? Hold on, Carlos. Go and tell the people them. Really. If you don't want him back again, if you don't want to move him, pay for him off. <laughs> I want to make him sing. I, 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 I want to pay for making him sing. But don't have a pay for it. Come again, Carlos. Come on, guys. Give it up. No, this is our move, guys. And what we tell guys about this um this um this thing that is coming up in New York next month, the tenth, May tenth. Guys, remember the politician has sent me no money, you know. And I said no bus. Then I said no t shirt with no money roll up in ice. We have to do it, take with bus, we play the train and we won sacrifice it means so much to us that we will sacrifice right we want things to change in jamaica and this foundation is the vehicle people for a change i don't see it i don't know it no politics over here right so guys come on give it up give it to it love store it above give it to it a willing heart <laughs> Lonesome, lo lo lonesome, you, you sing the other part, lonesome. You sing the other part, lonesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, <Andy. laughs> By the way, fireman, if you are here, me tune in. But let me show the people something. Take a peek. This is a quick presentation. All right, look at this, folks. 18 million gamble. This is my favorite minister, Kamina Johnson Smith, and the money when them spend to go uh, 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 um, uh, uh, Kigali, Rwanda. Right now, watch here. I'm going to show you something now. Hold on, then. Over 43 million spent mm. on a fuel campaign. What you know, what 43 million dollars Jamaican dollars could I do in a Jamaica? A lot, mm -hmm. a lot. We know that, but take a look at it. And I want you to look at this this letter, this letter campaign expense matter. I want you to look at this carefully. It's dated August 13, 2022. I remember I started asking who went because for that kind of money, you know, we want to find out who go. Now, here's who we know based on everything I've received so far. We know that the, the office of the prime minister sent seven people. Mm. Tourism ministry sent two. Right? That's nine. Mm. But remember now, them say it's like, what, 40 something million dollars total spent. So, we'll go through this and this is where we'll find don't write down yourself. Here it is, right? Here it is, right here. It says the other question relates to the large delegation from Jamaica that traveled to Rwanda where the critical vote was held. Johnson Smith was expected to win, and a large delegation was on hand to celebrate. This is the important part, right here. The, the large circuit. Because it, you, find, yeah. you find nine ratty. But them say large. This is what the people do in Jamaica. If you say large, tell me how much are the large. 
If right. you're 20 or 30, you can't sell large, but a nine alone. But, 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 it's more than that. It's more than that. I'll tell you what happened. Yes. Look what look at the next sentence. It said Jamaica's ambassador to the US, Audra Marx, was present. No, me said that as long as I'm saying, not my words. Okay, and so that is there. Yeah, but I, say, I am not sure what value Marx added. Mm. Marx was to replace Johnson, Johnson Smith as minister. Her presence must have been symbolic, right? So, what happened was, I start asking, on, asking, on, asking. On. Then we have Miss Sheila Monteith, the permanent secretary, former ambassador, permanent secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. I asked her for the information three times. Three times. First time, she ignored me. Second time, she said, oh, the names are in a document that cannot be released under the Access to Information Act. So I wrote her the third time and I said, look, lady, you, you, the, the information I'm asking for is not the document. I'm asking for the names. There's nothing confidential about a name like Kamina Johnson-Smith. So just give me the names. She didn't respond. So what do I do? I write her this letter here. And I send it to, I appeal to the tribunal. And people... What we need for the we need for I'm going to do another tutorial on the um the access to information act because we need to get up to speed with it. Um all right, see the upon this letter. Yeah. Um look at PSD you know. Um look upon this. All right, maybe I can see it. This paragraph here. This paragraph here that started, I am fully, I mm -hmm. say, I am fully convinced that Permanent Secretary Monteith is, is either deliberately acting to frustrate the purpose of the ATI Act or is supremely ignorant in comprehending the plain reading of the statute. And so some people that say, I style me, I style her, but sometimes you have to do them things if the people understand. So what happened? I filed it with the tribunal. And six days later, lo and behold, I get this letter here. This letter here. Um, this one here. Right. And that, here's what she said. Remember the glean? I said, Audrey Marks was there, you know. He yeah. said, Audrey Marks was neither part of the delegation, nor was she present. No. Anybody out there who have any pictures or have any knowledge of Ambassador Marks being in Kigali, June, um, I think, I think it was, yeah, June of 2022, please contact me because the ministry is saying she wasn't there. Here it is right here. Now, what the ministry also did was, them sent me a list. Um, them, here's the people who, who them said when, right? Big it up, yeah. First one, the Honorable Kamina Johnson Smith. Now, them couldn't give me the name the other day, you know, because them say it in a secret document, it in a document that them can't, them can't provide me with. But somehow, yeah. them give it to me now after my appeal to the tribunal. The next one is the High Commissioner to Nigeria. Third one is High Commissioner to South Africa. Fourth one is Assistant Director of the International Organizations Department. I don't know why she was there, Miss Lishan Salmon. Fifth one is somebody from the High Commission in London. The sixth one is Newton Harris, advisor to the minister. The seventh one is Carlton Masters, who's a special envoy to the Africa Union. And the last one is the minister's husband. Um, for those of us who for those of us who say that who would say that him not travel with her, he did travel with her too. So. Gali and them said that in PMW and Ambassador Carlton Masters PMW. So now <laughs> we have Lies. seven from the Prime Minister's office, two from the Ministry of Tourism, and we have six from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. So that's 15 people. Now, the question I have is how did 15 people end up spending? 400, what is it, 42 million, a total of 42 million, 25 for God. Yeah, 
for the tree. 1825, eh? right? What was that? 1825? Yeah. For the tree, that. Yeah. So I don't know how, how, uh, yeah, because she did get 18 and then spent 25 for the, so how 15 people, oh, uh, take out three are 18, even the 25. How, 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 some, how so much money spent on them people uh, to go to one conference for one week? So, how much, is a fee, how much people in our 15? 15 people. And by the way, so, two a, a two point of million that for each, you know. So, uh, for just a plane ticket and just go down there and come back. And, and get this a ticket to from Kingston to Kigali is about 2,500. No, we can't put the Prime Minister in a premium uh, economy so you put him in a in a business that i go run him like five grand and well, him why, him go do. Him did go? yeah him go mm. so him and him wife and then you have you have you have um minister bartlett so that's mm. three and everybody else can stay in a coach right mm. and coach is 2500 and, and business i believe is like five thousand or something like that you still don't get nowhere near that kind of money. There. All right. So, so we have to convert it then. So, we have to put it to 260 something thousand US. It's about right. 260 thousand US. 25, no, what, 25 million, 25 million and 160 thousand US, you know. Right. And right. then the next 18 is the next mm -hmm. 100 and something US. That's 200 US, 200 thousand US that, you know. Them right. Spending. For 280, yeah. Yes. 200,000 US. So when you say 5,000 for the prime, even if you say 5, 5,000 for them, or you end up spending 280,000 US. She, she did make some travel go Europe, um, go Africa before. Well, even if she go there, because we know she not pay so much for the ticket, or you spend 200, nearly 300,000 US. Oh. For those go there with the, and, and all of them not go the same place. Or they spend so much money. It does not work out. No. I also heard from a very reliable source that Minister Matthew, Sam Matthew Samuda was seen on the flight, the return flight. No, hmm. I, I said something to his ministry. I'm waiting for them to respond to me because if him go, we are going to have a problem. Because I asked, why, why did the environmental man go there? Because obviously, in retrospect, he no learn nothing. Because the public we still have water problem. We have the water problem from 2016. Them said them will fix the water problem. 2020, them said them will fix the water problem. In 2022, him left and go for environment. If if him, if he went, if he went, I'm waiting for them to respond now and tell me mm. if he went, we have a problem. We have a problem with some of them people that will go. Jamaican people don't understand why. Don't understand why minimum wage is thirteen thousand dollars. We don't understand why we don't have good healthcare system, why national security is falling down, why the education system is just basically non-existent. We don't realize water is a problem. We don't realize why? Because the money that should be spent to develop Jamaica, it's been spent on boondog like this. So, so let me ask you something, Ratty. Let me ask you something. So if this was a job for, for, for her benefit, not for Kafia benefiting her. She'll get the pay. She'll go live in a UK. And she'll, and she'll have to leave government completely. Right? Right, Rati? Yes. Good. So she'll get the pay for her benefit. And then she'll plan. Because she'll make plans on TV. When she come back, she'll know where she'll go do and everything. Now she feel, by the way, why should she pay about this money? Because it's a taxpayer's money. Why taxpayer's money fund this? And why people from the government are following up? Because... This was her benefit. For her personal benefit. And we, we, don't, we don't know. Why, why taxpayers want to pay this? Why? Well, I, I don't know. But the one thing I do know is that. Hold on there. One thing I do know is that the phone line is open right now. So, when you can call, we have the lovely Michelle Bowen here. Um, <laughs> respected attorney out of New York. We have Herb Nelson, the, our intelligence guru. We have Jamaican Carlos, the original chanter, the journalist from out of Florida. We have Patrick Beckford, the man, the stalwart in the in the community, and also a man of the cloth. We have Mr. Vumva Va Vumva V. We have, ah. we have, we have the, 
<laughs> so hold on there. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm, 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 is it that I'm a man of the cloth too? Okay. I'm ready. And, and then, hold on, and then we have <clears throat> mystic sensation, the sensation pan social media. Them are yes. Coming. We mm. not stop get compliments about them and I said, boy, you need to have them people on regular because they might dig up some things that were people. I open to remember so him and the man who bring out the St. Lucia thing, you know, with the DPP, how the DPP acted in St. Lucia, and then he make a comparison with how our DPP act. And him, last week he do a thing where we call unmasking the Prime Minister. We start show some some things about how when the Prime Minister started out, how much money him have, how much money him say him have, how much money him wife said him never have. And then <laughs> all of a sudden the man just take off like a racket, you know, a racket with money in a pocket, I guess. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, look at the first caller. Caller, welcome to Reason with Radigan. You have a distinguished panel here. Ask a question. Mr. Radigan, it's not a question. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you for calling. And thank All you for right. asking. Good night to your panelists and your students. Okay, you have a couple people in the um on your lives. They wishes to know how to um to make the donation. And you also have people from Jamaica asking the same question. So can you please advise them? All right, I will. Thank you so much for your call. Have a blessed night, sir. All right. All right. Well, that, is feed. that is feed right now. Yeah, it, yeah, not for the no, phone. no, it's the phone number that's in the feed. Now put up the banner over here, so so um, sorry, the, the, the QR code. But here's the thing we were supposed to have PayPal and Herb. What's what's the story on that? Because we have people from overseas, we have, yeah, we have, they, 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 overseas they, we have a problem with the site. So I sent it to Melly a while ago. I don't know if she's available. I'm gonna call her now as a follow up. But the answer. answer, the answer is right to go online to OJ. What is oh, it? God. One Jamaica Legal Defense Fund. OJLDF.org. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Or you can use your phone and say the QR code. Okay, right. So, right. So, the, the, the code. I want you open the open your um. Let's open your your camera. camera. And when you open the camera, that's what it over there, and it comes to us, and it take it, and then it just come up in the phone here. Yeah? Ah, the code, go. and yes, and the code now you just open the, the, the camera on your phone, just aim it, and it, it did just open it. Okay. All right. Press and open it. Yes. Uh, Carla, welcome to Reason with Ratigan. Um, you're looking <laughs> at the distinguished panel here, so fire away with your questions or your comments. Okay, I have a question. So. I know that we're all, you know, concerned about what's going on, but we have a bigger issue because water, uh, water st um, shortage in Jamaica is, it's not just like one parish, it's like the whole country. So there was a piece of land that was given in St. Anne's um, to the Chinese, um, which have the water, the water cable on it, the, the, you know, some of our water is coming from there. Yes. Um, and that's also part of the Marcus Garvey land and all that stuff. That's the land. How do we go about because for one, what I don't understand is how all these different lands are being given to all these different people, but we gen public never know about it until after it's done. Is it legal? Is it constitutional that they could just give away land without notifying the public? and for us to vote on it or have some input in it because they're giving away, how can you give away land with water? Water, water is something that we all need. We cannot do without water. It's oh. essential. For one, where I live, we used to have water coming from Lagood. So then they took us off Lagood and they put us onto Great River. So I ended up having to buy tanks to put on my house there in Jamaica. And I just don't understand how they're just moving willy nilly giving away property, and especially when it comes to natural resources, such as water, how do we go about getting that land back? How can we go about getting that land back? Because we need the water. This is not a negotiation of, oh, it's just a piece of land. No, it, if we don't have water, we cannot survive as a people. <clears throat> so how do we hold, we, we want to know which which under which um government was on the pmp or jlp and if so whoever it is that gave it back how can we go ahead and say and 
can we can this be deemed unconstitutional or illegal um, gifting of land without public input? All That's right. What, Thank the, that was one of the questions I was asked in the chat um, to ask to, um, to the lawyer before he left, because I know that we're dealing with everything else. But we're, yes, All right. it's wrong, everything that's going on. So I want to know, how can we get that land back All right. into, to benefit Jamaican people? All right. I need to know that that's more important right now. Because if we don't have the water, we won't be able to survive to fight all the other stuff that we need to fight. We All need right. to know about the water. All right. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Hang up now. You can listen to the responses. Sure. All right. Panel. All right. All right, make a response, Rati. First of all, Jamaica can really shout out water, you know. Just the government now do them thing. Just take Black River, for instance. It had turned the tree point two mile long, over three hundred and two feet deep, over a mile and something wide, and the whole of that water going into the sea. So if they uh, and then we have other river, you can just call all the rivers them. So I could just talk about the. The water first. So we're not short the water, you know. I wouldn't matter about your thing. If the government get up and start to do the right thing and you pipe up that and channel up the water the right way, we're not going to water no water. Jamaica does 144 mile long. The, the longest of 145 mile, you can just run it off. And like 50 mile wide. You understand? If me look on Siberia, Rati, and them have pipeline, we're going to go in, a, in, a, in a Europe, Europe with natural yeah. gases, thousands of miles. You can't pipe up Jamaican people have water instead of this big old black tank. That's a number well, one. Yeah, and we have no we have water waste to the sea. That's an well, no, well, well, land, we kick out the Chinese. But you know something they real. put in the manifesto that they were gonna pipe water from the north. Of course, them say they're gonna mm. pipe it and I know it's not pipe, them stop it. Cause them yeah. want brought it, it's a is a money making thing. You see them black tank, they one of the thousand gallon black tank over the guy who put it up at that that guy. I buy the way and get deep too, you know. We want to run him thing here, here, uh, the one with him I use for <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I want film thing, I wanna talk about him tomorrow. Is that a clip? Oh. Yes. Let me let, yes. hold on a second, like you want to hold yes. on there. Um <laughs> let me just run it by the panel by, by the panel that um anybody else wanna to respond to that? The question of yeah. what land with the water. I agree but, that Jamaica it doesn't have a water shortage. We are the land of wood and water. Question is what are uh, they doing with the water? Who have they given control of the water? Was it legally done? I agree with the, this woman's question that we need to look into the legality of the transfer of these lands and other assets of the nation. It doesn't belong to the government. We keep hearing that the government sold it. It's not theirs to sell. The, uh, these assets belong to the people of Jamaica. And these transactions take place under the cover of night, apparently, because we only hear about it after the fact. There needs to be an audit as yeah. to what is owned by China in Jamaica, what these transactions, what exactly occurred with some of these transactions, the cockpit country where the, the, the water table is, that they've given control over some of those lands to the Chinese. They're, they're giving away the nation's assets which do not belong to them and i believe i don't have the proof yet but we could investigate some of these transactions are in contravention to the constitution and some of these laws i remember when they were digging this big um harbor i believe it was in hannibal in falmouth How in much? violation of all the environmental laws they destroyed the coral reef and now we're hearing you know, complaints about the effects of that, the repercussions. But I I don't know. Maybe it's going to have to come from the diaspora. An audit needs to be conducted of these transactions, these de these decisions that were made that may not be legal. It may not be legal. Okay, Michelle, let, let me follow up on that. I'm, I'm from Falmouth, where the, um, the pier was built. But uh, Martha Bray River supplies most of the north coast water out of um which was the former capital of Trelawney, and they moved to Falmouth and that's why Falmouth had water before even Manhattan in the homes but <clears throat> what I'm saying is that we're looking at the the cockpit country and the Queen of Spain Valley is the water table that's a, uh, that 
um, the Martha Bray River and all other things. Um, the <clears throat> gypsum, all that stuff is in the cockpit country that they, against the NEA, National Environment, um, NEP protection, they allowed bauxite to go in Jamaica's Amazon. That's a cockpit country. That cockpit country has 1,500 endemic plant life mm -hmm. that would, would, would solve a lot of medicinal issues. And that one of the proposals that we had made as a Trelawney diaspora is to make it into a biomedical center against um, messing up. I, I compare Malaysia issue with bauxite to what is going to happen in a cockpit country. But let me leap forward to the main wish with the water. The hotels, which I think is apartheid introduction system to Jamaica. And when everybody saw Ed, Ed Bartlett is this, Ed Bartlett is selling out Jamaica left, right, and center. Jamaica has experienced so much heat since January because they're blocking the trade winds that make us cool. So they're building a big vault in Jamaica because all around the coast is circled by these monstrosities they call hotel all-inclusive. And here's the apartheid part that is happening. 90% of the workforce in the hotels are low-level workers for Jamaica who receives minimum wage. When you go there, talk to the people. Most of them, with the thirteen or fifteen thousand dollars that works for six months out of the year, what they do is that most of them will tell you they pay three hundred dollars a day for, for for taxi to go back and forth to work, and they may have a two thousand, three thousand. And they, this guy is going around talking about ninety nine percent of the money that they make of tourism stays in the United States because all your bookings happen. And so we can't get the water because it's go to the hotels. We can't even get to go cool off on the beach because security has stopped it from going to the beach. So that is a new apartheid system that they're creating under the guise of tourism and which does not do anything. I know of in Kingston, I have some people that um, in my program that are in Kingston they have to catch water in Kingston because cool. every every day water is gone in, in different parts of Kingston. So guess what happened? Those guys are making the money and going to pay, man. Yeah, but uh, they're destroying the country. And the <laughs> environment. And the environment. <laughs> most, yeah, most importantly. Yeah. And, more, and the recipients, the people are benefiting. Well, it's the country of China. I We were talking about giving it over to Boxer, but it's Chinese companies. Yep. Um, and Mexico. Are they giving the country to China? China and owns Mexico. River Falls. And Mexico. Because yeah, I, I went into Falmouth in January and I see a whole bunch of people talking Spanish. And I said, wait a minute, what is this? So, oh, yeah, they, they, they're moving and they, the hotels will house them in big house. And like 20 of them live in a house and everything. And they, they these guys, entertainment managers, are from Spanish speaking North Americans. Yep. Yes. Actually, who they are mostly Spanish. They don't know anything. Our people are just, you know, yeah. white the table. North Coast yeah. is, is, is filled with squatter communities. And of course, these hotels are being built. They get the, the cheap labor from the Jamaican people, they give them nowhere to live. And we end up with these communities. And then the crime, the proliferation of crime in those communities creates a problem. But this is not a surprise. We've known about this for a long time. And the government is, you know, turning a blind eye. Well, it's not the government only. I, I, I think as, a, as, as tomorrow is my busy day, um, but I think the church um, forget their mission. It was a church's um, pre-slavery that um fight against um um colonialism that's true because, because they believe you know micah 6 verse 8 says what does the lord require of you justice kindness and humility and mm -hmm. yes we don't have that the churches are silent they're more into the 
eat a food, um, collect the big thing and tell the women them what they can wear and all that stuff and no, no, and all, uh, all that stuff. And uh, that may be true, and that is true, but the, the, the responsibility for providing housing, um, jobs, that's the government. And we're not letting them off the hook. Yes, the church is supposed to do good in the community, but that's not the church's primary responsibility. That's not the church's responsibility. No, the church, the, the, Jesus, Jesus, my dear, fight against all those systems. Absolutely. Leaders. Absolutely. But the, the government... And they should do it. Hold on one second. Hold on one second, folks. Let me just take this call. Mystic, I see you. Hold on one second. Carla, good night. Welcome to Reasons Ratigan. Yeah, Ratigan. Yeah, good night to you and the panel. Very yes. educated panel. I'm watching you. But I have a question here. In St. Thomas, you have a place them called Ramble. That's up when you go, you cut off um, a yellow sister and go up in the mountain. Well, let me say, um, supply the whole of Jamea, um, Kingston and St. Andrew in water. How come St. Thomas don't have water? That's a question. The bypass St. Thomas, the water to Kingston. <laughs> because that place Kingston up in Ramble, like St. Andrew and Kingston, right across it with water. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how come St. Thomas have water problem? Let so me ask you, like where are you calling from? Right where are you calling from? Hello? Yes, yes, I'm here. You, you're calling from Jamaica? No, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm living in state, but I go to Jamaica like 13 times okay. a year. Come here, no, I, I didn't look. There. No, I didn't look at it because I was going to ask you, have you spoken to the community leaders? Have you spoken to the MP? Yeah, I, yeah, because I do a couple of things for St. Thomas, like um, Golden Grove Primary, and I also plan to do something for um, St. Thomas to Ecolize School. And mm -hmm. even the child, they will try to contact me for to link up with them and tell them, say, no, I'm not you know, doing with politics. I can't wheel them some one time and complain about them. So I don't have nothing to do with them. Okay. All you right, so we'll have to look into that. We have herb herb tea here, you know. So we'll have herb tea to some deep dive search and figure out what's going on. Over. We know we're going in a center, too. Yes, because, because, you because know, we're going in a center, right? Because them, you know, the water and send it, send it yes. inside. Yes, yes. So, all right, my brother. Keep contact with you guys. All right, take care of yourself. All right, yeah, man. All right, all right. Yes. Mystic, yeah, the yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, um, yes, Rati. Um, as it relates to um, the lady, um, the lady's concern um, regarding land distribution um, um, issue, right? Um, you know, off the bat, as it relates to, you know, um, Jamaica, um, sort of utilizing what we call more of a service economy. A service economy will never change our economic reality as it relates to we are currently um, doing like as it relates to our importation cost, we are talking about over five billion um, for importation, and uh, we are talking about just a little bit over one billion for um, hold on, hold on. Um, export. Now, having said that, I don't want to um, divert from what um, mm -hmm. the land distribution is. So we are going back to the land distribution. I'm not only talking about the service economy. Why it seems like Jamaica is utilizing as opposed to dealing with some real sense of manufacturing, you understand, to grow our economy. So that being said, now when we look at the land distribution, we have seen that most of our lands, as it relates to, and you see, it goes back to the politics of exclusion, right, as it relates to Jamaica Labour Party, you understand, in connection with capitalism, under the political philosophy. Now when you look on the politics of inclusion as opposed to the politics of inclusion, more of a democratic socialism with Michael Manley, dealing with, you understand, um, owning, owning okay. homes at the NHT, oh, right? right? That was the drive um, for Michael Manley, dealing with democratic socialism. However, when you look on the Jamaica Labour Party, over the years of politics that they practice via um, capitalism, you will realize that it is a politics that's just drive to benefit the elite. Now, let us use an example like, and I have, uh, you know, I, I, we and Lone Sum and uh, myself, Carlos, uh, we have, and um, Jeffrey, we have, we, have, we, have, we have spoken about this from time to time as it relates to, um, particularly in St. Thomas, where we have our pernal charts, right? And um, the land issues there. Now, look, the fact of the matter as it relates to 
land distribution when we talk about a government that pay for its people, right? Persons who have the knowledge as it relates to the processing of land and how you own your land, these politicians, they take advantage of the information and as opposed to helping people for persons who occupied land over 10, 15, 20 years, right? And to put them in the situation of, be, of becoming an of becoming ownership, what they do, they take advantage. You understand? They are the same one. You understand as it relates to, you understand, their voting block. The very same people that have been voting for them for years, right? They are the one being abused. They are the one who paying in NHT contributors. And guess what? They are not being benefited. Look at what JLP had done as it relates to um, Nigel Clark and Andrew Holness. When you take the NHT money and you give it to Dexim, right? And what Dexim done with it? You understand? These things are, are currency. These things are currency. So when you look at the Jamaica Labour Party and the issue goes to show that the politics of exclusion, you understand, the politics of elitism, the politics of capitalism, that is what being executed. And so then this is this is what gives us the reason in terms of, you know, not, I, I'm not bringing politics here, but guess what? Every single people in the world life builds on politics because guess what? It is a political decision who is going to have to make a decision in terms of how you move through life as it relates to upward mobility. Yeah. So politics need to be studied, right? And politics, you understand, need to provide an avenue, you understand, mm -hmm. for growth. So when we have our when we have our um political um electors right not seeking on our behalf the history is just clear to show you know, if you study the history as it relates to from when we gain independence moving out from 1962 moving out of colonialism right you're finding that the neo-colonialists you understand execute themselves through capitalism which mm -hmm. Jamaica Labour party is a part of People just need to speak the truth and bear in history that is the only step. And so then every time that People's National Party move um, one step ahead, Jamaica Labour Party carry the country two steps backwards. Amen. And it's evident. Right? So that is my take um, on it. And, 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 and it should be as it relates to what the lady concerned about. You understand? As it relates to some form of constitutionality. As it relates to protect people who fits on land for over 10, 15, 20 years, right? Because there are avenues where those persons can be converted to become landowner. Why they are not becoming landowner as opposed to politician, you understand, just utilize the information, kick them off of the land, mm -hmm. you understand, to their elite friend. It is not fair. And this is what the Jamaica Labour Party executed most of the time. The issue goes to show. So I am not, I am not, going to be weary in terms of my political pathway. You understand? I'm a democratic socialist. You understand? I don't hesitate in saying that. You understand? I'm a manlyites. I don't hesitate to say that. And I'm saying it for a reason, for the political philosophy. You understand? That drives equity. You understand? Throughout mm -hmm. Jamaica, as it relates to Michael Manley. So that is, where, that is where I stand. And we have evidence to prove that. You understand? To show that. You understand the Jamaica Labour Party, the politics of exclusion. No two be about it. No two be about it. When you look, when you look and see how many damage, how many damage that Andrew Oles government had done in the history of our political profit. No other prime minister, you understand, has done what this government has done. They, they totally neglect the people. So that is my take. Mm. Hey, can we get a swipe off by the ratty? <laughs> yeah, go, go, go. Can we get a swipe off by the um bless up um everybody again. Now um regard to the lead we called already about the land. We do several videos on it in a ratty. Make a fair sense so the North South Highway, them give the Chinese twelve hundred acre. Then another seven hundred and forty acre down sent on with Marcus Garvey name a um a call on it like the lady say, and it got water on it. So my take is why these why we have to pay them in our land. Plus, we give them toll in our road. Then we 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 um the tax break. Then the duty free imports. Then 
the 50 year concession, 30 years over everybody else. You understand me? I say, why is it we are planting these people on the island? And one of the biggest things, uh, Ratty, is the legality behind this. Is there a way we can file some lawsuit? We might want to talk to Mr. Wildman. Fuck up that stuff. But see what's going on, Ratty? But that they do not be the pandas, you know? How them just, just willingly to take the land and give it, and we don't know nothing as a people. When our forefathers fought for those lands, bones are scattered all over them sugar plantations everywhere in Jamaica. How is it? We want to do something right there. Look into that. We need to legality. All right. Anybody else want to make a comment on that? Lonesome. Yeah. My comment is since we have um, oh, no. Yeah, right. No, go ahead, Michelle. Right. Go ahead. Okay. Since we have three um, people on the panel here tonight that have their own social media platforms, I am going. One suggestion is to help to raise money for the Legal Defense Fund on your platforms, um, because it's going to take money to do anything. We can't do anything without money. Um, secondly, I appreciate the comments of I forgot his name now, the couple that's on on tonight. But I think that some of it may be idealistic because we don't, Michael Manley is long gone. And the truth of the matter is that both parties are not corrupt. I agree. I'm not disagreeing with anything that um, has been alleged, the actions of this administration. But I, I don't have much confidence in the other party either because it seems as though People just wait their turn to take advantage of the system. So maybe that's why the opposition has not been opposing much because they're waiting their turn. I don't know. I grew up in a household where one parent was JLP and one was PNP and I was not old enough to vote when I left Jamaica. So I don't have any political affiliation. What I am saying is what I observe that the corruption runs deep in both parties. And I'm sure there are some good politicians who are honest. Um, I don't know who they are, but they've got to be some. But our situation right now, I don't believe is gonna be solved by either party. I don't. The confidence is not there because when the PNP is in power, I don't see much improvement either. Maybe they weren't as bad, but what is, I wanna see the evidence of, of, of fixing what needs to be fixed. So I don't want this to disintegrate into a political thing because what we're here for is, is Jamaica. I, that doesn't mean we excuse or not call people out, but I don't believe that the answer is just the other political party. That's just but, 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 but with due difference, Ratty. Um, what, 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 hold what, on a second, what? Patrick. Hold on a second, okay. Patrick. Hold on a point. Jeffrey, go ahead. About the the lands and um they're giving the lands to the Chinese. If we do our history, our research, the two political parties assign deals when it comes on to the roads for land saga. In other words, what they did for Jamaica to cut back in some of the, uh, the debt, some of the expenditure when it comes on to paying for the roads, they give the Chinese lands the two party have been doing it but what we what we are seeing now in this administration is appalling this prime minister has the lands department under his watch hmm. under his watch and that is why you hear a sort of land saga between the wife and citizens of the country no up to a couple of days ago, a young man who bought a piece of land in Clarendon from the sugar company of Jamaica through the NHD. He came on my program was talking about it. And he's saying that he can't get his land title. He paid off for the lands already. And when he called NHD, NHD is saying that the sugar company of Jamaica hasn't handed over the land to them. Yeah. So it begs to ask the question, how is it that the NHT is selling lands? That they're not, they're not the owner for the land. Yet the Prime Minister of Jamaica, the great 
Andrew Michael Progard Holness. <laughs> Went God. over to Clifton. <laughs> Bulldozer down people houses in Clifton. And in no time, he went back over there and retruck everything. Give them house and give them land title. It begs to ask the question, is the Prime Minister of Jamaica holding the Jamaican people in Jamaica and Jamaicans in the diaspora who are buying lands in Jamaica? Or is, is he he's holding them hostage? The people have been paying their taxes. And when the guy went to the, to, to, to the tax department to pay his taxes, I said to them, so listen to me. I can't pay no more because I don't have my land title. The people in the tax department say they have to pay it. There are so many people losing their lands in Jamaica under this prime minister than the other prime minister in the history of this country. But it comes down to the watershed. There is some things going on in there that the people of Jamaica should know what is going on and speak the truth. Of what is going on there is so much thing going on where when it comes on to, to the land where we have water on it oh the chinese get your neck they're sending water back to china so when he comes around with the charade of talking about how much how much you know make sure that people have water and the charade of the um the manifest of the labor parties damn nonsense Bloody nonsense. And it's full time the people of this country stand up and call a spade a spade. And stop this damn PNP and JLP stupidness in this country. And wake up and smell the coffee. So what you're going to do your program? Ratty, 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 Ratty okay. what, what, let, 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 let me just say something. As, yeah, as a... Okay, as a student um, of uh, politics and and theology and everything that it is. Um, I think it's naive on a lot of folks to say about party or, or this or whatever. Because what happened in, in the real democracies, it's always one side or the other. And if you, we, we can, we're speaking from the Jamaican context, but if we looked internationally, we have the same give and take with politicians. I'm Jamaican, born and grown in one place in called Falma Trelawney, and, and lived politics um, as a young man. And my, my, my brothers who talk about the thing, I lived in a situation where I had to go to Kingston to high school as a young man because there was no high school in my parish after 10 years of independence with a, with a particular political party who did not believe in the social justice and the, 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 the equality that God made us all as in his own image. So everybody and with our, with our own um, image of God in, in how we look and the brain and the power to do things. So sometimes I think when people said both parties do this, but we got as as previous speaker people says, we gotta call a spade a spade. When so, it comes to the educational advancement of Jamaica for the local people, it is nobody can we can debate this that one particular party emphasizing education housing and the basic needs of people one go for which is a democratic socialism as i grew up under one was for a certain class of people it surprises me when they're calling the leader of the opposition massa because that was their party growing up in the 60s 70s in jamaica that was their party the massa party but what I'm just saying is that we can't just look with it at tunnel vision. In America right now, right now we're in a flux where we where I live because we have a, a, a person who is defined as a rapist by a, a judge. You know, hopefully could be because of racism and classism and money could be um, leader of our country. 
So, I mean, when we compare the, it's what happened in Jamaica, we know one is like on the other side and one has done more good. So to equalize them and say both do, it's human beings. Ulysses Grant said, show me a politician who becomes rich while in office. And I show you a crook. crook. Um, mm -hmm. the, 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 the gentleman, the, 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 the couple from uh, from Canada who, who talked about one prime minister, one person, I'm um, saying at 47 million, and, and the wife said, Demid Brock, Demid almost have a, a, a wedding where everybody have to come and, and buy a food and all that stuff. And uh, like, I mean, and, and here we have person who's listed, I was told that he's one of the richest person in the world as leader of a country where people can get water. People, there's nothing minimum wage is like <laughs> pittance. We have apartheid system in the hotel where they hire people six months. And he started this all by saying, we don't have enough professionals in Jamaica, trade people. And so they start to invest, invest. And I have people in Jamaica you now who go to these hotel and these construction sites and have to teach their supervisors how to do stuff. Yet we are saying we don't have. So we, you know, so what I what I'm saying is that sometimes revolution is necessary. And the man who I serve, it was a revolutionist, although the, the, the Bible don't um kind of give it to it and we 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 brought up on this system where we believe that Jesus was a peaceful man a man a peaceful when he might turn over tables and sit down with prostitutes and reason with them and all that stuff and so that is what is happening our system our system we need when people need to get up stand up according to Bible Mali and stand up for the right the churches are silent I'm a, I'm a, I'm a practicing person in the church but the churches in Jamaica is nauseating for me. You understand? The civil society groups sit down quietly. Even though, I mean, I, I, it was so refreshing to listen to a practicing attorney in Jamaica came up and was so candid and talked about the thing. The law, the, the, the legal fraternity, you know, you have a minister of whatever constitution and justice. Oh my God you know <laughs> yeah don't let me go because i know the history of, of some of these people i worked with her and i realized that you know she has this false accent she's harvard trained you know when you check it out and the resume is something that i did you know in sleeping technically because they have these programs so you know what happened what we got to do is just stand up and say all of us believe in jamaica moving forward but if we start to point fingers and blame this one, we had to weed out the, the, the dandelions from the grass. You know, and there's a lot of dandelions in our grass around here. So you got to weed them out. You know, right. it's hard to get them out because that's it. That's one of the, 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 it's pretty and it's hard to get them out. But we have to spend time and dig them out and get, let the grass grow, which is the All massive. Right. Let me bring in man in the wilderness here. Yes, man. Yes, man. Man in the wilderness, make, make a speak. All right, cool. All right. I just hear the lawyer. Nice lady. Yes. She just said both parties and some other things. But no, both parties are not the same. But for the stock, kind of clubs are clubs. Both parties are not the same. Agree with your loan, son. Yes. She leave for a longer time, so she don't know. My grandmother was a, my father, mother was a Boston man to people. My father is a Michael man to people. You know, and mom. And tell you the truth, if you weigh up in you know, every every administration, you just call them out and tell me which one of them in a PMP take over 1,500 acre people and in a center mass or anywhere else. Or go on and, and do all these kind of things. Which in a in a in a PMP and them are two different completely, two different things. And you know, your whole government accountable. And we don't don't make the mistake and say the two of them are people because we can just call them out one one and the amount of money chop right now we have like one one point seven trillion dollar we don't know it's been we have billions of dollars missing right now everybody rich big house the panel we are look pan they are not the same them paying money nearly four hundred million for some place with them now them they will take over yet and when you ask them they are hide behind these things they are not the same you have one of them go for education and all kind of things. They're the rest to PR stunt. 
And that's the truth. You can just call them out as a minister and you hear them name and, and tell me on the other side, which name you can call out on the other side, run it to it. He was an education minister, what him do? But we can't call out an education minister and look for them, do me you don't your trouble, Zion. Anybody trouble the kids, their money, should have, hey, them should have, them should have get a hundred years. Because, man, look on our look on our health system, and all kind of thing, we cannot compare them. You understand, and, and book for all government accountable, and speak truth to power. Sometimes when you leave Jamaica, you know, and you know, they are Jamaica for your time, you might just stay outside and they, and might just say, well, they told them the thing, told them a thief, but, but you feel just wait up. Call each of these ministers and tell me what a party are doing, how much money missing and how much. This party and your own is government are the worst in the history of Jamaica. And right now, I carry down the one party. And that's the truth. We not color code nothing. Him not take so, time. He moving like a pharaoh. So we don't color code nothing. And I remember when you color code thing, you don't go mash up Jamaica, by the way. And, uh, you know, we're not there for color code nothing at all. So like a mystic sensation say we're not color code nothing you know jeffrey respect you know ma'am for your you know your speech but we know what we know because we got through it right there you know a lot of people them leave for a longer time and things two of them come up but call much people can imagine one party you have to move how much they move the other day um ratigan more than eight of them corruption remember them not going away you know the old speaker in a in a any who shall speak of before ever move it you say get care and get concession for much money by Benz. I forgot to buy Benz. I forgot to do something. <laughs> and hear them name in a thing. How much people from a petrol jam gone to prison for these things? How much people you hear from um, from the education ministry? Uh, five years. And I know no case to try. Five years. I remember them use all the money, you know. That batch, you can get $30,000. Take her and draw money how much million. You see the corruption front of you. We don't, we not, we not, we not color code things around here. None, none at all. We a few of them accountable and anybody coming back. Can I remember, you know, over the years, you have politicians change, right? But we not color code not around here because when you color code and let them go, it's not bad. We are all government accountable. It has to change. In a, in a, in a 2007 to 2012, they mash up the place. IMF never get no pay. And then the government come in and have it, bow, they set it back. And what them do, them destroy it again. And that's the truth. It had the truth. We can't cut a quote it. We can't let go Anjo. But what am I do? You understand? And then we're through the clique. We know another clique. Because them help mash up this, you know. Another little poor man. See them have a quote port. The government come and spend over two billion pan an airport, a quote port me it. In a St. Mary. <laughs> and right now, I oh know them not lock up nobody. You notice this part? Them not lock up people, you know. Pan them side. Not here, what it's wrong. And we don't say the two of them are the same thing because they are not. And we have to speak truth to power. You understand? And that's my saying. Respect um mystic. But we speak Big to power. Yeah. Yes. Big up a talk. Big up a lonesome. Um big up a because I really want to you see, um, and you know, with um our well learned friend the lawyer, right? Um I respect um your views, but I you know honestly beg to differ. Now, when I talk about, for any person who inserted the idea that both parties are the same as it relates to corruption. Now, let us use our critical thinking skills on these questions that I'm going to ask. Jamaica criminal justice system served Jamaica. And for persons who inserted that both parties are corrupted, indirectly, they are saying that the criminal justice system support one side of the political aisle. Let me say why I say that. When we ask the question, how many politicians, as it relates to the Jamaica Labour Party, been persecuted over the years from 1962 until now on the GLP side? Let us ask that question. Let us all be truthful on the panel tonight. Right? You're going to get an influx of them more than more than more than eight of them that I can that, uh, that I can name. Now let us ask the very same question tonight on the panel. Let us tackle this. How many PNP 
politician being prosecuted? Let us ask that. Now, how many of us, right, were told that People's National Party caused things up? When I dig into the WikiLeaks information and reveal the, um, the, um, the WikiLeaks info, um, information, let me tell you what revealed um, my well-learned well well, well friend. Dan Craft, right, who was the pioneer in terms of giving away people money, you understand, without any security, had loaned, had, had given Edward Siaga over $31 million. Dan Crawford and Edward Philip John Siaga, Carl Spencer. But what was the rumor? What was the rumor then? The rumor was PNP Carl Spencer. Was that true? No. No. It was not true. No. Then, when you look at the situation that we are dealing with, right, as it relates to SSM, right, as it relates to all of the problems that we are having, right, when you look and see where SSL sprung from, right? Now, they should have been aware as it relates to the um, FSC, the Financial Service Commission, what flagged SSL from 2016, right? Nigel Clark was aware. Andrew Wallace had this account in um, SSL. SSL was a Ponzi scheme. And the Prime Minister allowed himself to be a part of that. But then, when you compare all these things, you understand the level of corruption, right? That GLP had participated in, right? From Siaga comes straight down. Can anyone point and let us let us let us let us match as it relates to leadership in those times? Can anyone point and Michael Manley? You understand pilfering with the treasury indirectly? Not Can anyone point Michael Manley? Not but not say. Siaga, as it relates to the thirty-one billion dollars that was given to Siaga. Let us move up the ladder. Right, we don't look and see what been happening. Right, the fact of the matter, the criminal justice system in Jamaica, the judiciary system, has not processed anyone from the People's National Party to find them guilty. Let us ask the question: Why that is? So that is a question for the well-learned um, friend to answer. So that is my team. All right, um, um, Mystic. One more yes, thing. Yes, um, yes. One more thing. When them um go off uh, Azan and them say it was a corrupted, say it's exactly. a fraud here. It was not corruption, but look at the kind of corruption when them call corruption. When them go off for uh, Arton, that are the um mayor in a Hanover, them say one three point seven million dollars shall give our family them them nepotism and cronyism. Look what them doing right now. Them that are go because that was no corruption either. But exactly. money miss left, right, and center. Nobody going to prison. None. Look at that. And people okay. want to wear. You have a minister in the place from 1982. I have it. I have it right here. I have it. From 1982, 1,500 acres of people, them land gone at St. Thomas. Don't come from St. Thomas. Plus some other land gone over 2,000 acres and gone. You know. One dollar per 1, 1.5 acre. One dollar. And by 1994, and kids them in put on it. You know him of it. And them continue doing this thing, them come back doing the same thing. You can't say two parties and come up. Then call me, me like call all these people name who are who come up like ministers and everything. And what where they move it with the people and everything. You understand? What want to do it? Compare it. Come just compare it and you see it for all yourself. Right. I want it, to it, it, not go wrong. Can't go wrong. Right, we are holding my phone to me this time. Yes, yes, right. Right. yeah, but I'm jump in and say that where we where, where we where we where I want to shift the focus to corruption, right? Corruption and the so called illicit six. We say six, but the annual report last year from the Integrity Commission. I think it said like eight or nine and about 25 civil servants. And I know that two, two politicians right now, they have cases before the court or the halfway tree. Now, and that is um, um, Philibert 
Dalrymple, Philibert, and the former junior minister in the in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. What here's a question I want to pose to the panel. The Integrity Commission submitted a report this week. Five reports. And we haven't heard anything. The statute says that once the submissions have been made, then they should be tabled as soon as possible. It doesn't give a time period and say, well, it's you know, next day or... But within the convention of tabling these reports, usually happens within a few days. I think they were submitted when Wednesday. Can anybody correct me? Or guide me? Was it Wednesday? Yeah, two, they days, two days ago, yes. Two days ago. Mm. When, uh, when somewhere around here, yeah, All somewhere right. around here, last year. No. What if the this this um the speaker? No. Yeah, before I ask a question, keep in mind that tomorrow they have a mm. big meeting at Belmont Road. We don't know what that meeting is about. People mm. speculate, say the prime minister can resign. I'm going to fire people. I'm going to do this. I'm going to. We, we don't know. We don't, we don't know for sure. We're only speculating. But let's say that the reports have not been tabled come a week from now. What, what should we, we collectively, as diasporans, what should we be doing in terms of, can we talk about holding government accountable? And this would be perfect. And you hear what Mr. Mr. Wildman said, him said, the whole of we have standing. If you are Jamaican, it no matter where you live, you have standing for bring an action in Jamaica. So let me just go around the, the, the loop and find out what should we be doing if we don't if we don't hear from the from the from the speaker regarding the five that have been the five the five reports that have been submitted a few days ago. Let me start with Mystic Sensation. What, what, what should we be doing? Well, um, look, we know um, this government as it relates to, you know, the master of suppression, right? And, you know, um, all sorts of delay tactics that they can be, um, that they are going to utilize. But again, I think that for us as a people, where we have seen that you know, and I, I, I know what you said. I'm not drifting from from your question, but uh, I just want to add this as well. When we have a prime minister of a country, right, going three years, statutory declaration cannot be verified. Let us let us let us let us throw away the politics from out of the room. Three years cannot be verified. Not only that it cannot be verified, they had given him time to bring forth document to justify the variances that the Integrity Commission is looking on. Come on, people. I do audit. And I work for some of the major company, right, in Canada. Some of the biggest retail company in the world. And when we do an audit and we see variances, Right, we try to understand how those variances exist. Let us not fool ourselves. The prime minister, the prime minister, had more than adequate time to at least present that document or present some substance to say, okay, all right, this was the reason. The prime minister chose not to do so, but to go down the route of delay tactics right and obviously it is playing out now i am saying here is that we have a situation that is very serious now if the prime minister people i want people to understand this if the prime minister statutory declaration cannot be verified you know what that means people let me tell you what that means it's simply mm -hmm. that the prime minister lied on his statutory declaration let me ask this question again now. Sorry. The Prime Minister lied on his statutory declaration. His plain clause there under the Integrity Commission Act, um, Ratigan, 
where the prime minister should be charged? Yes. Yes. You can, I just want. I just want people. I, 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 and when people talking about um this and that and so forth and blah 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 blah, we are talking about what is in front of our eyes now. And I'm asking these questions. The Prime Minister statutory declaration going three years cannot be certified. Cannot be certified. It simply means that the Prime Minister lied to the Integrity Commission. And if the Prime Minister lied to the Integrity Commission, the Prime Minister ought to be charged. Now, let me ask another question. It is clear for the DPP to see. It is clear for the corruption prosecutor to see. Why not execute the law? As it is embedded. What are they waiting on? So then here we are now, right? The Integrity Commission, right? Recently sent over five reports anticipating, right? Um, the um direct owners, you understand, to have it stable, right? I can tell you, Rati, what is going to happen. You understand mm -hmm. the utilization of certain um the tactics, but now let me answer your question. If we are seeing that the utilization of delay tactics being utilized, I think in any democratic country, right, as it relates to the process of our democracy, people, right, should physically take a march. You understand? Social media, you understand, should be lit up. You understand? And demand, demand that something be um, being done something being done. No, we're going to have, because Mongolia, look at it, look at it. It just seems like there are two different laws, one for Mongolia and one for um, that serve um, Andrew Ones, right? But if we should convert the situation and put Mongolia in this situation and Mongolia statutory declaration, three, three years of Mongolia statutory declaration, you understand, cannot be certified. You know what would happen? It will be judgment. So then, why? We don't use the same law to deal with Andrew Ones. Right? Why we don't use the same law to deal with Andrew Ones? People, let me say this. I am not here to say that the People's National Party has no corruption. I would be totally disingenuous if I say that. That's not my point. Of my um my conversation the point of my conversation is that the level of corruption right that entrench into the jamaica labor party it becomes it becomes a culture as it relates to jamaica labor party and it is not it is not it is not it is no lie so then to insert that both parties are corrupted then you have to go and define that to me right and that's this is the issue that we have where the Prime Minister clear the breach, lied to the Integrity Commission, and all now the Prime Minister can be charged. Now, is the DPP making move to deal with that situation? Right? And so then we have to ask these questions. Is this really a civilized democracy or this is a banana republic? This to me appears to be a banana republic. Right? Where we have the person, the per Who's supposed to take the example? The person who's at the helm, the helm of our political process. Who's supposed to set example? Look what we have, people. Let me tell you, let me remind you what you have. You have a prime minister, along with his 48 members of parliament, decided not to sign the code of conduct. Why is that? Let us ask the question. Why was that? And yet, Mark Golden, right? And all the persons on Mark Golden's side. Kind of code of conduct. Right? It is night and day. Night and day. So why is that? That one set of law just used, you understand, to deal with the process of the, um, um, the People's National Party and one set just deal with the process of the Jamaica Labour Party appears to me. Right? Because Andrew Ones can do these things and get away with it. Get away with it. Right, Andrew Hornets can push back even when you have the constitution 
You understand? Laws being embedded in the Constitution. Andrew Holness clearly used in 48. You understand, member? And tried to amend laws. To do what? To benefit himself. To appease himself. And we sit here and saying that both parties are the same. That is disingenuous, man. That is disingenuous. Right. Let me show you something. The Acts for it. This is the uh, Integrity Commission Act of 2017. And you were saying if there is a section in it about people who file, who submit uh, false filing. Now, I'm of the opinion that the punishment is too light because we need to hold all of our public servants accountable at the highest level. There is a, there is a, there is a certain amount of trust that we put in them. And when they violate that trust, we have to make we have to make examples out of them. And here's what it says here. A person who knowingly makes a false statement, as you're saying that you believe the Prime Minister did, in a statutory declaration, commits an offence and is liable on summary conv conviction in a parish court to a fine not exceeding $2 million. To me... That's too light, Ratty. <laughs> eh? That's too light. That's what I'm saying. That's or to a term of imprisonment not exceeding two years and the court may make such order as it thinks fit. Now, here is where I have a problem now. Here's where I have a problem. When you remember, do you remember the last question I asked Mr. Wildman? Very last question. I asked him if there's one thing that you could do to change the judiciary, what would it be? And he didn't answer. All right? And for good reason. And and yeah, if I go and I said to him, said, you know what, just leave it. Because you know, I, I can I could see you know him thinking like, Lord God, so much things wrong with this thing that we never know where to start. This is one of the reasons why these things happen, because the punishment is too light. The punishment too light. You know, if you go and have a prime minister who cannot get his statutory declarations verified by the very agency that he caused to come into effect in 2017. Then what message does that send? Two years, going on three years, you're waiting for a statutory declaration? Let me add something to you, Ratty. So yeah. um, the in-house trading, we never talk about the in-house trading. Which prime minister in the history of Jamaica ever do in-house trading and nobody moved to him? In a pandemic, because him go and lock down him, him, him account, you know, in a SSL. By the way, FSC, me notice them, they get overpaid to them in a way. Them are grab money. I'll be a corruption all over the place, brother. But FSC, here's the thing. FSC, themselves, the they're supposed to regulate but, but, yeah. and grab money to. No, but here's a question I ask. Here's a question I ask, and it's still, it's yeah. still open, which is, what do we do? What, what does the collective do? What should we do? If we, if, if, you know, next week we'll find out, say, well, you know, next week come on, we don't get a report. The reports are not tabled. What do we do? That's why you just, you, you say, you, know, you, just, you just say, you know, people want to do it for real, you know, want to do it. Make we take some drastic action against them because we're well serious out here. But exactly. they're telling you $10, even $5 each. That's where yeah. I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'm going. Yeah. We should develop a no nonsense team. And what the no nonsense team is, if they we we should decide that. If by two days, by the middle of next week, they well, don't do we get, it, we get signatures and we file a damn thing in the courts. Simple. Not, but yeah, man. But, but that, is the court. that, that is where I'm going to the question. So, so, trying to get people in the chat and people listening that we need the support. Because mm -hmm. we can look, the problems have been identified many times over. In fact, some of the problems you, you, you at home, you in the listening audience, the viewing audience, you know them before. Sometimes we even come out and talk about them. You know. But the question is, what are we doing? And what we are committed to doing in the diaspora is to take action. It's not enough to identify the problem and ventilate the problem 
and talk about who this, who that. We have to start. We take money to care. We tell them the truth. We take money to care. We don't want to attack them, 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 but we need the funds. Donate. Donate. It's we money to matter. Like, you see the quiet assassin up top the next day. Herb T. Uh, I'm ready, man. Herb, <laughs> Herb, oh, Herb, T, Herb, T, Herb T has been working on some files. Right? And, Maraki, I'm going to ask all the legal luminaries a question. Yeah, this is bothering me. And it goes back to 2020. It happened in the United States, where the United States dollar was connect, collected and went to Jamaica and misappropriated because we cannot do it. Can somebody research that to see what is or are our legal steps that we can take to challenge the government of Jamaica and whoever we can put it at the, 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 the uneasy like lays ahead that we are the crown, put it on the head of the government to say we are for filing a legal process for you to tell us, give us, give us an accounting of where that 300 and plus thousand US dollars um, was collected inside these United States for charity, for purchasing or whatever designated to do that. And we have not received any accounting. Because if Uncle Sam decides to use his powers, and like what I do with Russia and seize assets from left, right, and center from Putin to him, Pussy. We probably should need to take because right now it, it, it forget the forget the, the language. It's <laughs> I was gonna say the P word, but it annoys the hell out of me that people in the charitable thing and their concern and patriotism for a country collected with even sh shaggy almost uh, and pissed off and everything, mm -hmm. lend them talent. And we don't know where one dollar gone. Let me say something now, Patrick. All of the people who have access right now to our cell phone, or you have access to your computer, go to ojldf.org and make a donation. Or use the QR code and get into the system and make a donation. It is very important that we do this to help not only ourselves in terms of approaching the government what we help people back home now think about this the certain government officials were provided with more than and i'm being told it's more than three hundred thousand us dollars in 2021 to mm -hmm. buy ppes no I'll, I'll 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 say this because i haven't said it before thank you thank you candy max to the um coquiches just go to uh see the, to the to the qr code up top there or you say they visit ojldf.org color seminar no for big me a big one me a big one no me a big one <laughs> put them look how much on there three thousand devices still attached after so many hours put a money in other thing put a money in other thing listen people come in on 2021 i want to give them three on three hundred and something thousand dollars on to give them and we don't know how the money go. <laughs> and we are trying to find out how it go now, Rocky. We don't know how it go. Let me say something. You know me, though? Because I get my inspiration at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. And that's why the people in Jamaica, the ministry people, when them see my ATI is coming, them say 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. I know them say, the brother is not alive. Because <laughs> with things like when they middle of the night and things like that. When they come in the morning, they see it. But you know, I asked them about this money, I know. From last year, October, I asked them and I review my things this week. And you know, one person, the ministry will get where we believe get the money there. You know, them ask me, they must define PPEs. Peace, peace on everyone, according to them. You know something, Raji? You know something, yeah. Raji? I heard Patrick said something a while ago, you know. And I sit here and I listen to Patrick speak. Patrick, I think it's time for us 
who have first hand about this money to bring the American government involved in this thing? Well, well on the Jeffrey. Well on there. When I go back and I look and I see the person say, please define PPEs. Me know some type of jokes that them type of media because them are them are, them are play with me now. So you know me do go back. I'm missing off another ATI this week. I'm gonna make them know say, listen, I from active woman not play with me, you know. And what I got up now is that me say me I go in a certain amount of time now, and then me I go go straight to the tribunal. And because the way the process works is if you go court, they're gonna throw it out because I must say you have to go to the tribunal, you have to exhaust your administrative remedies. So you have to go through that first. Then if you don't get any result, then you move on. But I can tell you that. As far as ATI is concerned, I've been getting good results recently. In fact, just in I got a response from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade in less than 24 hours. Less than I put up the thing at 2 o'clock in the morning, 2 a.m. And by before 5 p.m. I got I got an answer. And I've been getting answers. So we just want to big up the people who are responding to my ATIs. And I hope you realize say. If you don't answer, me I go still send my ATIs. I'm going to go to the tribunal. I'm going to write some nasty letter about it. But people, donate. This is a worthy cause. This is a cause when you can actually see actions being taken. We have two lawsuits pending right now. One at the Court of Appeal. Right? And we have one, another one, where a certain minister mentioned some things and described some people and now... You know, as my friend Tigo would have said, don't make your mouth say certain things where your ba 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 your posterior can you know can <laughs> clash. So yeah, That's so easy word. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so we have we have that going. We have herb T have the two reports going, and we need more reports from the people so we can come to you and we can go to the authorities, including the FBI, and say this is what we have on them corrupt politicians there. So we need to do something about it. Right, the protest it takes money to matter. The protest in New York, please you know, come out and support it. We want to make it as big as possible. So, we are called from people from all over the country, particularly the people in the tri state area, who don't have no reason not to come because people from Florida fly come, people from, from in the Midwest are come, people from out west are come. So, only they one hour by train anywhere you live. Because I'm not need that central. Anywhere you know, live, Brooklyn, Brock, Brooklyn, Queens, man, uh, Brooklyn, Queens, um, Staten Island, and the Bronx is one or white or taken a maximum for reach a 42nd Street and Second Avenue. You know, come out and let our voices be heard. Because all I want you know who can get in a passport, you know, come out so that we can real pan that. And by the way, we are going to have free um, placards out there. Well, you no can't write up anything you don't want to write up. You can't bring your own placard, but don't bring anything um, distasteful because, you know, we want to keep it clean. We want, because we don't want the, the, the protest to be tainted by, you know, nastiness or lewdness or something like that. We want to come out there and make nice, but make nice in a decent manner so that them can hear. And then when we say make nice in a decent manner, we want the international press for cover it. And they're going to dead it. We know they're going to dead it. Right? Because we're going to load up the thing. So please donate. The thing open. Say the QR code up right. top right over Carlos. And say the, the website down below. We were hoping to get all I know with overseas. Don't make the money burn a pocket. Burn a hole now in a pocket. Because the, the, the no. QR. Yeah, the, the thing Tell that they are. Doing it PayPal. now. Right now we know. PayPal we have. Herb just mentioned one well, to the people. There was some there's some issues with it on the email or some things. I saw that today, but that will be rectified next week. But Bratty, right now, Bratty, Bratty, don't right move. Now don't move. Bratty, don't move. Herb, just too much them are doing it because we have to talk to them, you know. Me not just want Bratty just take him say please donate. Just look if them are doing it. Now make what can big up. And if you're not doing it, just put in the name and say wanna donate and we'll be good now. Just do that right, through right, right, right. 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 now. Do right. 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 so right. so right. 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 right.
Um, the t-shirts are we all sell it at the thing there. Uh, the, um, yes, big up yourself, Mystic. The t-shirt are there uh, for sale at the location. But Cynthia B said every time somebody talk when them finish, make sure to them talk about the donation too. So it shouldn't be just me alone. Me a big one. Call us on my son. Me a big one. My people, me a big one. Send our money come so we can fight the good fight. Bye 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 no one don't need, but we can't do the IG. Yeah. Um, something the more I want people I want to name them. That may I tell you. That may I tell you. Look here. Look here straight. Listen, listen Rati. We have to come back onto this again. It's when this one, want, people want to do it yeah. and they want to pay pal and then Zell and the and, and cash up. I saw you go. We have Zell. We have Zell. So. We have Zell. But yeah, Zell, but no, England. England. She can't use Zell. You know, you use Zell at England. No, PayPal. Zell, 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 PayPal. The PayPal was supposed to be operational today, but what happened is that we have an issue. We have a technology issue. We mm. will rectify it by next week. So listen, my my English friend, don't make the pound burn a hole in your pocket. Don't spend the money there. <laughs> Put the money down in your mattress. Uh, because next week we are going, you are going, we are going to need it. You are going to need to send it, and we are going to need to receive right. it. So right, right? so next week, all right, yeah, we're going to do now. The PayPal are ready by in the week. So next week, you get it, you send it. What you're going to do, you're going to make it up. It's like good fat on the phone round. Just make it up with the phone yeah, round then, because this week and next week, can okay, can send this week one next week, you know, you have to put on next week one panic, no, you know, this week. Exactly. Right. Yes, you have to be a salesman, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what about right, right, cool. this week? I forgot to put on a little something panic for next week. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So the Zell number, the people for the Zell, see the QR code right next to Carlos there and the, the website there below. If you go to the website, it would you go in, it will it would take you straight to it so you can it see. Does, huh? And see the QR code right up next to use your phone. See the QR code, QR code right next to Carlos there. So, um, Jeffrey, you'd want to say something. What do you want to say? So I, I, I was saying that what um, By the way, it's what we should yes, do it's then. Right. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Yeah. What we should do then, if 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 we're not getting any um any headway with this thing pertaining to the money, Patrick. Put you into the money that was sent to the to Jamaica. I think what we need to do is send a letter to the Prime Minister's office and say, listen, oh. if we can't get an answer from you, put you into this 300 or something thousand US dollars was sent to Jamaica during the coronavirus saga or whatever pandemic. We are going to take this to the American government. And I think people who is aware of it should speak out. Well, one gentleman resigned from the health fund and as an, <laughs> as an advisor because I spoke with him and he was he was bewildered um, to a point where um, he was directed and he and it and and he did a little radio interview with Erwin Chair that he was directed by the minister of um, the referee at. at, at AKA is known as the Minister of Finance, um, the red card man, to say that um, the money should be put in the consolidated fund and he couldn't get it back. And some money going, if, if, I, I grew up in a civics for young Jamaica and, and the consolidated fund was one thing, it says we, all taxes and revenue for the government goes into that. That's his donated money. So yeah, mixed mm. apples and orange there. God, thank God me, me grew up in the 70s, you know, where, where the greatest leader for me and my national hero was leading Jamaica. So we learned what it was stuff. But he they, they couldn't, he couldn't, and because there was an impasse between him and all that stuff, because we spoke directly, because I was, and um the former had um well. She owed it to us because she, now since we all um, GJDC, then she's obligated to us as a former officer to report to us what happened, what transpired. That is uh, Karen and 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 Michelle, 
advise um who were members of the global jamaica diaspora council that they call it and everything so when you join up something that be aware what you join up because when a lawyer but me know common sense if you say you're a part of this and you advocate all over and say you, you're 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 the leader so now an easy lies ahead that we are the crown because now you have to get up and and provide to the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council that the money was collected under at that time. So where give us an accounting of where this money went. Did we buy one P, uh, two P, or one E? Nothing like that was brought. And the, 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 the chairman then of the, told me that nothing, the money was not spent. And that's why, you know, I just get up and like we rat to me wake up early in the morning time and sometimes the, the computer start go busy and say, wait, blah, 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 what about this and X, Y, Z? And so that is what happened. So, you know, I think if, if we look at the organi the, 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 the 501c3 now, money was collected under our name because it's our name, it's legal and it was in operation illegally but we corrected it but because in the correction we discovered xyz you understand to become legal so help us the irs or state department or whatever to sort this out look that's what just, i want uh, the donation right before you move <laughs> let me just show you the bedroom you can't see it him uh, saying want the cash up okay him can't see it cash up and well, a lady just well, come and look a while and she said she donate and she want to make a next donation. She want to make a next donation. Right. Me, me, and, me, and me, people, no, hear this. Want me to come, Jeffrey? Hear this. We just have, you need to have 3,000 on. We sit down here, man. Get real now, man. And I'm got 15 donations come in at $880. Come on, I'm going to do better than this. 15 out of 3,000 um, devices. Yeah. Now let me down now, man. We not let down the man of the wilderness. No, we let down the red, the, the rebel and the renegade, you know. And the work we on the herb tea and Jeffrey and Carlos and my, my, I'm, I'm, I'm mystic sensation, you know, our family the same way. Am I am I learned Virginia, you know? What you can do with this man? Fifteen. But, may I say something here? Yes. May I say yes, something yes. here? Yeah. It, it is easy. It is so easy to go to ojldf.org. And donate. It is easy. I just did it a while ago. It's a very easy thing to do. I All just right. did it a while ago. So just go, really let's go to Google. Easy. Go to Google and type in ojldf.org and it goes straight to the website. It is right. easy yeah. to do. People you missed some yeah, right, right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It, it is that user friendly, um, Jeffrey. So you're right with that because we we had we had done it. Yeah, listen, folks, um, and those of you in the audience listening, we get a tip off that you've got two politicians traveling overseas and doing banking in another country. <laughs> now, normally we get. A uh, report done on an individual, you can pay anywhere from fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred US. But when you have somebody who's mobile like that, now they have to get somebody on the ground to verify that they're there. They're going to be uh, scanning the entire area with electronics to try and pick up cell phone trails and all kind of trails. Now, an operation like that, you run up the bill. So we can't afford to do it because we just don't have that deep pockets. Sometimes they can, if they have a parallel investigation going on, I can convince them, hey, just punch in the numbers, the phone numbers, and tell me what you see. Right? That's all I need is to verify that they're there. All right. I'm trying to get things done, but again, we are we are hampered because we just don't have deep pockets. Let, let me let me just jump in and answer something, Herb, to, to all the people. Again, may I reach out to Put five dollars, ten dollars. By the way, 
the, um, the site accept credit card. I don't know how many of you have credit cards. I want to make a credit card donation, but you can. But here's what I want to tell you. It, most of the money going into Jamaica, right, as, 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 as uh, donation grants or loans, they go through a clearinghouse called PIOJ, Planning Institute of Jamaica. Them set up all of the programs, them and stuff. Sometimes they need to apply for the loans and things like that for Jamaica. When we asked them the other day for all of the records from 2020, 2020, 2021, 2022, they came back and said, we don't have no records. We don't have any records. And I wrote them back and said, it's amazing how you don't have any records, but you put out an annual report. So where you get information from for the annual report? They wrote me back and said, okay, we have the records. But you have to go pay for the records. Say, all right. Long story short, we'll pay for the record. Them say, oh, we need special paper. And we need this and we need that. So here's what happened now. Here's where we are right now. They sent me some of the records, the financial records, by email. And then I had somebody go pick up the special paper. One of them. And by the way, there's nothing special about the paper. But them, them, my virgin go and pick up the special paper one and I received it last week Sunday. Last week Sunday I received it. Now, if you recall, Jamaica received um, loans totaling 700 and, about 750 million from the IDB, the IMF and the World Bank in 2022, I believe. 21, 22, yes. Yeah, so it's oh the 22 statements. Yes. I look on it, I don't see them loans there. I don't see them money there. Tell me something too. The 31 million, where she get from the, the, the president, the vice president, where the money, where the, where the, where the money got? So here's what happened. 4.5 billion, 4.5 billion, 5 billion dollars. So here's why I'm saying it. But that can't too. Yeah, here's why I'm saying it. I'm saying it now because we have a forensic accountant. Mm who we're going to have to employ to look into these matters. It's a, it's a whole heap of records. We need money for do something like that. We need money for find out where the money go. Sure. We need money for find out where the money go. And you see, the more you make a contribution to something like... And by the way, when you contribute to the One Jamaica Legal Defense Foundation, you're, 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 you're contributing for, to a worthy cause, but also to a registered organization that has to file a tax report with the IRS and also the state. We're not talking about no fly-by-night thing with a, a movement, what them call one Jamaica Legal Defense Foundation, where money go in and money come out and money reach a Jamaica and nobody know what to the money. Every cent that comes into the one Jamaica Legal Defense Foundation will be accounted for. Every single cent. And we're going to put out an annual report so people can go and look and see how much money was made and how the money was spent. That simple. So, 750 million went last in, um, in 2021, I believe, to help the poor people and the business community. And poor people, they never get the money. Most of them never get the money. And then no one can pay back that money, don't it? It's a loan. They have to pay it back. So, so we want to know where the money is. Right. Well, well, what we are telling you is yes. that it's not going to take a lot of money if we find out, if we put our blood on them on the trail and figure out where the money is going on. But it's going to take some money for, to get that done. It's not going to take 750 million. It won't take a million. It won't take a hundred thousand. But it's going to take some money to follow the money and see where we go. And while we're doing that, keep in mind that we're also trying to leverage our relationships with people. So that certain things that we can do, we don't really have to pay for them. We are trying to leverage our relationships. But keep in mind, you can't go to the well too often. You can't go to the well too often. Right? You can't go to somebody and keep on ask for favors, favors. At some point, they must say, well, we need our money. Because, I, like, for example, for example, I can get anybody out there who wants a criminal history from somebody in, the, in, the, in America. I can get that for you within two hours. Because of a leverage relationship with several people. But you don't want to misuse it. So from time to time, you have to 
you have to you have to drop something. Now, when you drop something, that something that you drop will be recorded with the organization saying, "Hey, I paid this person at this point in time for this report." And then we also have the report, so we can back it up because where we are, we are prepared to be audited. We are prepared to be audited. We don't just let go money so I not do this and I do that. So we have two thousand nine hundred and fourteen devices tuned in. So I have to estimate that to be about three thousand people. So, so, so that's in a move. Come here, I'm showing you something. I saw more to the move. See, this is Junior. She just doing it one hundred and twenty US. See, Tano. And see, I can't. They got you more to not see it. So okay. Can't see it. Use now. a credit card. And, and by the way, when you use a credit card, let me just be, let me just make a credit card. Out. She use, you know. Yeah. When you use a credit card, yes, we don't keep that information. That information is with the bank. We don't yes, have no credit card. Card. Make sure card. Of that. I make sure of that. Let me see it. Them know. See there? One twenty. Who can tap this now? You see, though, if you come out with talk and she do $120, but I say five and ten. You don't come out now, man. And well, I run out now, play with me. Well. Don't do that, man. But I say, who can top this? I said it comes to me, let me show it up. Who can top hey. this? This are just one. Hey. Can top it. Yes. We're going to do this again, you know. We're going to do this again, you know. I see next time, people. Look here. We're going to make sure we have. Every everything to catch your money. I'll make sure they have the 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 the, the um, PayPal up, the cash app up. To be I make sure and the people. If you open a tech, me own a two by four and beat me. They gonna make sure my ratty. They gonna panic. I don't want. They gonna do this again. Cause we can't stop. Cause we gonna need the money to to handle where and, to handle people. And yeah, and, and, and 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 we're asking every single one. Every single soul on this platform here tonight, Wayne, Patrick, Herb, Mystic, they already do it. Um, Carlos, Ratty, donate, donate right now. Let us be the example. Let us no. be the oh, example. Jeff, 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 I'm 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 Put up your money, Jeffrey. Put up your money, Jeffrey. Put up your money. Hold on there. Hold on Let us be the example. We're we're here asking for donation. We on the panel must give. Yeah, man, that, that, that's not nothing, Jeffrey. What are you talking about, Jeffrey? All right, hold on. <laughs> hold on, listen to this. <laughs> ah. Alive, you know, I said before that was wrong. But the corrupt and top Jamaican is cause of national murder. Name mm -hmm. you have no standing. <laughs> <laughs> the following is a public service announcement. <laughs> <laughs>
the Diaspora Crime Intervention and Prevention Task Force and One Jamaica Legal Defense Foundation invite Jamaican patriots and friends in the tri-state area to the second staging of a call to action. Meet us on Friday, May 10th, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Jamaica's Consulate, located at 300 East 42nd Street, Corner 2nd Avenue in Manhattan. That's a call to action for Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica who are seeking the best solutions for Jamaica. May 10th at 9 a.m. at the Jamaican Consulate at 42nd Street and 2nd Avenue. Listen to Reason with Radigan Saturdays at 3 p.m. on Reggae Global Radio and YouTube for updates. Thousands and thousands, right? Um, listen, people, we're gonna have 20 donations, 1025. There are somebody just said, Fe, but when you can't put the Zell number, I mean, what's it up yes, but somebody type in the Zell number for me because see it, they might ask the Zell number. So, we want to see what do we to come on them top the thing. Oh, okay. Just type yeah, in the Zell number, right? The pin the Zell number, pin the Zell, the pin it, tell the producer, pin, pin it. Number. Tell us the police have pinned the zell. Where there? Kevin. Pinned the zell. Put up the zell, Kevin. Kevin. Please and thanks. Hey, the, the, Kevin, the, please and thanks. Actually, the email is the zell. One jam leg deaf. Um, no. The, the, if you put in like a, a number, then just type in the number and it come up. That it'll come up. Yeah, but but they, they put in the email to so can't work to arm um, win. Yeah. You know me, no man. I think so. so I mean, I mean, that's what you're saying because apparently the mm. number is easier for them. Hmm. Yeah, them are that, you, know, you know, some people... Come on, people, donate, yes. donate, no, donate. It is, them, it is not for us. It is, it, it, it is not for us. It is for you. It is for to help them. Right. The corruption and going on in the country. See, donate, that, donate, yeah. donate, hey, donate, hey, donate, donate, donate as much as you can. Come here, come here, come here, come Look here again. So one more come in at $50. What happened? Come the man. See there, 50 All right, see there? You see them, Matty? Can them ask, you know, when we tell them, send them a move, you know. Come on, man. Who are top the one? 50 this, you know. Right, you go say five. Go, you see, but people, I'm going to put a 50 and a 120. Who can't have the 120? I said, it can't show me. Can't show me now. Right away. Right, we're not playing around here, you know, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll try to find the, um, Somebody asked me for the, um, somebody asked me for the, uh, the flyer. But Kevin, Kevin, dig off left me. So, you want the, the, the flyer? Yeah. Where they want it? They want it. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. What are you talking about? You mean for, for the protest or what? Yeah. You can drop it. Call us up. Oh. Okay, you can, you can screen, drop yeah? it up there. Drop it up there. Um, Jeffrey. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just remember the place. Yeah, somebody for the email is this L. Some yeah. Marie Lizzie said she just trying to hold the LDF for the payment not going through. Uh, just Marie Lizzie, number for me, man. Just to yeah. everything. Make them use that, but just make it simple. Put the, the, the email, put the number. So you have some people feel more comfortable. Just put all of them. Everything where you have, put it out. Put the number, put the email. We have this up here, so we have, so we have everything yeah. up here. And, and somebody, yeah, what we are going to do, and I think Jeffrey mentioned it. Um, I think, I think you mentioned it last week to Lonesome. Um, all of the family members them who are the blogging business and I try to inform Jamaicans and I try to keep the government accountable. We're going to put up this thing here. We're going to put up the QR code. We're going to start with the massive advertisement for the One Jamaica Legal Defense Foundation as well as the protest. We have to do yes. the protest. And the yeah, t-shirt should be ready. We're working uh, on this. Nice design for New York. Nice design. Hey, hey, no, hey, no, hey, no, hey, no, look here again. Look See, right. see one more coming. See that? What may I tell you? I'm sitting around here. I'm going to play with me around here. Now. Well, yes, here we are. Come on, man. Right. Don't forget to know people. Yes. Oh, no. Not at the Florida one that you have, Jeffrey. We are talking about the one for New York. The one. Yes. I never get that one. See it in the chat. It's in the, it the chat. It's in the um, call to action chat. Oh, right. let me look for it. So, yes. see, see they, people that are kicking more and more. Hey, listen, my man. The man in the wilderness attack, man. Come and send in the thing and make me soon attack the thing, man. Send it in, man. So you see them are coming in. And then tomorrow night. Come in, tomorrow um, night. We're going to do, do it all over again tomorrow night. Of course. 
the town hall program. Yes. So he might have, have the flyer and he might have the video. Yes. And he might have, have the video. You have, and the flyer. You have it. Yeah, Jesus. I think I have to draw up in them, but I forgot to. Yes. And all of you who, who all of you, including panelists who make the who, who make the donation tonight, big up on yourself. Much appreciated because this is for us. When we say us, as a people, yes, this is for Jamaicans, whether you live abroad or you live at home, this is for all of us because we are. Let me tell you right now, the government are watch this you now because we have them supporters and you know we have them trolls and we have all them people are watch what are going and believe me, them are quaking at them boots because they never <laughs> see. A phenomenon like this, they never see anything like this. They don't know how we take with them, take with them name, take with them logo, and now we are. But well, on, what may I ask them something though? Are we living in a diaspora? Because they, you, you live in a Jamaica, you want to stay there and rule with. We know, you know, you know, children, man. No, but they are not exactly like them. Them for India, crazy, them crazy, man. Eh? but you're the problem now. Yeah, exactly, I'm crazy. You're the biggest problem. Them can't run the country, but they want to come run the diaspora. That yeah, makes that sense. Dance a yard before you dance abroad. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, 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 yeah, but you know that, can't think about you going to launch out. Them can't manage Jamaica. And they might they go extend themselves and say, no, we want to manage the diaspora. But what right. you know, all of them say we're not understanding. Them tell us, so. We put in the yeah, thing and they say, I'm not standing. No. My, my, my lawyer brethren called me from UK today. And he said to me, Sir Ratty, he said, um, you know, Lonesome, I think you, you should talk to Ratty and talk to the, you know, the whole family. And one of you people should go down and represent and listen what they're saying. Go run it. I said, no, we don't want to talk to nobody. Who want to dissect them? <laughs> because if you go down there and then start, no, but tell him straight, you know, sir. <laughs> talk to me, me and I foolishness. Who want you? What am I saying? I don't want them to come tell me something. Thing soon, you know. Yeah. Her, 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 a bad man, you know. Her, her up down there. I said to her, I said to the people, I'm say, well, you know, Herb is on a travel status. Her up down there with him bulletproof, yes, and Herb said, I'm in Swallow Field. Herb tell the people, I'm with. 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 Little young police about him up and say, eh? <laughs> Let them say, I argue your ticket. Hey, no, do not need no. Then I say, eh, I don't even business, I argue your ticket. Them ticket him, man. Them yeah, don't push him. See one more come in and I'll take care. Yeah, Herb never afraid for you in whereabouts. Herb tell the people in there. See me tap, show me. Well, I'm well, not well, 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 people. Well, I'm the ratty. Look how me tap the 120 now. I'm a sit string from UK. Look how me tap the 120 now. 150 this, you know. Look, so we are looking because we only we have come yes, up at about you see it. I'm gonna start big up, Colleen. Big up yourself. Let me start, you know, let me start, you know, me start, you know, me start big up some people because me have tapped some things. I know, you know, see, me have tapped some things, you know, see there, eh? yeah, man. So we tap that, we get a 120 there, so um, and you send 120, but Colleen come tap you, you know, what 150. Who want to Colleen now? Not missing <laughs> cousin, our own friend, our own neighbor, I forgot to tap her now. No, I was still come on. Watch it. Come here, I'm getting some things here. Look here. See it? All right. So my virgin Albert does donate $50. See it? You sure on a $150? No, uh, Albert, you must say, should I see that $50? Yeah. So him just donate $50. See? All right. So them are kicking me out to see what tap. The 150 car <laughs> and just the 120. So you don't say tender. Uh -uh. Oh, by the way, no man, I will and it's a car me out. You know, we are gonna tap the 150 there tonight. And by the way, by the way, more people for understand, say, even after the smart and session at midnight in a less than an hour, with the pan relax with the rebel and we're gonna ask the donation over this or two. All right, <laughs> we're gonna relax with the rebel for two hours. From all right, 12 all right, Rocky. Mm -hmm. Sorry to disturb you. Look in your thing. I share the screen, but you have to you have to send it into it. You see it? Looking what? Oh, we see it. See, oh yes, yeah. Tita. All right. See, Tita people. Let me read it. Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica, let's raise our voices in protest against corruption, the big C, crime, poverty, failed healthcare, 
poor education, etc. in Jamaica. Join us for this historic event on May 10th, 2024 from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Jamaican Consulate located at 300 East 42nd Street and that's in New York City. See it right there, so. Thanks, Jeffrey. Big up yourself. All right. I could just close off your now, cause now I'm going to have about a half hour to jump on and relax with the rebel. So, um, Jeffrey, give me a talk now I could, before we walk <laughs> out there. All right. Um, my fellow Jamaicans, both home and abroad, I'm not going to be a politician tonight. So, uh, Mystic Sensation and his wife can say, oh, you know what? We're not going to see political speech. Anyway, <laughs> I just want to say, you know, it, 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 it's, 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 I was saying to my wife a couple of days ago and some friends of mine in Jamaica that I did not know that the day when I called a very good friend of mine who lives in London, he's now in Jamaica, holding some big position down there. I said, I want, I want Wilfred Rattigan number because he was on a program. I want to come on my program. And he gave me the number. I did not know that when I got Wilfred Rattigan number and he came on my program with a chatting and talking about Jamaica and whatever. And when Will said to me, Jeffrey, I want to start a YouTube channel. I want to start a, a program. You know, I said, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. Cut long story short, what I'm trying to say, I didn't know that this would lead to something where we're here fighting for the greater cause of Jamaica. We're here fighting for a country that we dearly love. When you have the senior person of all of them, of all of us on this platform, who will send messages in the hours of the morning, I will call you and say, listen to me, we need to do this or we need to do that, or we, we need to go to a different platform to, 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 to make sure everything is secure and whatever. And I speak none other than Mr. Herb Nelson Jr. I lift my hat to Herb, and it's, it, it, it's a ride that only God can put us together. It's only God who made this is happening. And for those out there who believe that it's not the supreme being that allow all of us to come together, many of us have met each other as yet. I have met Wayne as yet. I have met Herb as yet. I have met um, Patrick. I have met... Um, Mrs. Sensation, I've met Carlos, I've met Ratty, I've met um, Rupert. And when God brings all of us together and, and, and speaking in one voice and one accord, for us to try and uplift in the nation that we solely love, for us to try and bring back a country from the brink of being the next Haiti of the Caribbean. They may call us the dirty 30. They may call us the gang of five. Whatever they want to call us. They may say that, you know, there's no heroes even in the park. Sure. But we're, we're in here for one cause. I don't look, I'm not looking at the political paper for anybody. Nor do I want to get the order of old donkey or old jackass or whatever they want to call it. I would love to see my country be the country that I grew up to hear that my parents talk about back in the days. And to see a brighter future for our fellow, for our fellow Jamaicans. To see a country where our people can stand up and say, yes, this is the Singapore of the Caribbean. There's absolutely nowhere, no way, in 2024, this year will be 62 years old and our people don't have water in their pipes. Sure. We're 62 years old. And majority of Jamaicans are crying out for the basic thing as water. And I will say this, and I know my friend Ray not going to agree with me, but the two parties failed us when it comes down to the water system in our country. They have failed us. And the time has come for all of us, whether we are P or whether we are this or whatever, to stand up for one cause and one cause only. 
is to rally around a country and to rally around a single cause and a single purpose that this nation of ours that we dearly love rally around the ojldf.org donate 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 give whatever you can it's not for my pocket it's really not for Wilfred Rodigan pocket and there will be a, 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 an account present to you of how the money is being spent if you want to hear it if you, if you want to get a, a um an accounting of it donate 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 a lot of people may call me off air and say boy you're really doing the Tavares family at this at a displeasure. I really don't care what you want to say, you know. I know what I stand for. And I stand for one thing. The country that I dearly love. And I love my country. When we were born, we never born a member of the People's National Party or a member of the Jamaica Labour Party. We were born as one Jamaican. We were born a member, a, a citizen of Jamaica. So let's come together. Put a, what, 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 if, even if we're paying for a JLP, we still can come together and fight for the cause. Fight for a cause. Fight for a better Jamaica. I yield back to Mr. Rattigan. Thank you very much, Jeffrey. Very powerful remarks. Much appreciated. Patrick, lead we out. Yeah, my, my, my thing is that I hope everybody goes and celebrate um, the big person upstairs. I said mother, father, because I'm of the belief that God is asexual and, um, you know, recognize. I think for me, God is more motherly because he takes care of all of us and everything. So, but the wish is that and like you all i'm very passionate about jamaica because i recognize everywhere i go uh, my accent i don't know what some people say i sound like trinidadian or Bayesian. I, I i find that but um i probably represent jamaica everywhere i go um from the religious to the um senior citizen slash nursing home um, um business that i'm involved with in a voluntary basis i am also a pastoral care um, person for my um place of worship so i meet people from all walks and over but funny enough i am jamaican living here for 40 plus years but i still consider myself jamaican and that's where my passion is because that's where my you know i when went into college um in kingston at a young age and i was impressed by the founder of um kindergarten frederick frobo a german who said the father is a, the child is the father of the man and that's my thing because my childhood was in jamaica in the town of falmouth and I learned from that, and I, because that was what guides me now, will always contribute to Jamaica in whatever way it can, and I'm passionate about it. And you know, proudly, like everybody would probably think, my political leaning, I'm proud of it because I see the changes as a youth in Jamaica after six, ten years of independence. Um, led by the person I considered my personal hero, other than Christ, is Michael Manley. So I'm proud and 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 <laughs> unflattering supporter and and person that loves that person for what he has done. So I'm out. Be good and blessings. All right. Thank you, sir. Jamaican Carlos. Yes, Virgin and Virgin and sister in there, so. Bless up every man that's on that platform. Bless up every man that's on that voice. Bless up everybody in the audience, because we are nothing without a big platform. We can't be big without only the comment section, you know. I own not do it. So I recognize the people in the comment section, all the supporters. Thank you guys for sticking with us and believing in the, in the change. 
Because when we start out on this journey, it wasn't easy. People cuss out and say, with that boy, I go, you're so fierce, you're rude in our manners. Because people never used to anybody are looking at his phone and are talking at it and talk truth to power. So we come a long way. As we start looking at the comment section, and we start to the comments, them change. We don't stop. We still are burning fire from day one till now. And if I get hotter, we see man like Jeffrey Tavares jumping. We see man like a mystic sensation and his wife come in. We see Ratigan come in. Look here. And so many others. And the work have to go on, people. Do not forget. Don't forget to donate. Don't forget me tent, people. Don't forget those things. And we'll come back next week. You know? And you know, for my platform, I always put that in and plug that in. So right. thanks, everybody here tonight for your time. Enough love. Everybody else. Respect. All right, my brother. Mm. Stick, you know? All right. Um, thank you, um, Rati. Um, well said, um, Jeffrey. Um, well said, um, um, Carlos and Patrick as well. You know, but what tonight reflects, right, are all of us speaking with one voice. What that one voice measures is that good governance. And what is good governance? The transparency of a government, right, that has to deal with checks, balance, and transparency. Tonight, we have witnessed, as it relates to many things that have gone wrong with the country, as it relates to that good governance that we seek, that we all seek. But most importantly, we are here in terms of having a mechanism, having a pushback, having a resistance, which is the one Jamaica Legal Defense Fund. And we all galvanize around this to utilize it, right? In saying that enough is enough. And as Jeffrey once, as, as Jeffrey previously said, that it has to be the hands of God who gathered us together to speak out. I know that one of the pioneers of this situation as it relates to speaking out is no other than we and lonesome, right? Um, several times before I even um, became a part of um, having a channel, we and lonesome has been there, the man in the wilderness beating the information from God he knows when. But here today, we have so many branches, right? We have seen um, a Jeffrey, we have seen a Jamaican Carlos, we have seen a Mystic Sensation, we have seen a Ratigan, we have seen a Patrick Beckford, Herb Nelson, and Big Up Yourself. Mm -hmm. But just look at it. One seed that plant of a firm tree that have many branches today, here we are fighting the cause of our people because we want justice. So let me end in saying that we all need to understand the importance of having this mechanism to stand up and fight and defend our people. And we need the capital injection to support that. So know that we have a resistance to say enough is enough. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, ooh, uh, Herbie, Herb yeah. T. Yes, uh, I'm, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm taking it all in because who would have thought that when we started out, we would have grown together and we're still growing and we got all good people in on this fight and that we can look out for each other. Um, it, it's a proud moment to say the least. And now to see who we can go after. I don't think there's no name person in Jamaica we can go after. Right? We've got so much support. And this, this thing of me looking and searching and devising ways of keeping our costs down while we get maximum effect. Um, it, it just... A particular set of skills that I've enjoyed for decades, and now that I'm in retirement, I don't feel like I'm retired. I feel like it's a call to action, which just happens to be the name of our group. So, 
I enjoy this and I enjoy talking to people. I did the interview on WBAI last night. And I swear to you, it's like somebody locked me out of my darn computer. I've been having problems with this computer. I'm doing the interview and I can't access the fact sheet, Ratty, that you sent me. I mm. can't access anything. I couldn't even log in to get the address of the darn um, consulate. And the only thing I remember was 42nd Street. It moved to 42nd Street. And the, the entrance is on 3rd Avenue, you said, right? I think that's what you, you mentioned. And um, I mean, these things, because I hear it all the time. I hear you guys speaking all the time. I was able to articulate how we came together, who we were, and what our goals were, and where we think we want to be with the next few uh, protests that we want to do. And this guy loved it so much. He said, look, I need to stay in touch with you guys, and I need to follow this. I said, hey, that's fine. He says, I wanted to post interview with you after the 10th of May. But I may end up doing another interview with you when you guys come up to New York. I say, okay, that's fine. That's not a problem. Mm -hmm. So, again, we've got good people in our audience. We've got great supporters. We've got great support. we got hardworking folks that I have no doubt about the, the um, dedication you guys put into this. And if I can do anything to help anybody, you know I will. But this is what is needed. I talk to Haitians, I talk to others, and they say, man, how do you guys do it? I want to start something like that. I said, well, you just got to do it. And you got to talk to people, you got to encourage them to come together. When I hear people saying, oh, I don't want to associate with those guys. When I hear the term tonight, um, the, uh, oh, butter in the bends. If you remember that uh, term, right? And I think about these people and what they used to say when somebody not from Beverly Hills or any of the hills was driving in a Mercedes Benz and the BMWs. Everybody to them was butter. Right? And I was saying, man, it's just that we have all left Jamaica and we all develop our skill sets in various areas. We have all done extremely well. Right? And I look at my dad one day and I said to him, you know, if you didn't whip my behind a couple of times, you know, he was Jamaican, JDF. Right, and he used to take that web belt that they wear, and he hit me with it, and he got my attention, and so he kept me on the straight and narrow. And most people would call it today child abuse, but man, I tell you, it kept me out of the gangs. It kept me, um, even when he caught me and my brother smoking some of his his, his herb that he had got for his asthma right <laughs> he went crazy but you know he was very gentle you know he didn't he didn't strike out because you know he's trying to control things but i'm here to tell you that i talk to my my kids in a gentle manner i counsel with them i keep track of them and I don't turn them down for any reason. Why? Because too many people turn their kids away only to lose them to something in the streets. I don't do that. Right? And I really and truly like this type of atmosphere where we operate as a team. And I think it's all good. You know, I, I like you, Patrick, uh, praise God all the time. You know, he's good all the time. I have no complaints. And to me, um, 
the fact that the my wife can recover from her heart attack over the last year and a half and the family that was shaken to the core is now back stable again i just feel comfortable in that uh, okay god is good and this is the only way i can repay him is to take care of his people and that's what i'm trying to do so i appreciate it folks all right so the best. all Bye right okay. doing some Can I hear you? Can I hear you? You, you? you can't hear me now, man. You can't hear me. Yeah, All right, so hear this now. You see this journey, this journey now, what we are taking right here. So we take it first. It's a personal journey for me, you know. Yeah, because I remember my thing I come from way back before, you know. We have um, social media and everything. And in a 1996, can yeah, you know my question in 1995 and last my father and everything. In the 1996, they're on an island, island tour. Yeah, and I've had a little brother there where DJ too and everything, you know. And come back and then they go to two miles out of Parwanda. Come and go DJ downtown and I go back to us, best Kingston and then take him. I oh, know, not even born. Show me off. Remember me the pan them radio and them TV and the one of them things see me. 98 again now. They are Texas. Press up a CD. Don't know San Antonio me there. Come in back. Yeah, my man G out of the bank. Come in out with this. Right in front of the NCD. Yeah, some shot and you know, me have a sick brother, you know, from a crash, you know, from a crash. My father did him kind of, you know, big film chip and you know, mentally, see, mentally, Ill. police killed him. Then them come up with them lies. When them come up with them lies, I call certain, I go back and talk to TVJ, you know, you can remember me up on them TV and everything. So, call the journalists, show them where I live, show them, say this a lie and everything, and then we get that threat. So I have to take it to them, Ratty. So you know, so now I take it to them. I take kids now, don't it? I take kids. Mm -hmm. So you continue taking it to them. And when you look now, you see government now come in and the world of this and true corruption. But you really think about it. Because even them, them kind of politicians you know, want some garrison and have some people, them are called era leader. Well, well you yeah, got you and them kill you. So I don't know. Maybe one brother, you know. Very the sick one. But the other one, I know, I don't get back bone. So you know, so we still. We still hurt inside. So when you see me I fight them fight, and first time to come up on them read them TV, them try for most day when you talk some things. So I'm glad when social media come in now them can't most of me no more. You know, we are free up to come talk and everything. And you know, my my image will have to change Jamaica. And some of them big boys here yeah, in a Jamaica, especially them from out of the PS PSO Jack, and not for them are junkies and criminal and all kind of things. And not for the not for the the guy, them are people have voted for. Them are not really politicians, some of them are criminal too, you know. Yes. And them all back a country. You know, in that with them, they attack straight up. So we decide to change it. And it can start from, you know, it have to start from one man. Somebody have to do something for change them. So we never have to put them. Me never, from my ears per earth till now, me never see nobody in a Jamaica, none of them big guys in a prison. I go front of judge. None of them. None. I'm going to get a youth and all kind of things and then use them and destroy get a youth. And that's how we have today, you know. Because we are fight a real struggle. And we are trying to save Jamaica. You know, two of them look at death threat Carlos and them look at foolishness and everything. I mean this. Can we like run on to them, you know? Wait, 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 wait. Yes. Wait, give me the mic there. Me now cut you up, me now cut you. Yes. <laughs> hey, let me give you a look at um people one day me in my yard, you know. I'm in my yard, I'm in my own business, I'm in my yard back, like, I'm here chilling in my yard back, and I'm here. You're up! You're up! Sure. I'm going to look, I will lose some of the lonely world of the people. <laughs> I'm saying, <laughs> and the chat is, I'm saying, I'm going to follow him, you know. I'm follow him, lose some. So you see, then the day upon social media, have a lot of bloggers, people, talking other things. Trust me, there was a lot of bloggers, some we don't see them no more, we lose some, not too, we lose some. Mm -hmm. I'm a friend, unstoppable, um, uh, him, uh, he make me money, teach me how to do some stuff on social media, teach me how to monetize and stuff. In the day, I don't know the brother there. And nobody out there, you know. Yeah. And we you know, hold it down. And I said, why me up all the way? And nobody yeah. put their face on the camera and beat politicians and corruption people. They're afraid. But look at now. Look at now. Let me get the thread from the corrupted police. Because I'm not going to go on. 
them are criminal. So me no, oh, yeah. me, them have a fright me like me fear. You understand? Me no, them no, them name fear or me no fear them. So to that know we just keep on my journey. And then the, the nicest thing for me when you have the social media, what them care most of me again? Because me the depend on them TV right and them radio and thing and them try most of I. You can't have Muslim man like me. What me talk, me just me just start as is. And that people are with me, you know, we're not going to keep it real on here. You know, no tabloid. See? So we just, <laughs> we just hold, we have to hold them to account, you know? We have to hold them to account and, and they say, they're at it. And we have to move. And we have to make a difference because, let me tell you this, right? In a, in a 80, we have, you know, a peer blood revolution, 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 I don't know about a blood, but we are running a, a bloodless revolution where you social media and we make the changes. We have to in our lifetime, to some of them big boy, go to prison. Them not better than nobody else round here. And we have, to, we have to start boycott some of them too, whether them, them bank or what them do. It can't be get a youth alone. And the media houses them to buy us in Jamaica. Remember, you know, me and enough of them are friends, you know. Come with them thing. Them no, because they call me and say, boy, y'all be about me. Me and enough of them are bedroom, for, but them know me this. Because we have to speak true to power. You understand? So we're there. <laughs> By the way, before me let you go, Jeffrey, so somebody does stop the money, you know, till we don't have no more time. Um, him name Petro. Him tap no, 150, so make sure send $10 more, 160. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ratigan, before you go, please, give me a minute, I beg you. I, I just want to say this to um our listening audience out there, that there is a fake Make We Talk channel out there. If you don't see Make We Talk, Jeffrey Tavares, LLC, it's not me. Somebody decided, I think it's a member of the Labour Party decided to do it. <laughs> There's a fake, and I don't fear to say it. It's a member of the Jamaica Labour Party decided to do it. It's a fake YouTube channel out there. It does not belong to the Make We Talk, Jeffrey Tavares, LLC. It does not belong to the operators or the producers of the Make We Talk channel. So please do not make anybody fool you. If you're gonna send it out, it's Jeffrey Tavares, Make We Talk, LLC. Like, share, and subscribe. And I want to say thanks to my good friend Wilbur Radigan for having me on this evening. And Wayne, believe you me, you inspired me for me to come on YouTube. And I want to say thank to you. All right. Let me just thank everybody. Mystic Sensation, Patrick, Lonesome, Carlos, Jeffrey, um, Doc. Uh, Mr. Newman, Isaac, Michelle, um, Kevin, everybody. Wildman, not Newman. Wildman, Hugh Wildman. Oh, Wildman. Sorry, <laughs> Newman, somebody else. <laughs> Newman? Jeffy. That's one you want to call around here. <laughs> you know what? I'll catch you when I catch you around here. Jeffy. This is the proof. There's a lot of work going to this. I, I'm working harder than I've ever worked in my life, believe me. I get up from I get up early. I got I only sleep like about three hours a night, three to four hours a night. And I was up until two o'clock this morning working with Kevin. And then we we're back again at nine o'clock. And I haven't eaten anything. I usually don't eat at all on a Saturday. Not at all. Um, and I go right through the day, right through the night, because I have a program that starts in less than a half hour. And go through till two o'clock. And I say all of that to say this. There's a reason why I make this. This is like a sacrifice, right? I ignore everything, everyone around me to come sit down in front of this camera and do the broadcasting thing. And this wasn't something that I planned. This wasn't something that I wanted to do. It was just something that just happened. I used to watch Lonesome. And I used to say, man... You know, where get all that information from, you know? But it was interesting to watch him. And then I used to li listen to uh, Sir P. But I, I moved away from Sir P because Sir P was doing, like, criminal stuff and all that stuff. And it, 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 it wasn't doing what I thought should be done. He served his purpose, and he's still serving his purpose. But what I wanted to do was to expose government co corruption and do something for the people of Jamaica in terms of results oriented not just talk about it right and so i got drawn to loan from then jeffrey dragged me another thing then i met carlos then no mystic sensation and the newest sensation you know to me right and of course i knew herb a while back so you know we kind of like those 
we came together into this thing. So I'm not doing this for money. I just want people to understand that. And I consider myself a reasonable person. Loan something me too soft as a matter of fact. You know, because they might say that's good cop, bad cop. They might just come to me. To Even when they want to talk to loan some, they come to me. Right? But, but I just want to say the inspiration is the people of Jamaica, it's the people I associate with. And it's you in the chat room, all of you. I mean, and even when you disagree with me, I still love you and I still learn from you. The ones that I don't learn from are the ones who are just completely disagreeable, where them just them start taking it to a personal level. But we can have a reasonable discussion about anything. You know what I mean? And I'm I'm open to learning, completely open to learning. This organization is not a movement, it's a movement, a collection of people, but we're housed under an organization which is different from what the government was and still is doing. But not to worry, they'll soon get their cease and desist letter. And they'll also get some other, them get some, they'll get some legal papers we're working on. And the purpose of this is to ensure that government is held accountable and that they, they deliver to the people of Jamaica. And that also, we are looking forward to working with the government. But if the government doesn't want to work with us, that's fine. But we have people here in the diaspora suffering that we have to pay attention to as well. It's not just people in Jamaica. And in fact, it's worse when you suffer in America because in Jamaica, your neighbors will take care of you. Your family don't, you know, will take care of you. In America when, and other places, when, when you are suffering, you are suffering alone, right? I lived next door to some people for years and I, I, I don't know them. That wouldn't happen in Jamaica, right? It really takes a village to run to, to take care of, of, of children, raise up, raise, raise up uh, children in a Jamaica. Before I go, I just want to say something to you. I just came across this today. I was going through some papers and I came across this. And it says, 10 MOCA investigations of public officials on the way. 10. This is 2021, December 2021. And Dr. Chang is on the front page of this thing. And he talks, in it, he talks about a couple investigations, right? One of them, he talks about, and I'm just going to show you how there's something drastically wrong with the justice system in Jamaica. He says, in October, Mocha was asked to probe the matter of the missing $124 million that was paid to the CISA Cornwall Chair Joint Committee for Tertiary Education by technocrats at the Ministry of Education over nearly three years. The money cannot be accounted for. While she has not been accused of anything, Acting Permanent Secretary in the Education Ministry, Dr. Grace McLean, was sent on leave in the wake of the scandal to allow investigators to carry out their work. What happened to that lady? She's free right now. She's free. They did not... They, they, had, a, they, had, a, they had an action. They had an action where they could go after her for the money. She wasn't responsible for the whole 124. But whatever she was responsible for, several million. They waited too late to go after the lady and when she went to court it was thrown out it was an assessment that's the action they brought an assessment to get the money back it's gone and what happened we don't hear nothing more about her and i was told by people you know that he can be prosecuted the question is where's our dpp as of right now we don't have one right then here's another one um it says, meanwhile, several months of investigation by state agencies, including MOCA, MOCA, led to the October 2019 arrest and charge of former Education Minister Royal Reed, President of Caribbean Maritime University, Professor Fritz Pinnock, as well as Reed's wife, Sharon, and daughter, Sherelle, in an alleged $55 million fraud scheme. Counselor for the Brownstone Division in St. Anne, Kim Brown Lawrence, was also charged. Chang told the House that MOCA has, since 2016, conducted 452 operations, made 353 arrests, laid 305 charges, and has had 217 convictions. They have 353 arrests and 136 and, 100 and, and 217 convictions. That means what happened to the 136? But you ask some of them convict, and better some look at them in the ask. Small and that problem. investigation is still ongoing after five years, nearly five years, it's still ongoing. So, yes. people, these are the things that that 
keep us awake at night. You know, you ask the politician, what keeps you awake? They say, no, no, keep you awake. We sleep nice. We don't sleep nice around here because we constantly think about our people. We constantly think about ways that we can, we can ensure that them live a decent life. And you see what's going on. And you've heard it. There has been so much money missing. Pick a ministry. Just pick a ministry. Money has been missing. 1.7 trillion unaccounted for. People, that is real money. That's not monopoly money. Real money that could help the children in a Jamaica get a good education, help the health sector, build roads, uh, 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 water, for example. Jamaica surrounded by water. And we, and we have water and rivers and we have water shortage. We, 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 have water. we don't have no water shortage in a bad management. No water shortage. There you go. Alone, three, over 300 feet, brother. Deep. Remember, you get the bends every 30 feet and stay a couple like a, a 20 minutes from there. No? 10 to 30 minutes. Right. You will get the bends. 30 feet. 10 to 30 feet. 300 feet and a little bit of water. I'm going and to the sea. sea. Yeah, somebody just said that tell you got me from Partner Draw TV. Yeah, I've been around. I mean, I was on Jeffrey's program, Lonesome program, um, 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 uh, Mr. Stevens' program. I was all over the place. So, and I, my intention was to get the message out in whatever way, any way that I could. And what happens is this. You have some people now who... You know, and, and I've, I've accepted it, that people, whatever you do in life, no matter what, look at the good book. The book, book tell us, uh, the man who come to save everybody, Jesus, look at him do with him. They do not do that thing, but they don't do with me, you know? Um, but the thing about it is that it's how you deal with things. And I have to put this up before I go. And a tribute to how strong this program is, you still have 24 well, 2396, 2400 devices still tuned in. But here is my, here is how I deal with life with these people. Simply this. You won't listen to what people say behind you. A lion never looks back when small dogs bark. Government, that's how I view Uno. So with that, people tune in tomorrow. Waterhouse Vibes, Lonesome Program. Mystic Sensation, thanks again for coming. Uno always comes <laughs> strong. That's it. But the team, the team, okay, the team make it. Jeffrey Tarras, Mr. Boomba Ba, Boomba V. Yes. Uh, as a matter of so. fact, join me on Monday. Hmm? Sorry, Mr. Rotigan. As a matter of fact, join me on Monday. I have a surprise guest coming in house on Monday to speak some more about the great DPP and the great Speaker of the House of Parliament. Um, Mystic Sensation, I'm going to ask Mr. Rotigan to send me your number. I want to speak to okay. you about something too. Yes. All right. And um, remember, remember to join the man in the wilderness tomorrow for the big yeah. program of the evening. You know, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Her team <laughs> will be there. Our I sister Marie will be there. Yeah. I will be there. You know, yes, and I mean, Herb T, thank you very much. That is the silent assassin, the man who knows so much, but he might do a whole heap of thing. He might do a whole heap yep. of deep dive from people. He can't tell you everything, but from the day you're born till now. <laughs> so, hmm. you know. <laughs> And Carlos, thanks for having me on your program the other day, Virgin. I really appreciated yesterday, you know. And I hope thank you. I come back, you know. Thank you, thank you for coming on, bro. Yeah, we man. have a strong message, and I support them kind of message there. Well, yeah, yesterday I, I, I did, I did Carlos and I did Lonesome. Yeah, Carlos told me that and you got. I, come back, I did WBAI at two thirty this morning. I got off after three o'clock. You you, 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 you're making the media rounds, man. <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have business to do, man. We have things to take care of. We have Can't sleep. to see. Yeah. yeah. And of course, man in the wilderness, you know, inspiration. Yes, my brother. Really? Man yeah. who's the man who knows no Wayne, wait, 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 say, say hello to Mama Angie for me now. Yeah. She, she must yes. have oh, Hello, hello. Uh, One second, I'll be remiss. And Jeffrey, I'm glad you bring up that, Mama Angie. In the chat, Miss Mystic Sensation. Oh, yeah. People ask if you don't want to say something. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, there yes. have been asking, please. Okay, all right. So um, I also want to say um, 
unity is strength. And what we're doing here is a wonderful thing. You know, it's a great movement that we've started and it's a new day that has dawned um, in our politics for Jamaica because now the leaders will have to start dotting their I's and crossing their T's because we're here to hold them accountable. And the um, One Jamaica Legal Fund is going to be a great way for us to have that capital in order to, you know, bring them to the books if we need to. So, guys, we just need to make sure we donate, donate, awesome. donate, because we are here for one purpose, and it's for a better and greater Jamaica for the future. You're here. You got a reward tonight. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, this tomorrow. is my own. All right. Everybody. You will. All right. The people of the Zumba